Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is the complete book of Serendipity, Adult Midoriya X Female Listener. Everybody on the floor now! Wait, what? Get down now, we shoot! Oh my god, is the bank being robbed? You poked your head out from one of the private rooms, then quickly pulled it back when you saw three masked men with guns storm into the open area where the tellers were. Oh crap, oh crap, you panicked spinning around, arms out slightly as you crouched, your head whipping left and right, trying to determine what to do. All I wanted to do was open an account. I didn't ask for this. You spun back around to close the door, but one of the men was standing right there. Either you didn't hear us or you're stupid, the masked robber growled. Get on your knees. Hey, listen, I, I just wanted to open an account. I didn't ask for... What the hell? Get down before I blow your brains out. You dropped to the ground with your arms up still looking intently at the robber before you. Defiant little bitch, aren't we? He growled. Don't need to screw some respect into you. You paled and looked down as he entered the room and pointed the gun at your head. Take your skirt off, he said lowly. No, please don't do this, you thought internally. You were frozen. He jabbed the barrel of the gun at your skull, your head being snapped back slightly by the force. I'll screw you dead or alive makes no difference to me, he snarled. Tears welled up in your eyes. Please don't do this, he said almost inaudibly. He backhanded you across the face, sending you sprawling out backwards across the floor. Mounting you quickly, he ripped your shirt open and tried to undo your skirt. You screamed and fought him, but the gun, sharply pushed up under your jaw, reminded you exactly who was in control of your life right now, and you backed down, helplessly whimpering as he managed to remove your skirt. Just then there was a flash of green and your assailant was thrown off you and across the room, hitting his head and passing out instantly. You looked up, shocked. To your surprise, you saw the back of the number one hero, Deku. De Deku, you gasped. He turned to face you, green lightning still jumping from his hero uniform, illuminating his emerald eyes. Are you okay? He asked gently as he deactivated his quirk and turned his body around to crouch down. Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think I am. You looked down. Panties on show with your shirt ripped open, exposing your bra and stomach area. You screeched and flung your arms around yourself, trying desperately to cover everything up. Oh, my apologies, Deku stammered, as he desperately tried to avoid looking at anywhere that would be deemed inappropriate. Uh, let, let, let me get, uh, um, um, please, my, my skirt, Deku. Oh, yes, yeah, skirt, he stammered and reached out to the material that was crumpled on the floor. He handed it to you while keeping his head turned away and waited for permission to look back. I I'm okay now, you mumbled sadly, staring down your front. Are you okay? Deku asked softly, kneeling on one knee beside you. You nodded, but tears streamed down your cheeks. It's okay now, I'm here, he said gently as he placed a hand on your shoulder. Let me help you up. The medical team will be here shortly. The robbers have all been taken care of. He said, glancing back at the robber still passed out by the wall. You sniffed and wiped your eyes on your sleeve, allowing Deku to help you up. He really wanted to hold you close, but he knew that that was inappropriate. He wanted to tell you nothing like this would ever happen again, but he knew that he couldn't guarantee that. You seemed so small and fragile as you stood with head bowed before him. So he led you out to the waiting ambulance and gave them a brief handover to the paramedics before turning back to you. I'll be back to see you, okay? He said gently, ducking his head to catch your eye, his soft, loving emerald eyes captivating yours as he smiled gently at you. Your heart skipped a beat. Thank you, Deku, he whispered. It's no problem at all, he said kindly, and walked back to the police who were taking reports. The paramedic sat you down and did a quick assessment, noting that you were fine, but in a bit of shock, and then they wrapped a blanket around your shoulders and gave you a hot cup of cocoa to sip. You looked around at the scene before you. It appeared that no one else had gotten seriously hurt, which you were happy about, and the ordeal ended with the robbers being apprehended before they could take any money. Your eyes found Deku again as you watched as he diligently went around, checking people and talking to them. He was such a kindly, genuine hero. That's what you liked about him. You remembered back to being in high school, when the UA Sports Festival had aired, recalling the first time that you'd seen Deku. He was by far the least experienced of the group and it looked like that he had gotten through each round by the skin of his teeth, his quirk somewhat uncontrollable and uncontained. You fell for him immediately, and from that day on you were a fan, 
collecting merchandise whenever it popped up and filling your room with posters of this up and coming hero. Your friends had laughed at you for picking such an underdog of a hero, preferring to go with super cool Todoroki or hot headed Bakugo and some other heroes that had more cool or more controllable quirks. They quickly changed their tune though when they saw just how far Deku had come and pretty, sure, pretty soon they were fans as well. When it was announced that he was number one hero, you nearly died of excitement. He deserved it and you couldn't have been more proud. You used to write fan letters to the agency that took him on, hoping he would reply you one day, but he never did. The years passed by and your crush on him grew. You would be at every meet and greet event, just aching to catch even just a glimpse of your most favourite hero. He was just so sweet, handsome and oh, the greatest hero ever. You would make up stories in your head about meeting him one day and how he would fall for you immediately and then you'd date, get married and live happily ever after. You looked from him back to your hot cup of cocoa in hand and sighed heavily. Oh, how embarrassing. The first time he actually acknowledges me, I have no skirt on and my shirt's been ripped open by a guy who intended to rape me. A shadow fell across you and you looked up. It was Deku again. You froze in awestruck admiration for your favourite hero. Are you feeling better now? Deku asked softly. Oh, uh, y yeah, you said as you looked back down again. You couldn't bear to look at him for too long. This whole situation was just so not how you ever saw it happening. Did he hurt you? Sorry? Did that guy hurt you in any way? Deku asked, his voice growing serious. Oh, no, you saved me at the right time, he said softly with a weak smile. Glad to hear, he said with a re relieved sigh. They'll be letting you go soon, so be safe, okay? You nodded glumly. The brief encounter with your hero crush was almost over and you hadn't said anything meaningful. It's not that you didn't have anything to say, it's just that you didn't have the oomph to say it. You were feeling very flat, to be honest, and you just wanted to go home, curl up and cry. You watched sadly as Deku walked away, his rippling muscles flexing under his costume as he moved. Ugh. Why, why did we have to meet like this? You moaned internally. You unlocked your door and pushed it open later that afternoon, flicking the hallway light on and walking to the kitchen. You were living in your own apartment now, free as a bird and broke as hell. You looked in the cupboard for something to eat, but there just wasn't anything that really took your fancy. So you went to your room, changed into your PJs and flopped onto the bed. Pulling your phone out, you connected it to the speaker system and clicked your favourite playlist, falling asleep almost instantly. When you woke, it was the next morning, so you decided to get up for work, sort out your lunch before heading out the doors. Hey Yin, did you watch the news last night? One of your co-workers yelled as you entered the office. Uh, no, I didn't. Why? You missed your favourite hero then. He was saving people at a bank robbery, the co-worker said brightly. Your face fell. Uh, yeah, I know. I was there, you said in a flat tone. Oh, you mean you met him out the front? The co-worker asked, misinterpreting what you meant. No, I was there, you said emphatically, as in, I was in the bank when it got held up. Oh my god, the co-worker yelled. Are you okay? What happened? Sudden flashbacks entered your mind and you grimaced. I'd rather not talk about it, you said sadly as you walked past your office mate and made your way to your desk. You sighed as you plopped down. It was going to take a while to forget about what happened. Not that anything actually happened, but it was still terrifying all the same. Deku sat down at his own work desk, going over the paperwork of yesterday's events. He had attended a few crime scenes yesterday, but for some reason the bank robbery one stood out in his mind. He flicked through the papers till he found the bank one, scanning through the form and filling it out, the image of your scared face coming back to him clearly. He sighed. I hope she's okay. I didn't even get her name. He filled out the report and then continued on his daily routine. Yin, we're going to sushi train tonight. Come with us, a female co-worker called. You knew people had been whispering about you all day and that they were trying to do something nice for you, but still you weren't really in the mood. Oh, thank you. I'll pass, you said with a weak smile as you gathered your things and stood to leave. My shout, she said with a sly grin. She knew you were strapped for cash and this would be an impossible offer to pass up. You wavered. Oh, okay, I'll come, you sighed. Atta girl, she praised with a grin. You forced a smile. The night went well, and by the end of it, you were starting to feel a little better. You had had good food, and it was now full in your belly, and you were surrounded by all of your work friends. 
Yin, did you need me to drive you home? One of your workmates asked. No, no, it's fine. I literally live three minutes from here, you said with a smile. I'll be fine. You sure? Positive. Thank you anyway, you said, smiling again. The night ended and you exited the shop, waving goodbye to your co-workers as you headed off down the street. You were deep in thought as you walked along the familiar quiet streets, when all of a sudden you felt an uncomfortable change. It was quieter than usual. You looked around. You were alone. That's odd. Usually there's more people around at this time. As you passed under a street lamp, you saw someone in the alley nearby. Your heart leapt in your throat. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. Don't look back. You picked up the pace. Your work shoes making so much damn noise you couldn't hear if anyone was following behind you. A rough hand grabbed your arm and bag and you screamed. Shut up and give me your bag, a voice growled. You threw the bag off your shoulder towards him and turned to run. Not so fast, he sneered, gripping his fingers into your arm. No, not again, you screamed internally as he turned you around harshly. L let me go, your quivering voice rang out as you tried to shake him off. Let her go, a strong male voice said from behind your attacker, and you looked over your bag snatcher's shoulder and saw a hooded figure standing there, hands in pockets with head lowered. Keep moving, dumbass. Your assailant growled at your supposed hero. I don't think so, the hooded man said with a slightly devious chuckle. You'll let her go now. And what? The rough man snarled as he dug his fingers harder into your arm, making you yelp out in pain. Oh, you really don't want to pick a fight with me, the hooded figure replied, removing his hands from his pockets. Your eyes fell on his hands. They were littered with scars. Deku? You think you're so tough, you detain a shot back at the hooded man. Show your face, you coward. The hooded man lifted his right hand to his head and gently pushed the hood back as, his, as he tilted his face up, his green eyes flashing with anger. Oh, hell no, the assailant yelled when he realised he'd just come face to face with the number one hero, Deku. I would prefer you refrain from swearing in front of the lady, Deku stated plainly. Now remove your hand from her and give her bag back before I take action. The guy didn't say anything but quickly handed your bag back to you and let you go before turning tail and running off into the nearby alley that he had been hiding in previously. Your vision was still being pulsated by your strong heartbeats. You had been terrified of being raped or beaten, but now your adrenaline had spiked again in shocked excitement because, holy heck, Deku's standing in front of me again. I can't breathe. Are you okay? He asked gently, taking a step forward to you and then stopping immediately. Wait. Have we met before? Y y yeah, this is the second time we've you've saved me in like two days. That's got to be a record, you joked, laughing hollowly and praying the ground would just swallow you up right there and then. The girl from the bank, he said suddenly. How are you feeling? I'm so sorry that something like this has happened again and so soon. It's not your fault, you said defensively, ra waving your arms. C can I walk you home at least? Deku asked sympathetically. Oh, um, only, only if... I insist, please, Deku said confidently. Um, okay, you said sheepishly, rubbing your arm where the guy had grabbed you and wincing as your fingers brushed over where his hand had been. Are you hurt? Deku asked, reaching a hand out to you. He took your arm in his hand and rolled up your sleeve, moving your arm around slightly to catch the light so he could look for marks. His hands were warm and comforting and you melted. My crush, hero, person, idol, thing is touching my arm. I'm not okay. I'm dying. This is too much. Hello, he said. Oh, s sorry, sorry. What did you say? I, I missed it, he just replied sheepishly. I asked if it hurt when I moved it. Oh, n no, it's okay. It just hurts to touch, that's all. He pursed his lips but didn't say anything, sliding your sleeve back down and letting go of your arm. You looked up at him. He had grown so much from that little 15-year-old that you'd seen on screen at the festival. He had matured, and boy had he bulked up. Damn, had he bulked up. Can I ask your name? He said softly, his gentle eyes looking down at you. Oh, it, yes, sorry, my name's Yin Lin. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Lin, he said politely. Oh, apologies, is it Miss or Mrs? You laughed. <laughs> no, just Miss. I see he said with a smile as he looked past you. Shall we head to your place? Your face flushed at his comment. D Deku's coming to my house? He saw the look on your face and backpedalled quickly. 
oh no 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 sorry sorry I, d I didn't mean like um y you you know just just to walk you home safely you chuckled softly relaxing at his sudden drop in professionalism and allowing his awkward goofy side to come through it's okay you reassured him um so what do you do for work miss lynn he asked as he rubbed the back of his neck sheepishly looking for a conversation starter me uh, I, I, I work in an office. Nothing exciting, really, he said dismissively. Do you have a quirk? he asked. Uh, yeah, I do, but again, it's not very exciting, he said with an embarrassed laugh. What is it? he asked with such genuine interest it melted your heart. I can duplicate things, but it's only limited to paper items. I'm basically a photocopier or a printer, he said, pulling a face at how stupid you sounded in front of your idol please someone kill me now he thought that's such an amazing quirk he bubbled it's so practical and useful you looked up at him in disbelief surely he was joking right his brilliant green eyes danced as his face showed his true emotions he was actually excited about your quirk the number one hero thought your quirk was amazing Th this is a dream right you blurted out loud he looked down at you as you walked beside him what do you mean? he asked, confused. I mean, like, you've saved me twice now. I've I've met you twice now. I've spent years trying to meet you, and I can't believe you're actually walking me home now, and you just said my quirk is cool, and his happy laughter cut you off. You've been trying to meet me? Yes, I've been to every event ever since you started doing meet and greets, he continued, naming as many of the events that he, you had been to, so that you could prove that you weren't just buttering him up. Oh, that's a lot of events, he said with a nervous chuckle. You stopped your rambling midstream, suddenly realising how much of a fangirl you sounded like. Well, you were a massive fangirl, but you didn't want him to think you were crazy or anything. You had toned it down since your high school days, but you still had a heap of Deku merchandise in your house. Limited edition stuff, expensive stuff, or things that had been given to you as a present. All your friends and family knew how crazy you were about him, but right now you needed to play it cool really cool sorry you said suddenly I i'm not weird i promise you cringed deku chuckled you sound like me about all might bro i would put your love of all might to shame with my love of you you have no idea you thought just then you reached your house uh this is me you said stopping at the gate oh he said o okay there was a long pause as he gazed down at you and you looked up at him neither of you knowing how to sign off appropriately before leaving. I'll see you later then, you said, your mouth moving without thinking. Yes, he said. You stopped and scrunched your eyes shut with embarrassment. Sorry, that sounded weird. Of course I won't see you again. Or oh, maybe, I, I don't know, he blabbered. Deku chuckled. It was nice to meet you, Miss Lynn. Same, Deku. Thank you for walking me home. You're welcome, he said softly as he watched you turn and let yourself inside the gate. Bye, he said quietly with a shy smile. Bye, he replied with a little hand raise. He watched you walk up the steps and go inside the apartment, sighing as he turned to go. She was really sweet, he thought as he walked off down the road. That night, you just couldn't get him out of your head. You'd always been told that you should never meet your idol because sometimes they turned out to be, well, not what you thought they'd be, and it would be disappointing. But man, he had been everything and more. You looked at one of your Deku posters on the wall and smiled, drifting off to sleep. You were much bubblier the next day, despite the hand-sized bruise on your arm from where that bag snatcher guy had grabbed you, but that frightening event had been overshadowed by the absolute dream event that followed straight afterwards. You couldn't concentrate on anything, walking home with Deku still playing on loop in your mind. You wondered if he would remember you. You actually got to tell him your name, but that meant nothing really. He met thousands of people a day. Who are you? At the end of that week, the police contacted you, asking you to come to the station to write a report on what had happened to you at the bank so that they could put the criminals responsible away for good. You were only too happy to help and arranged to be there later in the afternoon. Well, Miss Lynn, thank you for your time, the sergeant said after you'd given him a written and verbal statement on what had happened. We'll be in touch if we need anything else, he added, extending his hand. You smiled slightly and shook his hand before giving him a little nod and walking out the door that he'd held open for you. You were deep in thought and almost walked straight into someone. Oh, sorry, you yelped, stepping back sharply. Miss Lynn, the voice said excitedly. 
How are you? You looked up into the beautiful soft face of Deku and nearly passed out. You're everywhere, you yelped. It, is that a problem? He asked with a confused smile. Oh no, 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 sorry. Not, not a problem at all, you said quickly. I, I'm fine, how are you? Well, thank you, he replied with a more natural smile. What brings you here? He asked, looking towards where you'd come from. Oh, I had to make a statement about what happened at the bank, you said, your gaze falling to the floor. Deku felt so sorry for you. You looked so vulnerable. Miss Lynn, can I take you out for an afternoon coffee? He asked gently. Your eyes shot up and met his. C coffee? With you? Um, yes. M me. If, uh, only if you want to. Of course, he said. That, that would be really nice. He smiled and turned slightly to let you walk up beside him. I know a nice place around the corner from here, he said as he fell in step. I know she's a fan. This is the least I can do to brighten her up, he thought as you practically floated out the door beside him. You made light chat as you walked the short block to the coffee shop and sat down inside. You kept pinching yourself. This couldn't be real, right? Having a coffee with Deku? Surely not. You found that you had a lot in common and you loved how genuinely interested he seemed to be in everything you said. It was coming up to two hours and he glanced at his watch. Oh, Miss Lynn, I need to be at a meeting in a half hour's time. I'm so sorry, I need to go. You waved your hand. No, please, don't apologise. You've been too kind already. Meeting me for coffee? Thank you so much for taking the time. He smiled. It's easy when you enjoy the company. He then blushed. I, sorry, that came out. It, it's a compliment. Thank you, you said quickly. He smiled with relief. He paid for both your coffees. Then the two of you walked to, out to leave and all of a sudden reporters and paparazzi rushed at you from all angles. Deku, is this lady your girlfriend? How long have you been dating? Can we expect a wedding announcement soon? Are your quirks compatible? Deku grabbed you in a hug and activated his quirk, jumping swiftly into the air and clearing the mob before taking off down the street at green lightning speed. He ran a little way to get out of sight of the crazed mob, then deactivated and put you down. Forgive me, but we needed to get out of there quickly, he said, looking back over his shoulder to make sure you hadn't been followed. Deku, I'm so sorry, this is going to look really suspicious, he said apologetically. He shook his head. Don't worry, it doesn't faze me, he said plainly. You blushed. There's going to be rumours about Deku and I dating. Oh my gosh. I must walk you home before I leave, he said solemnly. I couldn't forgive myself if something happened to you. You blushed again. He sounds so protective. Oh, this poor girl, she's been through enough. I couldn't let anything else happen, he thought as he walked beside you. Small talk continued until you reached your house and you thanked him again for his kindness and time. He smiled and nodded before activating his quirk and launching into the sky. What a handy quirk, you thought. You could get anywhere in an instant. You sighed with a smile and went inside. So I saw the tabloids, Midoriya, a velvety voice said to the greenette across the table where they were supposed to be having a meeting. What did it say this time, Todoroki? Deku asked as he took a sip of tea. You were spotted exiting a quaint coffee shop with a girl about your age, the jewel hair hero replied. Rumours say she's your sweetheart. Deku spat the tea that he had just sipped and coughed violently. Todoroki, I can explain, he started. Todoroki smirked a little. Midoriya, it's about time you settled down. No, 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 it's not like that, Deku yelped, blushing madly. She's a fan. Well, well no, actually, I, I didn't know that. I, I saved her twice, then we talked. You're dating a fan? Todoroki asked bluntly. No, no, we're not dating, Deku yelped again. She's such a sweet girl and I felt sorry for her because of what she'd been through, so I took her out to take her mind off things. You should tap that, another voice said from nearby and Deku turned to see who it was. Kaminari, I have no intention of doing such thing, Deku gasped. Trust Kaminari to be the one to say such a thing. The flirtatious blonde hero was known to date and bed a few of his fans. I'm just saying, dude, she's primed. You're terrible, Todoroki interjected, glaring at Kaminari. But, Midoriya, I would like you to start looking for someone special. You deserve a good woman, he said, looking softly at his fellow hero. Midoriya and Todoroki had become close friends ever since Midoriya had helped Todoroki overcome some issues of his own at the UA Sports Festival back in high school. And for that, Todoroki was forever grateful. He knew Midoriya had a good heart and just wanted to be there to help and support people. When the time comes, the time comes, Midoriya shrugged as he took another sip of tea. 
Okay, everyone, please take your seats, a voice said from nearby, and Deku nearly fell out of his seat when his eyes met his all-time heroes, All Might. Although he was All Might's successor and had trained with him for a few years, he was still a massive fanboy at heart. The meeting commenced and he tried to ignore the voice in his head, repeating what Todoroki had just said about him settling down. It was true, though. He had focused so hard on his goal of becoming the number one hero that he hadn't placed any importance on finding himself a girl. Was he destined to be a bachelor for the rest of his life? He certainly didn't want that. The next day you headed to work as usual. People around you seemed to be acting a little strange, looking at you and whispering. Maybe you were just being paranoid. You got to work and made your way to your desk, your desk mate leaning across to you with a cheeky grin. So, uh, Deku, huh? She said with a suggestive eyebrow wiggle. Wh what You stammered, going bright red in the face. I saw the pictures, babe, she said with a wink. How could you keep this from me? No, 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 you have the wrong idea, he said nervously. He, I, we met at the police station and, well, he asked if I wanted to go out for coffee. He asked you out? No, 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 it was just friendly, you said defensively. What if he's actually interested in you and you're not even acknowledging him, she said, leaning back and crossing her arms. Why would he be interested in me, you said, shocked. Because you're gorgeous, your desk mate replied emphatically. You laughed. <laughs> you're hilarious, you know that? A few days later. Deku! A distraught voice called from down the hall. It's an emergency! Deku jumped up and ran to his office door. What? What is it? He called back as the lady stood in the cor corridor holding a wad of papers. What's the emergency? The printer has died on us and we need to duplicate these documents and have them signed and sent by tonight. Well, call the technician or buy a new one, Deku said, relaxing slightly. We've rung the technician and he can't get here till tomorrow and we need them done today, the lady implored. Can you buy a new one? He asked. No, we don't have enough in the budget right now, she said. Wait, I think I can help, Deku said with a smile, walking out of the office and down to the lady. I might be able to locate someone who can help. Yin! Someone on the phone for you, line three, your supervisor called out to you. Got it, you called back, reaching for the phone and putting it to your ear. Hello, Yin speaking. Um, hello, Miss Lin, the somewhat familiar voice said on the other end. It's Deku. You slammed your hand down on the desk and stared across at your desk mate with wide eyes. She mouthed what at you. Ah, uh, hi, Deku, you replied. Your office mate flung herself backwards in her rolling chair. Full-on silent scream face activated as she rolled backwards across the office carpet. I'm sorry to interrupt your day, but I need your help, he said, slightly embarrassed. M my help? You said, confused, still half watching your colleague lose her mind silently as you continued to talk on the phone. Yes, you see, our printer is broken and we need some documents copied immediately for a deadline. And the deadline is today. Would you be able to come across and use your quirk? We'll pay you, of course. Oh, wow. Uh, y yes, I think so. I'd need to check with my supervisor. I've already asked and he's granted permission, Deku said with a little chuckle. Oh, okay, I'll be right over then, you said with a little laugh as you watched your workmate fake a faint. Miss Lin, thank you for coming, Deku said as he met you at the doors of the agency. Oh, you're welcome, you said brightly, beaming at him. He smiled and led you to the printing room. After some brief instructions, you got to work copying the documents as quickly as possible. By 4pm you had them done. That was amazingly fast, Deku commented. You've done well. Thanks, he said, puffing slightly. Your hands were shaking, as you hadn't worked your quirk that hard, ever. You must be hungry, he commented. Can I take you to dinner? Your eyes shot up and met his. D Deku, I... It's all thanks for your hard work, he blurted out. Your face fell slightly. You'd secretly been hoping that your colleague was right, that Deku was interested in you, hence why all the random meetings and coffee dates, but it turned out that he was just being a super sweet broccoli bean. Oh, uh, no, it's okay, I'll just head home this time, he said sadly. I'm a little tired too, actually. Oh, he said. He actually felt deflated that you'd said no. He really did like your company. Okay, well, let me get your pay for the day's work then. He turned and walked out and you turned to face the wall and banged your head against it. Stupid, stupid, I should have just gone out with him.
but at the same time I don't want to get my hopes up when there's absolutely no possibility of us ever being together I don't like the pity votes soon Deku came back in with an envelope here's your pay Miss Lin um also would you be able to come back tomorrow I've just been told that we need you as there's been another mix-up with getting the printer fixed you brightened immediately oh yes I'd love to come back if my boss allows it oh I rang him and requested your help he said yes Deku said with a happy chuckle awesome you said with a bright smile I'll see you tomorrow then I'm looking forward to it he replied with a happy look on his face you blushed oh you giggled okay you cleared your throat then bashfully pushed past him I uh I need to go now okay rest well Miss Lin Deku said on your way home you opened the envelope and looked at the paycheck you gasped when you saw the amount it was almost the same amount as what you'd get for working a week at your other office job what do I do with all this money you thought I know new work clothes considering that I'm seeing Deku tomorrow you shook your head he's never gonna like me back why am I even trying before you knew it you were in front of the clothing store stepping inside you looked around and a young attendant saw you and sidled up need some help honey she asked with a wink uh um i'm i'm looking for an outfit that will blow deku's mind she asked slyly with a coy smile what what oh don't worry honey i saw the pictures i ship it anyway let's get you something nice she said grabbing your arm and dragging you to the change room wait no 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 it's not like that i just need some new work clothes ah work style outfit I knew he'd been to the office chick look, she muttered. I got you, babes. Hop in there and I'll be back. She shut you into the cubicle and you stood there, stunned. Am I being held captive? Suddenly the attendant was back, hurling clothes over the door. You screeched as skirts and tops piled onto you. Try these on, babes, she called out as she ran off to get more. You sifted through some of the clothes articles and found a nice top and a pencil skirt. Hmm, let me try these. You put the ensemble on and looked in the mirror. Not bad, you thought, checking yourself out in the mirror. How's it looking, girl? The attendant called out. You opened the door and stepped out. She gasped dramatically. It's amazing, she squealed, clapping her hands. You seriously need to get this. Don't worry, I can do a discount, she said, tapping her nose and winking. Oh, that's very kind of you. Hush anything for Deku's Bay. When the paps asked who dressed you, just drop the store name, yeah? She said with a wink as she turned and walked to the register. You sighed. You ended up buying a few items and the attendant took very good care of you. You were excited to wear your new clothes tomorrow. The next morning you got ready, spending a little extra time on your hair or whatever you do to make it look like you've put a little bit of effort in. And then you put your new work ensemble on. It definitely made you look good and you smiled, feeling that little bit more beautiful. You made your way to Deku's agency, walking through the front door and smiling at the receptionist. Hi again. Uh, I'm the printer. You mentally face palmed. Ta-da! Printer hero has arrived. Oh, yes, of course. Let me show you to the room, she said with a, in a friendly voice. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. I know where it is, you replied as you smiled and walked away from the desk, giving her a friendly dismissive wave. You started heading down the hall and your eyes fell on Deku's office door. It was open. Did you stop and say hello or just keep walking? Just keep walking. He doesn't like you like that. Just pretend he's another person. The indignant voice in your brain yelled. You listened and walked straight past his room without looking in. Deku saw your figure walk by, but he didn't get a long enough glimpse to register that it was you. He just saw a well-dressed, beautiful girl walk past and he froze in his seat. Whoa, who was that? He thought. He got up from his chair and walked around his desk to the door, looking out down the hall, but you'd gone by then. Did we get a new intern? He wondered. You started work straight away, after some instruction from the in-charge, and then thanked him for his time. It wasn't long after you'd started that Deku casually walked in with some papers. He froze when he saw you there. Your back was still towards him. Miss Lin? He asked. Wait, is it her? He thought. You turned and looked at him. Hi, Deku, he said happily. His mouth fell open slightly and he took you in. Y you look. His eyes carefully travelled down your body and you felt your heart skip a beat. That outfit r really suits you. You flushed bright red. Oh, thank you, you stammered, not quite knowing what to say. Oh, he said suddenly realising he was staring at you. Um, could, 
could I have these coffee, please? Sure, you said happily, ignoring the pounding in your chest. He walked towards you and held the papers out, and your hands brushed his as you took them and your mouth ran dry. He just stood frozen in place. You turned around and walked back to your station, starting your printing. He was still staring at the back of you, his eyes caressing your curves as he waited, and you glanced back at him and cleared your throat. He jumped. Oh, sorry, he yelped. Did you go shopping recently? Yes, yesterday actually. I needed some new work clothes and the pay you gave me was amazingly generous, he said gratefully. Oh, I'm glad, he said with a smile, his eyes sparkling. You handed him back his papers and he thanked you before exiting the room. Wow, she looks amazing, he thought as he walked back to his office. He sat down at his desk but was finding it hard to concentrate on his work, so got up and walked back down the hall to where you were working again. Miss Lynn, may I have your assistance? He asked politely as he entered. Of course, Deku, he replied happily, finishing up the papers that you were working on before following him back to his office. I'm not that good with collating papers, he lied. Would you give me a hand? Yes, sure, he said as you came up beside him. He looked down at you smiling, his eye contact lingering that little bit too long. You coughed slightly and looked away. Uh, so what needs to be done? Oh, uh, um, yes, um, he proceeded to tell you what he needed help with and it sounded too easy for him to know not what to do, but you were happy to just be next to him. You can sit at my desk with me if you like, he added as he grabbed another chair nearby and set it up next to his. You thanked him and sat down, and he took a seat beside you, and you started chatting as you worked. As you sifted through a box of fan letters, you commented on them. There are so many of these. Yes, every day they just keep piling up, he said. I used to try and reply to all of them, but then some of them started to get a little strange, he said with a weird look on his face. What do you mean? you asked with a chuckle. Well, one letter said that if I stepped on her face she would thank me. You burst out laughing. I I didn't know what to say. Why would I step on someone's face? Why would she thank me for that? He asked with genuine concern. Do people call you daddy too? You asked with a giggle. Yes. How did you know? He asked, dumbfounded. How could I be their daddy? I have never... He blushed. You laughed heartily. Miss Lynn, I don't understand. Why would people say stuff like that? Please, Deku, call me Yin, he replied. Yin, he said softly. The way he said your name made you damn near wet yourself. It was so gentle and smooth, it made you almost blush. Uh, well, some people, like me, you thought internally, uh, just have really strong feelings towards you and they're trying to express how much they love you. Even if you hurt them, they'd still love you. You said, doing your best to explain these seemingly odd letters. Oh, he said, but I'm a hero. I would never knowingly hurt someone. Oh, God, this precious broccoli bean is too innocent for this world. I know, Deku, you said, smiling at him. His, he gazed into your eyes. There was a moment where you felt like he might actually lean in and kiss you, but he didn't. Suddenly the door opened. Oh, the receptionist said, then smirked. Sorry to interrupt the moment, but Deku, the people from Plus Ultra magazine are here and they're ready for you. <gasps> I forgot about them, Deku yelped as he stood up quickly. I seriously need a personal assistant, he muttered, but you heard him. Um, I could help. I could organise your bookings and appointments if you like, he said. He looked at you. You'd be my personal assistant? Yes, if, if, if you'd have me, you said shyly. I would love to have you as my personal assistant. He added quickly, would you come with me to this interview shoot and we'll organise the paperwork for this job later? Of course, he said excitedly as he stood up beside him. You followed him out and the receptionist gave you a wink. You blushed and giggled softly. You were starting to feel a shift in Deku. His eye contact was different than before. You praised the clothing assistant for the magic that she had obviously woven into these clothes. Deku, lovely to see you again and I see you've brought your girlfriend, the interviewer said. Oh, no, no, this is Yin Lin, my personal assistant, Deku said quickly. It's an unofficial title for today, so please keep it off the record. Oh, of course, Deku, the interviewer said, switching her record device off. I just have a few questions to ask you. Then we have a small shoot to do so that we have pictures for your fans. Then we're done, she said brightly. Deku took a seat and the interview commenced. 
You sat in a chair away from the interview and the lights, but happily listened in, watching your hero answer questions with his brilliant, innocent smile. He was a dream to watch, and you couldn't take your eyes off him. It was obvious that he was painfully aware of your presence too, stealing glances at you whenever he could. Okay, thank you, Deku. That's all the questions done. Now for the photo shoot, the interviewer said, pointing to a small set that had been made up on the side. Deku walked over and stood in the middle of the set, allowing the photographer and, and makeup artist to arrange him and direct his movements. The shoot started and he started posing under the direction of the photographer. One picture in particular took your breath away though. He was smiling directly at the camera with one arm raised up, his fingers combing through his curly green locks. He just oozed sex appeal without even realising it. You almost had to fan yourself. I can't believe I'm actually sitting here watching my idol pose for the camera and I'm acting so chill right now. Friggin go me. Oh, uh, Yin, would you mind passing my gloves to me? Deku asked politely as the makeup artist ducked in to add some makeup to his chin. He jumped up and grabbed his wiped gloves and then trotted on set to hand them to him. Thanks, he said gently as you handed them over silently with a smile and then backed off set. You turned and walked back to your seat to sit down, looking up at him as you sat. He was still gazing at you as he was pulling his right glove on and the photographer took a photo at that exact moment to check the exposure and lighting. You glanced across at the computer to see the image that had just been captured and your heart skipped a beat. If that photo doesn't end up on the cover of the magazine, I'm going to riot, you thought as you swallowed thickly. He was just too gorgeous for words. At the end of the shoot, he thanked the magazine people for their time and they in turn thanked him packing up before leaving. Yin, would you come with me down to the coffee shop? I need a break, he said with a light chuckle, standing there still in his hero costume. Are you sure you want me to come? I mean, last time that we were seen together, the paparazzi got the wrong idea. I don't mind at all, he said with a smile, uh, unless you'd prefer not to stir up rumours. If your boyfriend... I, I don't have a boyfriend, he laughed. No one wants to be with this, you gestured to yourself. You're very pretty, Yin, and you have a very sweet personality, Deku said honestly before he could stop the words coming out. You both blushed and he looked slightly to the side while scratching his cheek nervously. S sorry, sometimes I say things I mean, he said with a very nervous chuckle. Your eyes shot back up towards him. Is, is he flirting with me? Is Deku flirting with me? You waited for him to correct himself, but it looked like he actually did mean to say the line, sometimes I say things I mean. So, um, coffee? He said again, in the most vulnerable little voice that you'd ever heard from such a masculine looking man. Of course I'd be stupid to turn down a date with my idol. Now it was his turn to blush. You both chuckled nervously, not really knowing what to say. You were thinking maybe that you'd gone too far by saying the word date, but he never corrected you. Nor did he confirm the date status either, so the two of you were just left in this awkward limbo of going to get coffee together. Just together on a date not date there was some awkward small talk on the way as you both obviously had each other on the mind but neither were going to make a move by the looks of it you got to the shop and all eyes were on you immediately you shrank back and Deku noticed your unease we can go elsewhere if you're uncomfortable he said softly as he bent his head down to next to you you could feel his breath on your ear and neck as he spoke and goosebumps covered you instantly no it's okay he replied wanting to look at him but refraining knowing his proximity was going to put you well and truly in his personal bubble if you did look. Maybe that's where he wanted you. He asked what coffee you wanted and then suggested that you find a seat and he'd be over in a second. You found a table for two and sat down, watching him as he ordered. He kept glancing across at you and blushing every time you made eye contact. There was this undeniable attraction, or was it you just reading into things? Everything seemed to be moving so quickly. You'd only known him for, what, two and a bit weeks now? Deku made his way over to you and suddenly his professional side kicked in. Okay, now we can discuss your role as personal assistant, he said as he sat down with a smile. Oh yes, of course, you said, straightening yourself to listen to his speech. If you like, I can ring your boss and explain that you're needed here. You would start at work effective immediately, from tomorrow if possible, he said, not skipping a beat. You nodded. He continued on, explaining your role in the jobs that you would be required to do. And to you it sounded like a dream come true. You got to organise all his meet and greets, interviews and accompany him to galas and award ceremonies. You were stoked. 
You both headed back to the office after coffee, and while you printed out a few more papers, Deku organised the paperwork and rang your boss to tender your resignation. By the end of your shift that day, you were officially Deku's personal assistant, and you'd been given your own office adjacent to his. By the next morning, your name and job title were on the door, and you had your own phone extension and books. Man, you work quick, you commented heartily to Deku. He laughed. Well, I've been needing an assistant, but I've just been waiting for the right one, he said with a wink. God rest my soul, he winked. A cinnamon roll winked. While you were having your heart palpitations, he turned and walked to his office. If you need me, Yin, I'm right next door. You smiled and nodded, still freaking out internally. Not wanting to let the team down, you got to work right away, getting all of Deku's booking arrangements from the front desk and asking a few questions about each so that you'd know how things were done. So you're his personal assistant? The receptionist asked with a coy smile. Yes, you replied with a giant grin. Why? No reason, but I really think that Deku likes you, the receptionist said with a smirk. He's been acting different ever since you came on the scene. Really? you asked. She nodded. You guys make the cutest couple too, can I just say? You blushed. Oh, I don't know about that. You laugh with embarrassment. Just wait and see, she replied with a cryptic smirk, like she knew something was coming. You giggled nervously with an okay and backed away. Your first day went well. You were in and out of Deku's office a lot to confirm dates and times for events and he was only too happy to see you there. You got home that afternoon exhausted but happy and grabbed your favourite cup of noodles to have for dinner. Deku paid you extremely well for being his assistant and you sighed happily that you wouldn't have to struggle to make ends meet as much as you sat down at the kitchen table to eat your noodles. Just then your phone dinged. It was a message from an unknown number. Shoving a fork full of noodles in your mouth you clicked on the message. Hi Yin, it's Deku. Noodles came flying out of your mouth and nose. How did he get my number? I got your number from the file. I hope you don't mind. Just wanted to make contact so that you have my number now. Oh, that's how you thought as you cleaned yourself up. Also, I just realised we didn't celebrate your starting your new job here with me. Thank you for accepting the position. You kept scrolling. One more thing. There's a gala on this weekend and I have a plus one ticket. Would you consider coming with me? You nearly passed out. Well, I guess it's all part of the job, you thought. You replied immediately, thanking him for the opportunity to work with him and accepting to go with him to the gala. There seem to be a lot of dates and outings together. Is it supposed to be like this? You thought. Cat! Cat, are you home? Deku called out as soon as he entered his apartment. There was a growl and a bark from his bedroom and he smiled. Cat, come here a second, I need to talk to someone. A very angry looking Pomeranian trot trotted out of the bedroom door and glared at him. Did I interrupt your nap, Katsuki? Deku asked his pup. The ball of enraged fluff continued to glare at his owner and Deku laughed. He had fallen in love with this little ball of hatred the minute that he laid eyes on it. It reminded him of his childhood friend and close rival Katsuki Bakugo, another well-known hero. Bakugo and Deku's pup Katsuki sported the same hairstyle and hatred of people but they were both dearly loved by Deku and he thought both the human version and the puppy version were pretty cute. Hence why he'd fallen in love with this little bundle of fluff immediately and named it Katsuki. Cat for short. Cat, this is going to sound weird but I think I've fallen in love with my printer. I mean, personal assistant. Cat turned and walked off. Hey, whoa, wait, wait up, cat, Deku called, launching down the hall after his pup. I still love you the most. You're my number one, he said as he caught up to his little ball of anger and scooped him up in his arms. Cat struggled and bared his teeth, but Deku knew it was all a, fl a front. You're always going to be my pup, yes, Deku said softly as he buried his face into the Pomeranian's soft fur. But I really like this girl. How do I let her know that I like her? Cat growled. Okay, I know I'm hopeless. Deku said. Would she like flowers, do you think? The angry pup pulled back and looked at him. Okay, flowers then. Do I say they're from me? Cat sneezed. Okay, no? Anonymous? Deku asked the small ball of blonde. The pup looked at him. Okay, anonymous, with a sweet note. Got it, he said with his Deku award-winning smile. I'll get them delivered to her desk tomorrow. You're so helpful, Cat. Thank you. The little dog looked away. You're such a sundary. Deku laughed, giving Cat a good head scratch and a chin rub. The angry ball melted in his hands. See, I know you like this, Deku said. I know you too well. 
The next morning you decided to really throw your A game into this new job and stopped by the coffee shop to get yourself and Deku a coffee each. You knew his order, so wanted to impress him with being that one thoughtful step ahead. You got to work and happily entered his office just as he was ending a call. He quickly put the phone down and blushed like he'd been caught in the act of doing something. Good morning, boss, you said with a cheery smile. Got your coffee for you. You have a 10am appointment with Go Beyond News, a meet and greet at 12pm with the new board members of Heroes Daily, then a question and answer time at the public school just up the road at 2pm. Would you like me to make any adjustments for you regarding today's run sheet? Deku just stared at you in awe. You beamed. Wow, I'm so glad I have you. You're amazing, Deku said, still amazed at how quickly and effortlessly you had fallen into the role. It's like you were born for this. Buddy, this is a dream come true, you said internally. Oh, it's nothing really. I, I'm just happy to be here and able to help the number one hero, you, you smiled. Deku grinned. Well, Yin, I would be most grateful if you'd come with me to my appointment so I can uh, show you off, is what he wanted to say, but he didn't think that was appropriate. Uh, introduce you to people, is how he ended his sentence. I'd love to, you beamed. Deku, you have 10 minutes before your appointment with Go Beyond News. Do you need a glass of water or anything before they arrive? Oh, yes, please, Yin, that would be lovely, he said, looking up from his desk his eyes darting over your shoulder to watch something go by behind you. You looked, just in time to see a courier walking to your office with a bunch of flowers. Uh, are those for me? You asked curiously. Are, uh, um, what for you? Deku asked nervously. That guy just put a bouquet of flowers in my office, you said as you walked back to your office to look. The courier smiled at you as he silently left the bunch of gorgeous flowers on your desk and walked out. You walked over to the bunch. There was a note attached. Thank you for being you, it read. You blushed. Did Deku send these to me? You stood there, wide-eyed, staring at the beautiful colours of the flowers. They were gorgeous. You reread the note again. A heart, a red heart on the end, does that mean something? What was it? Deku asked meekly as he rounded the corner and leaned against the doorframe. Flowers, you said incredulously. Did you get these for me? He froze. I, um, I just wanted to thank you so much for... Can I hug you? You squealed. Deku blushed deeply. Ah, uh, sure. You bounded over to him and wrapped your arms around his midsection. Thank you so much. That's very sweet, you mumbled into him. Slowly he hugged you back. You're welcome, he said softly. You fit so perfectly up against him. It was in that moment that he knew he didn't want your arms around anyone else but him, but you were now his assistant. There was a certain level of professionalism that he had to uphold. You pulled back suddenly. Sorry, I shouldn't be hugging my boss, but... I approve, Deku replied hurriedly. Thank you for the hug. Thank you for the hug, Deku. How old are you, you green-haired ball of child? What kind of response was that? He mentally berated himself. Man up. So you like the flowers? He asked, averting his eyes and fiddling with his pocket lining. I love them, Deku. Thank you so much. But you don't need to keep doing all these things for me. You've been kind enough to give me this job. I just wanted you to know how special you are, he said in a very soft voice. You looked up into his face. He couldn't look at you at that moment. His green eyes locked on the floor just beside where you stood. You noticed his gorgeous little freckles dotting his cheeks and nose, his jawline, his soft-looking lips. You were so raptured with his features you didn't realise how long you'd been looking at him silently. It was only when he managed to make eye contact with you that your heart leapt as he gazed deeply into your eyes. There was an innocent depth to them. He looked from your left eye to your right eye, then glanced down at your lips. Your heartbeat increased instantly as your face flushed. Oh gosh, that was a look! Overwhelmed by how close he was to you, and how close you felt like he was to kissing you, you pulled back. Uh, I th thank you again for, for the flowers. Just then the phone rang and it was the front desk to inform you that Go Beyond News had arrived. Deku, your interviewers are here, you said, putting the phone down. Deku was still in the doorway, deep in thought. Deku, you called again. He looked up abruptly at hearing your voice. Yes, Yin? Your appointment's here, you said with a smile. Are you okay? Me? Oh, um, yes, I'm fine, he stuttered. Gosh, I really wanted to kiss her just then. Is it okay for me to feel this way about my assistant? You smiled and walked over to him, straightening his blazer. 
You'll be fine, you said, thinking maybe he was worried about the interview. Thank you. You're coming too, though, aren't you? He asked, and suddenly he looked like that timid little 15-year-old you remembered seeing on TV. I'll be right there with you, he said softly. He smiled. You sat at the back of the room as the interview took place, mulling over what had almost happened between you and Deku earlier. I really, really like Deku, like insanely like him, all of him. But can I really tell him that? He's my boss now. Surely that's breaking rules. And what if he's just being nice and doesn't like me back? Could I lose my job? Your mind ticked over and over. Deku was having a hard time focusing on the interview because he could see that you were uh, he could see you out of the corner of his eye. He could tell that something was on your mind because your brows were knitted slightly. He was hoping it wasn't something to do with the flowers. Had he ever stepped the boundaries? Maybe he should pull back a bit. The rest of the day went well. Deku made it to all his appointments on time and he happily introduced you to everyone he met. They had all seen the pictures of you and Deku leaving the cafe a few weeks earlier and a few chalked it up to that being the first time that you had been his assistant. Others still had a feeling something was going on, especially when they saw the way he was looking at you. You decided to push your feelings and thoughts to the back of your mind and be as professional as possible, greeting people and networking to the best of your ability. You had an easy job to be honest because everyone wanted to be in the good books of Deku and his associates. The cinnamon roll hero watched you with amazement as you confidently booked new interviews and meetings for him, greeting everyone with a warm smile and handshake. He sighed. You're a bit keen on your PA, are you there, Deku? A male journalist said, sidling up to the muscular greenette after the board meeting at Heroes Daily. Oh no, that would be unprofessional, Deku said hurriedly in reply. Yeah, come on, the journalist said with a slap to Deku's back. You can tell me. No, no, it's nothing like that, but she is amazing, isn't she? He gushed. I'm lucky to have her. The journalist leered slyly at Deku as he continued to gaze lovingly at you. Uh, I think I've got a story here, the sly reporter thought as he backed away to leave Deku staring lovingly at you. Do you really get to be with the hero Deku all day? An inquiring seven-year-old asked during the school meet and greet that afternoon. Yes, I do, you replied enthusiastically. That's so cool, the little fanboy gushed. Does he save you if you're ever in trouble? Yes, actually, that's how we met. He saved me twice, you replied with a smile. Is he your boyfriend? A little girl asked. Oh, no, he's not my boyfriend. He's my boss, you replied with a bit of a sweat-dropped look. Do you love him? She prodded. I think he's very cool, you said diplomatically. My mummy said that you probably got him in the sack. That's why you got promoted. Okay, now how about we pay attention to what Hiro Deku is saying, hey? You said with an embarrassed blush across your cheeks. Oh my gosh, what are parents saying about me and Deku? After a very exhausting but fulfilling day, you headed home to the last of your cup of noodles. Man, you really needed to go shopping, but procrastination was life. You fell asleep immediately the minute your head hit the pillow that night. Next morning, you were up and ready to see Deku again. I mean, work. Yeah, sorry, you were up ready for work. Packing your bags before heading out, you closed the door and started off down the street. It was a beautiful sunny day and you smiled happily to yourself as you passed the newsstand on the corner. The headlines caught your eye. The hero Deku has found his sweetheart. You stopped mid-stride and stared at it, slightly confused and a little bit deflated. You scanned the beginning of the article. For years we've watched our beloved number one hero, wondering who would be the lucky person to catch his eye. Well, good citizens of Japan, it seems his own personal assistant has managed to weave her spell over our curly-haired heartthrob. You gasped. What? You yelped out loud. Racing inside the news store, you bought a copy and continued to read it as you walked to work. An exclusive with Heroes Daily Reporter found Deku gushing over his assistant, saying how lucky he was to have her. How long have they been dating for is unknown at this stage, but Deku is smitten. You went bright red as you continued to read. Did he really say these things about me? Did he admit he likes me? Suddenly you were surrounded by people. Miss, congratulations on dating Deku. Oh, he's such a sweetheart. I wish you all the very best. Have you discussed wedding plans yet? How did you two meet? You tried to step back to get away, but you'd been closed in, people calling out questions from all angles. Your mouth hung open as your head flicked left and right, not knowing how to respond. 
A man in a black hoodie with his head down pushed his way into the center of the crowd, standing directly in front of you. You glanced at him as he held a hand out to you. It was covered in scarves. You knew who it was immediately and grabbed on, allowing him to pull you into an embrace and back out from the crowd. Hold on to me, he said lowly into your ear as he picked you up. You caught sight of his green eyes from under the shade of the hoodie as they flashed with strong emotions. I'm so sorry, you whispered as he protected you, making his way out from the crowd. Don't apologize, he said as he held you in his arms. I'm going to activate my quirk to get us out of here quick, okay? You nodded and clung to him, pressing your face into his jumper as you felt the power surge through him. In an instant, you were both away from the crowd and in a quiet location. He put you down when he was certain that you were both safe and pushed his hoodie off. Are you okay, Yin? I'm so sorry about the headlines. I didn't think your being my assistant would cause such an uproar. How, how did you know where I was? You asked, more surprised that he had found you randomly in the streets. Uh, well, I saw the headlines and I knew people would recognize you immediately, so I came to find you. I just started heading towards your house, he said sheepishly. Oh, well, thank you for saving me back there, you replied with a sheepish giggle. Now what, though? You waited. He just stood there, looking down at you softly. Um, well, I guess this was bound to happen, he said, tugging on a curly lock of hair and pulling it down over his eyes shyly. Does it bother you that people might think we're dating? He asked softly. Of course not, you almost snorted. Oh, really? He said with surprise. Well, why are you surprised by that? You asked, ducking your head to try and maintain eye contact as his gaze fell to the ground. Uh, well, Yin, um, can I talk to you about something? He asked shyly, his hands now shoved firmly into his pockets. Of course, Deku, you said as he remained staring down at the ground. Um, well, I've never had a girlfriend before and I've spent my entire life training and aiming to be number one. I don't really know what to do in a relationship. I don't even think I'm worthy of having anyone by my side. Don't be silly! That's when you need someone the most, you retorted. Someone who you love. Someone who will stand by you through thick and thin and support you. You need as much love as you give to the world, Deku. He looked into your eyes. Would you be that person for me? He asked softly, his gentle eyes pleading for you to return his feelings. Your heart stopped beating. Did he just confess? Uh, are you saying that you want to be in a relationship with me, Deku? You asked breathlessly, with a dry mouth, your heart now beating wildly. He nodded, eyes still glued to yours. I really like you, Yin, he said meekly. You stepped towards him and saw his eyes widen with fear, with him almost stepping back. He removed his hands from his pockets and braced. I really like you too, Deku, he replied with a giant shaky smile, your nerves well and truly on edge. He had confessed. You'd returned his feelings. This was the greatest day of your life. His body relaxed slightly, but you could still see the nerves as he reached his hands out to you and pulled you in for a hug. You stood, hugging for a few minutes. His heart was beating so hard against your ear as you pressed it up against his chest. You squeezed him with your arms and wrapped, around, wrapped them around his back. So what now? you asked. Well, maybe it would be a good idea for us to keep it quiet for just a little bit until the headlines blow over, he said. You nodded. Sounds like a good idea. You pulled back and looked up at him, and he gazed down at you and brushed your hair softly to one side so he could caress your face. Slowly he leaned down towards you while you reached up on tippy toes. Your lips met as your eyes closed and you shared your first kiss. He pulled your body tighter against his and you wrapped your arms up around his neck as he kissed you deeper. The moment couldn't have been more perfect in some random quiet street somewhere in the middle of Japan. Not wanting to be suspicious, you and Deku walked the short way to work side by side, but not holding hands. Both of you were blushing madly, and every little thing he said made you giggle like a little schoolgirl. Deku was equally shy and couldn't stop looking at you. He was quite obviously enamoured, head over heels for his personal assistant, just as the headlines had implied. As you entered the work building, everyone in the immediate vicinity stopped and stared at the two of you. Deku blushed and sidestepped away from you a bit, and your eyes fell to the floor as you fiddled with your hands. Well, that's not obvious, the receptionist snorted with amusement. 
Oh, um, no, no, the, the headlines went, she just needed help, so I saved her from the masses, Deku stumbled over his own words as he painfully tried to cover for the two of you. Deku had to save me from all the questions of the public after the headlines this morning, you said, finally calming yourself enough to look the receptionist in the eye. She raised a brow at you, but didn't say any more, and the rest of the office workers went back to work, muttering and whispering to themselves and their colleagues. Well, this is going to be hard to hide, Deku whispered to you as you neared the offices. That's okay, we can talk about how we want to handle this later this afternoon, or I could pencil in a meeting with you sometime today so we could chat, he said with a shy smile. Pencil in the meeting with me today, he said with a smile. The more often I get to see you, the better. You blushed and giggled softly. Oh, okay. He said a small bye as you made your way to your office and he watched you walk away a bit before going into his own office. Deku couldn't concentrate on anything that day. The image of kissing you was well and truly burnt into his memory and he really, really wanted to kiss you again. You sighed as you tapped your pen against the list of appointments that were piling up, needing to be confirmed with a date and a time. You read the top appointment over and over again, your eyes registering the words but it not computing in your brain. Opening the diary to the current day, you looked at your watch. 11.36 a.m. You looked at his, at his appointment list for the afternoon. There were a few conference calls, but nothing big. So you looked for a slot where you could pencil yourself in. Hmm, I could grab him for 45 minutes at 2.15 p.m., you thought. Just then there was a knock on the door. Come in, you called happily. Deku's blushing head popped through the door and his beautiful green curls fell across his face as his soft eyes locked onto yours. Hi, Yin, he stammered nervously. Hi, Deku, he said with a giant smile, standing up from your desk and walking around to where he was half concealed behind the door. Come in, you added with a giggle. Oh, he said quickly as he entered the room and closed the door behind him. What brings you in here? you asked as you looked up at him. He slowly made his way closer to you, one of his arms slipping around your back and pulling you closer. Your palms hit his chest as your body collided with his. You, he said as he bent his head down to yours, capturing your lips instantly. You reached up and cupped his face as you kissed. You'd been thinking about his kiss all morning too, and it was nice that he had wanted to get another one from you, taking the initiative to steal one while at work. You both got lost in the moment as your eyes closed your lips parting slightly as his tongue brushed tenderly along your bottom lip. He was gentle yet purposeful, and before you knew it, it was a full-on make-out session. His hands were wandering your back and sides and hips, but he dared not touch your backside. That was an area beyond what he could deem as appropriate. Your fingers had made their way up into his beautiful thick curly hair, and you grabbed a handful as he pulled you closer to himself even more. Things were heating up when you two were interrupted by a soft knock at the door, you both jumped violently and parted quickly. You wanted to be as inconspicuous as possible, so you raced back around to take a seat at your desk and sat down, breathing rapidly. You motioned for Deku to ask who it was, and he straightened himself before calling out. It's just me, the receptionist, the lady called out as she opened the door. The conference call with Hiro Shoto and Hiro Red Ride is waiting for... She stopped mid-sentence and smirked. Sorry, seems like I've interrupted a moment, she said slyly noting Deku's messy hair and flushed face and your top that was still slightly askew and guilt written all over your face. Oh no, nothing at all, Deku said with a slight pant. She stifled a laugh and continued her sentence. Okay, well, your colleagues have been trying to call you and couldn't get through. They also tried Miss Lynn's office here, but she didn't pick up either. I, I didn't hear the phone ring, you said perplexed as you looked down at it. Oh, well, perhaps you were uh, preoccupied with other matters, she leered quickly before leaving so that you or Deku couldn't say anything in retaliation. Uh, I'd better go, Deku said sheepishly. Yes, yes, go, he replied. That uh, kiss was... Yeah, I really enjoyed that, he said with a heartwarming smile. Can I schedule another one of those? Oh, of course, he replied happily. I'm penciling in another one at 2.15pm, you added with a little cheeky eyebrow wiggle. Can't wait, he said, quickly going back to his office. You sighed happily and focused back on your work, your head slightly clearer now. You smiled and commenced, recommenced arranging Deku's appointments. Hi, sorry I'm late, 
Deku said breathlessly as he pushed the answer call button in his office. Hey, no problem, Karishima, the hero named Red Riot, replied. Yes, we did see the headlines this morning, Midoriya, Todoroki, the hero Shoto, said in his calm, monotone voice. Perhaps you were preoccupied. Deku blushed. How does everybody know what's going on? Oh, yeah, I wanted to ask who she was, Karishima asked curiously. Deku panicked. Uh, now, uh, now, listen, nothing is, well, like, it's not really something that the public... So there is something going on, Todoroki deducted calmly. Guys, please, we're still yet to... That's so manly, Karishima cried as he sniffed emotionally through the receiver. Please keep it quiet, Deku pleaded. It's only just happened this morning. Congratulations, Midoriya, Todoroki said. I'm glad you found someone. Let's not get ahead of ourselves now. Everything in the tabloids is just speculation. Nothing's confirmed yet, Deku said. Yin and I want to talk about how we want to handle it first before going public. Very wise, Todoroki said with approval. It might be hard on her, bro, Karishima said. She'll be instantly famous by association. I know, Deku said with a sigh. It's a big step. That's why we need to talk about it before making it common knowledge. Good, Todoroki said. Now back to business. We need to discuss the black market syndicate, he said authoritatively. Oh, oh yeah, of course, Deku said, snapping into professional mode. Knock, knock, knock. You glanced at the clock on the wall. 2.15pm. Your heart pounded in your chest. Come in, you called, knowing full well who it was on the other side of the door. Deku's bright, smiling face poked through the door as he pushed it ajar. Am I on time for my appointment? He asked with a bit of a cheeky grin. Smack bang on the dot, he replied with a bright smile, standing up and walking around the desk to him. He held the grin and let the door close behind him as he walked over to you, his hands immediately finding your sides, just on your ribcage. His beautiful shining green eyes gazed at you with so much emotion you almost melted. I've been thinking about your lips all morning, he said softly as he looked at them. And I've been thinking about your hands on me, he replied with a gentle rub to his arms as he held your sides in his hands. He looked down at his arms. They bore the scars of all those years of training, his hard work and dedication, and you smiled. S Sorry, my arms aren't smooth or they're perfect, he said looking up at him. This beautiful broccoli bean was just so pure and self-conscious, every day you fell more and more in love with him. Your confidence in your in your word, own words made Deku's heart swell and he bent his head down to kiss you. You made out for a short while then you pulled back. Wait, wait, hold on Deku, you giggled. As much as I'd love to kiss you all afternoon, we're supposed to be talking about us? Oh, yes, he said. Sorry, I got caught up. You led him over to the couch that was against the side wall of your office and sat down with him sitting beside you. Now, how did you want to go about things? You asked as he held your hands. Well, as you know, the minute that you're announced as my girlfriend, you're going to be on the cover of every magazine. You'll be followed by paparazzi, attract your own fans, and people that might not like you. Although, that's highly unlikely because of how beautiful you are. No one could hate you, he said with a gentle smile. You giggled. You're very sweet, he said, leaning in and kissing him on the cheek. Yeah, I, I'm aware the press will come up, come with all of this, but I just want to be with you. He very gently and very tenderly let go of your hands and placed his arms around you and pulled you into his side as he relaxed back and sighed, running his other hand through your hair and brushing your cheek. I'm so lucky to have you, he whispered lovingly. You rested your head on his chest as he stroked you. There was a moment of blissful silence as you enjoyed each other's embrace. Oh, I want to tell my mum first before we tell the public. She'll be so excited to meet you. Oh, this pure cinnamon roll is too pure. This love for his mum, I can't. You thought with a very heart-squeezed look on your face. Thankfully, Deku didn't see it. Maybe we should announce at the gala this weekend? He asked happily. That's perfect, you replied. That way everyone will find out at the same time. He smiled and hugged you again. Okay, well, that's sorted. Meeting adjourned. Now, he said, turning to look down at you as he held you in his arms. I need to, um... He bent his head back down to you, pecking you on the lips. I feel these again, he said as he kissed you once more. What? What is it? 
a female voice asked as she was called urgently into the journalist's office. Look at the absolute gem I captured, the journalist squealed with excitement. Okay, so I was on my way to work, heading down the usual back streets, and I see Hiro Deku in a hoodie. I knew it was him straight away, right? Even though he was undercover. Anyway, he's talking to this girl, yeah? So, well, like, I kind of recognized her from the other headline photo, like, a month back. But anyway, check this out. She basically screamed as she clicked on a picture to enlarge it on her computer. Oh, my God, are they kissing? The female colleague screamed, babe, oh my gosh, that's massive. You are in for a promotion because of this. I know, right? The German journalist screeched. I am beyond stoked. Right place, right time. Now, how much do you think the other news centers will pay for an image like this? Uh, like thousands? The female colleague snorted. Demand commission. You're going to be rich. The girls high-fived, cackling manically. Your life was about to be thrown into the fast lane. The next morning you woke to a cacophony of noise outside the front of your house. What on earth? You lazily dragged yourself out of bed and ambled sleepily down the hallway to the front door. It sounds like they're right outside my house. Pulling back the curtains and looking through the window near the door, you realised, with horror, that they were indeed right outside your house. News reporters, paparazzi, fans were all crowded around your front door. What the hell is going on? You screamed internally as you quickly shut the drapes. You raced back to the bedroom and grabbed your phone. Deku had tried to call you three times already. You were about to call him again when his name popped up and you smashed the answer call button immediately. Deku, there are heaps of people outside my house! You screeched into the receiver. I know, Yin, I know, and I'm so sorry. Someone saw us kiss in the street yesterday and they have the pictures. It's all over the news headlines, Deku replied apologetically. So it's out in the open now? You asked with a mixture of relief and fear. Yeah, he replied. Are you okay? Uh, I think so, he replied with a nervous laugh. How am I going to get out of my house though? Stay there, I'll come and get you from the back door, he replied. Is it going to be like this every day? You asked hesitantly. No, no, it won't be like this all the time, I promise. It's just because this is a huge event, it's attracted a lot of attention, he replied with a soft, comforting tone. I'm here to remember, I'll be by your side. You smiled as you held the phone to your ear. Okay, Deku, I'll see you soon. See you, he said before hanging up. You were just pulling your clothes on when there was a knock at the back door. It was Deku in his infamous black hoodie. He smiled as he pushed the hoodie off. Hey, come in, he said brightly as you opened the door. He looked nervous and you tilted your head. Deku, what's wrong? Oh, um, I've, I've never been in a girl's apartment before, he said sheepishly as he hung his head. You're so cute, you know that right? You gushed. This only caused him to blush. Come on in, I don't bite, he said cheerily as he went back up the hall. I just need to keep getting ready. Feel free to make yourself a cup of tea or grab some snacks from the cupboard. Deku nodded and watched you walk back to your room before he walked to the lounge room. He stood nervously, fiddling with his fingers before sitting lightly on the couch. You got ready and walked out of your room, looking into the lounge room to see him sitting like a statue on the couch. You giggled. Deku, you look so nervous. It's okay. He tried to relax his shoulders a bit and smiled at you. Would a kiss make it better? You asked with a cheeky smile. His smile widened to a grin and he nodded his head vigorously. So you walked over and stood between his slightly spread legs and then pulled his head to your chest. Your soft breast pressed against his cheek as he was pulled into your embrace and he inhaled sharply, freaking out and dying of happiness all at the same time. He was intoxicated with your scent. You smelled divine. You ran your fingers through his curls and kissed the top of his head as he clung to you for dear life. Are you feeling a little bit better now? You asked him. D definitely, he mumbled between your boobs as he squeezed you. Did you at least get a chance to tell your mum about us before the paparazzi got the picture in the headlines? You asked. Yes, I told her last night. She's so excited. I really love my mum. You'll love her too when you meet her. At that point, you had to seriously fight the urge to squish his face and scream at him for being too adorable. You managed to maintain your composure, but just barely. I thought my mum's hugs were the greatest, but yours are definitely better, he said bashfully into your chest, throwing you the biggest compliment he could fathom. You giggled and kissed the top of his head again, and he looked up at you as your eyes met. Instantly, your lips were against his. 
His kisses were heavenly, and you sighed happily as he moved his hands up to caress your face. Ah, perfect. A villainous voice sneered as he looked at the picture attached to the news headlines. Yeah, I could really have some fun with you, Deku, you bastard. Villain, multi being. His quirk was shapeshift. Had the ability to shift into anyone or anything's form just by looking at them, but could only maintain form for 20 minutes and can't mim mimic quirks. If the villain managed to have intercourse with the subject of interest, he was able to maintain their form for as long as he liked and was able to mimic their quirk. Multi cackled as he placed the paper down and walked to the door. Time to get to work. I'll see you soon, Yin. Deku managed to get you to work without any mishaps and avoided the paparazzi like experts. Getting to your offices once you'd reached the building though was another story. The receptionist was fangirling like you wouldn't believe and you had to work overtime to calm her down. Congratulations were being thrown at you from all angles as you stuck side by side making your way through the crowds. Oh, that was intense, he said with a dead inside laugh as you looked up at Deku once you'd reached your offices. Oh, I'm sorry, Yin, he said sadly. Sometimes I wish no one knew me. This lifestyle's so hard on people closest to me. It can get very tiring. Deku, please don't apologise. I'm in this for you, he said, reaching up and pecking him on the lips. Yin, w w would you call me Izuku? He asked shyly. You froze. First no basis. Then you smiled. Of course, Izuku. He practically passed out from the sound of his name on your lips. The day was absolute madness. There were constant calls to the office and everyone wanted the scoop. By 9am you had had enough and ran into Deku's office, slamming the door behind you and pressing your back up against it with your arms spread out, palms against the cool wood panting heavily. Deku looked up at you and saw the look on your face. Yin, are you okay? He asked with concern as he hopped up and came around the desk to hug you. It doesn't stop, he said numbly, devastation written across your face. He held you in his strong arms and kissed the top of your head. I'm so, so sorry. You've been thrown in the fast lane. They just keep calling and calling and calling. You droned on and on. I'm so sorry, he whispered again. Deku, I mean, Izuku, it's not your fault. It's no one's fault. They're just excited for us, I guess, but it's just a lot. Deku nodded sadly. I wish we could just run away and be alone. That would be amazing, he replied mumbling into his chest as you breathed in his scent. To just be us two alone. Deku smiled as he rested his chin on your head. Then his thoughts started to go south about what you two could get up to if you were truly alone. He cleared his throat and let you go as he stepped back, his face crimson red as he averted his eyes. Izuku, you okay? You asked as you tried to decipher the look on his face. F -f fine, y you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, he stammered tugging on his fringe to hide his eyes. You don't look fine, you pressed. He turned and quickly walked back behind his desk and sat down, holding his arms up over his face and peeking out from between his forearms, one arm up over his forehead and the other forearm covering his nose and mouth. You giggled. You look like an embarrassed schoolboy, Izuku. What's got you all flustered? He only went redder. Uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't think about you like that. Like what? You asked innocently. I, I don't want to say, he said as he waved his arms around. You laughed and walked over to him, pulling his head into your breasts for the second time that day. We're a couple now. You're allowed to have those thoughts, you emphasized. Do you get those thoughts too, Yin? He asked softly. Now it was your turn to blush. Uh, um, oh. Boy, if only you knew the kind of things that we got up to in my fantasies, you'd be blushing for weeks, you thought. So you just stood there and stroked his hair silently for a moment before replying. Uh, we don't have to discuss these things now, you said confidently, dismissing a potentially embarrassing topic. It's okay, he nodded. You hoped he understood what you were talking about. To be honest, you didn't even know yourself. But after cuddling and having a little kissing session, you felt better and braved going back to your office. Deciding with Deku that a national broadcast would cover all bases immediately, so you rang the head news centre and told them there would be an announcement at the entrance of his agency at 5pm that day. This is when Deku and you would break the news. 5pm rolled around and there was a mass of reporters and cameras out the front. Deku was in his hero costume, looking as hot as ever, and you were in, uh, work clothes. 
A stand had been placed at the doors and Deku walked up to where all the microphones had been placed. <clears throat> Hello everyone, he said with a bright smile. I'm here to confirm the truth behind the photo that was released earlier today. Cameras flashed and reporters wrote things furiously in their notebooks. As you may have guessed by now, Deku continued, there is someone very special who has stolen my heart, he said as he turned and flashed you a brilliant smile. She's beautiful, amazing, and I'm proud to announce her as my girlfriend. He turned and extended a hand towards you, beckoning you to come forward. Everyone, please welcome my beautiful girlfriend, Yin Lin. A cheer erupted and cameras went wild as you smiled nervously beside your man, his arm wrapped protectively around your side. He smiled lovingly at you as your eyes darted over the mass of people ahead. It was clear that he was smitten with you. After answering a few questions from reporters, you both thanked them for their time and hopped off the stand, heading back inside the building. Wow, what a scene, you yelped enthusiastically. I was so pumped from all that adrenaline. Deku laughed. Are you okay? Yes, I I'm fine, that was exhilarating. He laughed again. Glad you enjoyed yourself, he said happily. You both waited until the throng had died down before heading out. The sun had almost set and Deku insisted on walking you home. After dropping you off and leaving, he was walking the back streets when he passed a man who made his blood run cold. He stopped and turned to look at the person as he just passed, but the man kept walking. Odd, he thought, before turning and continuing his walk home. The man, the villain, Multi, after passing Deku, smiled maliciously. He had successfully imprinted Deku's form into his mind. Making a beeline for your house, he transformed into the hero Deku's form and knocked on your door. Who could that be? You asked yourself when you heard the knock on the door. You peeped through the window and saw Deku standing there. You smiled. Couldn't keep away? You asked cheekily as he opened the door to your boyfriend. Oh, you know it, baby, the supposed Deku replied. Baby? You questioned. He's never called me baby before, you thought. Can I come in? He asked. Oh, sure, sorry, you replied, stepping aside to let him in. He was moving differently. Something was off, but you just couldn't put your finger on it. Are you okay, Izuku? You asked. Me? He asked, turning to face you. Perfectly fine, beautiful. And you? He asked slowly as he walked towards you and caressed your sides, one hand slipping to your ass as he pulled you into him. You squealed. Izuku? What? He asked with a light-hearted giggle. I'm not allowed to grab a handful of this package. You pushed him off and stared him down. What's gotten into you? You asked sternly. What? He shot defensively. We're together now. It's normal for me to be this way. No, it's not, you shot back. You've never been this forward. Well, maybe I just can't hold back anymore, he said, stalking towards you as you backed up. Your back hit the wall and your breathing hitched as Deku boxed you in. You know what I want to do? He asked slowly, his eyes flashing with desire as he licked his bottom lip. I want to taste you. You flushed red, averting your eyes immediately. This was a little too much for you, and under fantasy circumstances, you would have been inviting a dominant Deku, but something was off at the moment. Get away from me, he said quietly. Sorry, honey bunch, what was that? Deku asked as he bent his head down to your neck, ghosting his lips across your skin. I said, get off me, he repeated louder. Oh, you really don't mean that, he said with a devious, deviant chuckle. The way he said it caused fury to rise in you and you shoved him hard with the palms of your hands to his chest. Did I stutter? You growled, anger now flashing in your eyes as you made direct eye contact, still blushing slightly from all this confused sexual tension. Deku scowled. Excuse me? You owe me this. Owe you? Yes, owe me. You are nothing and I've picked you up and sat you in the lap of luxury, he barked. You have it all now because of me. You glared at him, unable to speak. This wasn't like Deku. What had happened? Did you get hit by a quirk or something? You asked. You could tell something was definitely wrong. You're beyond rude, Yin. Deku snarled. You know what? We're done. We're over. Your eyes widened in shock. He saw your reaction and smirked. Unless you're willing to make it up to me in the bedroom, you can consider this relationship over. You swayed. It was a weird wager. Like, yeah, of course, you wanted to get it on with Deku at some point, but... Deku in this mood? No thanks. Well, I guess you need to leave then, you finally said coldly, looking down and pointing to the front door. You're going to regret this.
Deku snapped as he pushed past you and grabbed for the door. You're dead to me now, he added as he exited and slammed the door in your face. Your heart fell into your shoes as tears welled in your eyes. Is... is that it? Is it really over? What the heck just happened? Is this actually a side of Izuku that I don't know about? Hot tears streamed down your face as you turned and walked numbly to your room. Deku got home to his apartment, feeling slightly drained. Hey, cat? He called as he entered. Where are you? A growl from the bedroom answered his question and he smiled. I'll be right in, okay? He called back. Grabbing a bag of chips, he walked in and plopped down on the bed beside the sprawled out fluff ball. You look comfy? He commented to the angry Pomeranian. Cat just glared at him without moving. Hey, uh, so, um, it's out in the open now. Yin and I are dating, Deku said to the little ball of fluff. Cat raised his head and look at Deku, looked at Deku. Y you're still number one, Deku added quickly. Cat lay his head back down. Can I bring her over to meet you soon? He asked his little pup. The pup just rolled his eyes and looked away. Aw, come on, Katsuki, don't get all huffy. She's really sweet. You'll love her. Cat growled. She gives really good head rubs, Deku said in a tantalizing sing-song voice. The blonde ball of fluff eyed Deku dubiously from the corner of his eye. I knew that would get your attention, Deku chuckled. Cat snorted through his nose and looked away. Katsuki, Sundari, Deku chuckled as he popped some chips in his mouth. After a terrible sleep, you woke the next day. Can I just call in sick today? I don't want to see his face. I'm not lying because I legitimately feel like I'm going to throw up, you thought as you lay in bed staring at the ceiling. Deciding to be the bigger woman, you thought it best to show up for work and at least do your job. You could just shut yourself in your office and refuse to see him. That'd work. You packed your lunch and headed out. Head hung low and bags under your eyes that would definitely put Aizawa Shoto's to shame. You dragged your feet to work. You were about halfway there when your mum ran up to you out of nowhere. She looked a little dishevelled and was almost in hysterics. Mum? Mum! Mum, calm down, what's wrong? You asked as she frantically grabbed at you. Grandma! It's Grandma! She wheezed. She needs you! Please go to this address! She then handed you a piece of paper with an address scribbled on it before mumbling something about getting the rest of the family together and disappearing. You were half in shock, but your mum was really put out by this, so you followed orders without hesitation. First of all, you rang the agency, and the receptionist answered. Hi, uh, it, it's Yin, you said quickly. I'm sorry, I, I can't come in today. Family emergency. Oh, is everything okay? The receptionist asked. Uh, I don't know yet. Sorry, I'll be in touch. Um, okay, take care, the receptionist replied in a confused voice. You opted to ignore it and grunted a goodbye before hanging up. Deku walked happily to work with a spring in his step, saying good morning to the receptionist as he passed. Oh, Deku, is everything okay with Yin? I thought you'd be with her, the receptionist asked. Deku stopped. Yin? What do you mean? What's happened? What? The desk clerk asked. What do you mean? You don't know? She rang this morning and said that she wasn't coming in because of a family emergency. Deku checked his phone. She hasn't texted me, he replied with a dejected look on his face. Are you two okay? The receptionist asked. I... I thought we were. I'm confused that she didn't let me know, he said, getting more and more anxious. Something isn't right. Deku made his way to the office and rang your number. No answer. He rang again. No answer. She's in trouble, I know it, he panicked as he put his phone down. Grabbing the office phone, he rang the receptionist. Please, I need a list of all the hospitals in the city, he said urgently. Yes, Deku, right away. Do you need me to call some of them to help you locate her quicker? The receptionist asked. She knew exactly what he was aiming for by ringing the hospitals. Yes, please, he replied gratefully as he hung up. She said family emergency. If there's no one in the hospital under Lynn, then I'll locate her mum. Failing that, I'll call in reinforcements. Just then, the receptionist rang back. Deku, I'll be in in a second with the list, she said. But in the meantime, would you like me to try calling the Lynn residents? We're on the same wavelength, he said as he smiled lightly at her. Yes, please. And if you get through to anyone, please notify me. I want to talk to them. The receptionist nodded and scurried out of the room. Deku's fingers worked lightly, calling hospital after hospital, but no one had been brought in under the Lynn name. Suddenly the receptionist appeared. Deku, line two, it's Yin's mother. 
Deku made a hurried apology to the hospital clerk that he had just rung and hung up, quickly pressing the answer call button on line two. Hello, uh, Mrs. Lin. This is Hiro Deku. I've been unable to be in contact with your daughter today. She told me the receptionist here had said that there'd been a family emergency. Your mum greeted Deku kindly. Oh, I've been wanting to give you my congratulations and thank you for choosing my daughter. And I know now is obviously the wrong time, but it just wouldn't be right to ignore such a... Miss Lin, I am so sorry, but I have concerns for Yin. Is everything okay? Deku asked, desperately trying to hide his rising panic. Yes, Deku, there's no family emergency. I'm sorry, I can't help you there. Deku's heart sank. Now what? Is my daughter okay? Your mum suddenly asked, realising that something was wrong. Miss Lin, please don't worry. I will find her immediately, Deku said as he placed his f fist firmly on the desk. She means the world to me, he added as anger flicked in his eyes. I will bring her back. You made your way quickly to the address on the paper, confused, tired and upset from last night's interaction with Deku. Oh, what the heck is going on? Why all of a sudden these catastrophes? You found the address and it was an apartment block. You rang the buzzer. Hello, doctor's office, a voice said through the speaker. Uh, hi, my name's Yin. I'm here to see my grandma. Oh, of course, Miss Yin. Come up, come up, please, the voice said as the gate clicked open. You thanked them and entered, heading inside the building and up to the apartment number that you had been directed to. You knocked on the door and a middle-aged man opened. Please come in, Miss Yin, he said politely and stepped aside for you to enter. You walked in and he closed the door behind you. Where's my grandma? You asked, looking around the apartment that didn't look anything like a doctor's office at all. What's going on? You asked him with a seriously confused look on your face. Please take a seat, Yin. She'll be out shortly, the man said, ignoring your questions. You sat down on one of the chairs in the lounge and waited. The man left the apartment. What the heck is going on? You thought. Deku changed into his hero outfit and rang his colleague, Hiro Shoto. Hi, Todoroki, I need your help. Yin hasn't showed up to work this morning and her story to the receptionist isn't checking out. She won't answer my calls and I'm concerned for her safety. Oh, Todoroki replied. Okay, I will be right over. Thank you, Deku said before hanging up. The office phone rang and he picked it up again. Yes, he asked. Deku, Shoto's just arrived to see you. That was quick. Deku replied, thanking the receptionist and requesting that she send Todoroki in before hanging up. Shoto opened the office door. Deku? he asked. Hi, Todoroki, I need... Are you okay? Deku asked, tilting his head at the jewel-haired hero. Fine. Why? Todoroki replied. You called me Deku, Deku said curiously. You usually call me Midoriya. Eh, thought I'd switch it up a bit, Todoroki replied with a nonchalant shrug. Switching it up? Todoroki's never said that phrase before. Anyway, what were you saying, Midoriya? Todoroki prompted. Oh, I fear Yin is in danger, Deku said. We need to start a search. Ah, uh, I know you love her and are always thinking the worst, but what if she just decided not to come in today? Todoroki asked. That doesn't make any sense, Deku said in bewilderment. Maybe she decided she doesn't want to be with you anymore and she doesn't want to see you, he added. But, but why? Deku asked with knitted brows. Todoroki, you're not making any sense. Deku studied Todoroki's face a moment and then his eyes widened. Activating his quirk, he lunged at the office door and slammed it shut, turning to face Todoroki, his head lowered and anger filling his being. Who are you? He said lowly, his glowing green eyes glued to the heterochromic eyed hero. He crouched slightly, arms up ready to fight. Todoroki stared at him for a moment, appearing innocent. Then a malicious smile spread across his face. You got me, Deku. Who are you? Deku demanded with a growl. Oh, we've met before, Todoroki replied as his features morphed. Deku braced. Name yourself. He watched as Todoroki slowly morphed into the villain multi-being. You, he gasped. Where's Yin? Multi laughed viciously. What? You think I'm going to tell you where she's at? I don't think so. She's mine now. Well, I'll make her mine. He cackled manically as he dissolved into a slime-like substance and swiftly slid up the wall and out of a ceiling vent. Deku ran to the desk and grabbed his phone. It's a long shot, but I'll see if I can activate a pin drop and get a reading on Yin's last known location, he thought as he furiously flicked through his apps. 
I'm on my own with this one. I can't trust anyone to help in case they're a villain in disguise. I might also need to be careful of the villain impersonating Yin. His thumb found the app and he opened it quickly, punching your mobile number in and hitting send. The loading icon flashed multiple times, suffocating him with how intensely slow the wait seemed. Finally it loaded and your location came up at an apartment block not far from the agency. Last ping was registered 10 minutes ago. She could still be there, but I have to get there before Multi gets there, as he might move her to or take her phone. Shoving his phone back in his pocket, he raced from the office and threw the front door of the building open. Activating his quirk, he used it to speed up his run and the green lightning flashed around him, cutting red streaks into his veins as the power coursed through him. A vortex of wind swirling in his wake was the only evidence that he had been past that place. He was a man on a mission. It had been close to an hour and a half of you just sitting in this damn apartment doing nothing but stare at the wall. This is friggin' ridiculous. Where's my grandma? Where is everybody? Why doesn't this even look like a doctor's office? You stood up, deciding to look around the place and see if you could make any sense of having to wait here. You had just walked into one of the bedrooms when you heard the front door fly open. Yin! A very familiar voice called out. Yin, are you here? You froze. That's Izuku's voice. I don't want to see him though after last night, but I kind of do want to see him. Before you knew what you were doing, you had walked out of the bedroom and you were standing in the doorway looking at him. Your breathing hitched and a knot formed in your chest when you saw him. He looked so much more handsome than when you remembered him from last night. Why is it when you break up with someone they suddenly look instantly hotter? Yin, Deku said with a saddened look on his face. I'm so sorry about last night. You were right, I got hit by a quirk, but I'm better now. Your eyes filled up with tears. So you didn't mean what you said? He shook his head sadly. No, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry that I said it was over. I didn't mean that. Your heart started beating wildly as he walked slowly towards you and caressed your sides. Please be mine again, he said as he bent his head down and rested it in the crook of your neck, kissing you, your neck gently. A tingle went through your spine as he held you and you ran your fingers through his hair as you hugged him. Of course I'll be yours again, he said as you willed the tears back. They were tears of relief. You were so glad to have him back at least. But Izuku, how did you find me here? What? Why am I here? What's going on? I don't know, Yin, but you definitely need to stay here. There's someone out to get you and you need to hide here, Deku said as he looked around. It might be best if you hide in the bedroom. Wait, but I was told to come here by my mum because my grandma wasn't doing well. How come now I need to be here because someone's after me? You asked with confusion. Don't ask questions, Deku said. I'll protect you, okay? Just go to the bedroom. You looked at him, and his eyes met yours. Something didn't seem right. Uh, are you sure you're okay, Izuku? You asked him. Fine, I'm, I'm fine. Quickly now, he said, pushing you backwards into the room. Wait, something isn't right, you said, pushing back and trying to stand your ground. Get into the bedroom, he said briskly, punching his words with emphasis. No, you said, trying to run. Seriously, woman, just get in the damn room! Deku spat in an irritated tone. You gasped. You're not Izuku! Izuku would never swear! Suddenly, Deku's features started to change and his face morphed before your very eyes. You screamed and covered your mouth in fear. What the hell was going on right now? You're right, the disfigured person said with a malicious smirk. I'm not your beloved Deku. You stood there, frozen in place. So many emotions were coursing through you. Was it anger? Was it fear? Was it shock? Or was it D? All of the above. Yeah, definitely D, all of the above. I'm not Deku, but I'm going to ruin him from the inside out, the now transformed villain said with a harrowing smile. And you're going to help me. What? You asked numbly. Yes, my sweet Yin. You're going to sleep with me, and then I'm going to pose as you, sleep with Deku, steal his powers, then run amok. Painting him as a villain and tarnishing everything he stands for, the villain said with an evil cackle. No, he whispered. That's not going to happen. Oh, but it will, he said, grabbing your wrist sharply. Now, he said, his voice lowering and becoming more and more evil by the second. Get into the bed. You screamed and fought him, punching and kicking anything your legs or arms came in contact with. His cursing and insults didn't did nothing for your onslaught of attacks. Slowly he dragged you, dragged you further into the room and threw you on the bed. Now, he said as he pinned you down, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Multibang, but you can call me Multi. It's a cute nickname, right? 
He cackled as he bent his head down and kissed your collarbone lightly. Or would you prefer me to be in Deku form? He asked with a nasty grin. Deku's mind was going just as fast as his legs were. He had mapped out a mental route of how to get to the apartment block, but the pin drop only gave the building location and not the building or level number. How am I going to know what level she's on? Multi would be getting close by now. If he's not already there, he might try and move her. He tore around the final corner and jumped the fence to the apartment instantly. Windows, he thought, as he landed and prepared to launch up the side of the building. I might catch a glimpse of her. His eyes scanned quickly along each window as he leapt up the building wall, using balcony ledges and drain pipes as footing as he powered up to the roof. He flew up and over the ledge and crouched there a second, panting furiously. Ah, oh, this isn't going to work. I need to find her location. Suddenly below, he heard a muffled scream. Launching into action, without a second thought, he sprinted to the edge of the building and swung over the edge, falling down the side of the apartment block. The scream came again from the seventh floor, just above where he'd passed on his way down. He activated his quirk and slammed his feet into the balcony ledge, propelling himself back up and Detroit smashing his way through the window. Multi, still in his villain form, had managed to rip some of your clothing off, but hadn't gotten too far into it, anything apart from placing kisses across your exposed stomach, when the bedroom window exploded and Deku came hurling through. You screamed as shards of glass flew everywhere, and you rolled off the bed and onto the floor to protect yourself. Your captor had let you go and had seemingly disappeared. You stayed down with your head covered until you heard Deku's voice. You looked up and saw him standing on the other side of the bed, panting furiously as his loving eyes met yours. Yin, he breathed, relief washing over his face. Are you okay? No, you're not, Izuku, you screeched, backing away, pulling your shirt close and trying to hide your body. What? Y Yin, it's okay, I'm here. No, you're not! I'm not falling for that again! You yelled in a shaky voice, tears pricking at the corner of your eyes. Deku froze. What had happened? Why didn't you believe it was him? Izuku? Another voice called from outside the bedroom, and another person who looked just like you turned up in the bedroom doorway. Deku looked from you to the other you and back again. Your forms were identical. Both had the same dishevelled look and all. The other you stumbled towards Deku, crying and falling into his arms. Please help me, she sobbed. Deku embraced her and held her close. No, you yelled, standing up. That's not me. Wait, what if you're not the real Izuku? The other you suddenly screamed and pushed off Deku. The poor man looked completely confused. He looked wildly from you back to your double. Which one is Yin? He thought. I need to identify the villain here so I can take him out. Okay, Deku said firmly. What was written on the note that I wrote to you when you received the flowers in your office? The other you scoffed. You seriously don't trust me at all, do you? Thank you for being you, he replied quickly, relieved that he was indeed the real Izuku, and doubly relieved that he'd been able to find a way to tell which of you was the real one and which was the fake in an instant. He immediately grabbed for the other you and their form disintegrated into slime. He chased the retreating sloshing mess out into the living area and tried to cage it with solid objects, but it was obvious that Multi was crafty and definitely didn't want to be caught. Disappearing down the little drain pipe, Deku failed to catch him, much to his displeasure. He turned quickly and ran back to the bedroom, entering and making his way to where you were trying to fix yourself up. Izuku, I'm so sorry. I, Last night, you... He... You broke down in tears. Deku grabbed you in a grateful embrace and buried his face into your neck. Yin, he mumbled in a quivering voice. Are you okay? I thought I'd lost you. I was so worried. You sobbed as he held you, and you held him back. Did he hurt you? Deku asked with gentle concern as he pulled his face back to look at you. You shook your head. No, you saved me in the nick of time for the third time now, you said with a slightly hitched laugh, trying to calm your crying and make it make light of the situation now that it was over. He pulled back and took your face in his hands, wiping your tears away with his thumbs. I'm here now, okay? I'm just glad you're okay, he said with a soft smile, and you started crying all over again. Y Yin, what happened? Please don't cry. Why are you crying so hard? He asked as you sobbed with relief that you actually had the real him back. Last night, you sobbed. He came to my house in your form and broke up with me. Deku scowled as he turned his head around to look at where he had lost the villain down the pipe. I'll catch him and make him pay, he said in the most serious tone you'd ever heard. For now, we need to get you to the hospital. You have cuts all over you, I'm so sorry, he said, ripping a piece of his costume and using it to bandage a particularly deep cut on your arm. 
Thank you, Izuku, said softly as he picked you up bridal style and carried you to, out of the apartment. After your assessment at the hospital, they let you go. Apart from being a bit scratched up and tired, you were fine. But you never wanted to be apart from Izuku again, and it was obvious that he was thinking the same thing. Uh, y Yin? He asked as you two left the hospital side by side. Would you c consider li living with me at my place with me? He asked shyly, repeating his words and fumbling over them as he looked down at his fingers and fiddled with them. There was no moment of hesitation between his question and your answer. Yes! His eyes shot up and over to you. Y yes, as in y you'll consider it? No, yes, as in I accept. His form relaxed and a giant loving smile took over his beautiful freckled face. Really? Of course, you replied emphatically. Oh, I'm so glad. I just, I, I want you close to me so I can make sure you're safe all the time, he said bashfully. I could never forgive myself if, if anything were to happen to you. You smiled and reached up to kiss his cheek, causing him to blush deeply. You're gorgeous, Izuku, he whispered happily. The next day was gala day. The program didn't start until night, so Deku had insisted on taking you shopping to get a nice outfit for the occasion. Spending the day with your boyfriend, walking from shop to shop, hand in hand with him, was pure heaven for both of you, and he would blush every time you reached out and took his hand in yours. He wore one of his favourite All Might shirts that was very old and well worn, but it hugged his toned form in all the right places. Deku had politely asked you to take a seat at a cafe while he ordered you drinks to enjoy while you were shopping, and your eyes couldn't help but take him in as he stood in line. His thick, broad shoulders tapered to a trim waist, then to some juicy thick thighs. You bit your bottom lip and looked away to compose yourself. Damn, my man's a frickin' meal! You thought ahead to what it would be like living with him, and your mind went straight to the bedroom, the last image being of him over the top of you, naked, panting and sweating as your fingers dragged down his back and his body arched and ground into you. Yin? His voice pierced through your thoughts and you jumped violently, letting out a little yelp of shock. Yin? Yin! Your nose is bleeding! You screamed and covered your face to hide the embarrassment, and he raced off and grabbed some tissues and was back in an instant. Are you okay? He asked as he crouched down and tried to attend to the physical evidence of your dirty thoughts. I I'm fine. It's, it's just a random coincidence, you said quickly, as you took the tissues and wiped the blood away. We can sit for a bit if you like. We, we don't need to rush anywhere, he said, his brows knitting in concern as his green eyes pierced yours with their love. No, no, no I'm, I'm fine, you said with a smile. Okay, if you're sure, he said again, standing up and offering you his hand. You took it and he pulled you in for a quick hug and a kiss on the top of your head. Lean on me if you need to, he said as he linked his well-toned forearm with yours. You smiled shyly and walked arm in arm with him out of the shop. As you shopped, you discussed your moving in with him and how things would work. I have a spare room. You could sleep in there, he said with a smile. What if I sneak into your bedroom at night? You asked with a cheeky smile. He blushed and covered his face with his forearm, but you could see just how bright red he had gone from where his forearm wasn't covering parts of his face. You giggled. You're joking, Izuku. He peeked out and looked at you. I, I just, if you hopped into bed with me. His mouth went dry and he couldn't talk as his mind flashed images of you in skimpy sleepwear, his fingers tracing your soft curves as you whispered his name. You laughed. He was now sporting a look that looked very similar to what you remember of his classmate Denki Kaminari, what he used to pull, the face he used to pull when he overdid his quirk and went a bit brain dead. You walked over and kissed him swiftly on the lips. Yin, he stuttered. This was all too much for his poor innocent mind. Breathe, Izuku, you laughed. It's okay, I was kidding. I wouldn't sneak in unannounced. I won't come in unless you invite me. He smiled sheepishly and rubbed the back of his neck while averting his eyes. I, I, I will invite you at some point. You grinned. I'm not pushing you. We have our lifetime ahead of us, he said, stepping back towards him and kissing the tip of his cute little freckled nose. Now, help me find something, you whined playfully. This snapped him out of his little embarrassed moment and he threw himself into helping you pick out something to try. You tried on a particularly nice outfit and opened the change room door. What do you think? You asked as he stepped out, looking down at the clothes that you'd put on. You looked up at him with a smile. He was bright red in the face with awestruck eyes. It's, wow, it's really pretty, he stammered. You look beautiful. You think so? 
you asked. He nodded emphatically. I like it. I'll get it then, he said, heading back inside the stall. Deku wiped his brow. He was having a hard time seeing you in all these beautiful outfits, showing them off just for him. How was he going to survive seeing you in the same house as him every day? You bought the outfits and headed out with him by your side. Oh, Yin, should I organise for your things to be packed and moved to my place? He asked. I have some good friends in the removalist business. They'll look after us. Oh, that'd be wonderful. When should we organise it for? You asked as you took a sip of the drink that he had bought for you earlier. I was thinking, today, he said. You choked on the drink as you swallowed it. Today? That's quick. Oh, I, um, oh, I, I just, but... He rubbed his arm and looked away as he walked beside you. If that villain comes back... You knew he just wanted you safely beside him at all times and you smiled. Okay, whatever makes you feel the most comfortable, he said, taking his hand and squeezing it. How about we go to your house now and get your essentials, then you can come and get ready at my place, Deku asked as you walked hand in hand. Sounds good, he said with a smile. Oh, I'm glad because I really want you to meet Cat, Deku said. You cocked your head curiously at him. Cat? Yeah, Deku said with sparkly eyes. You'll love Deku! Oh my god, you're my favourite hero! A young fan called out as she came running over, covered in Deku merch. Can I please, 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 please get your autograph? You were still thinking about this cat chick. Who was she? How come Deku had never mentioned her before? Oh my god, and Yin is here too! I'm so sorry for giving you two of my OTP! The fan squealed at you, pulling you out of your thoughts and back into reality. Who? Oh, us! You said with a light laugh. Thank you, I ship us too, he said with a wink. Deku was confused. He signed the fans' merchandise and said a polite goodbye before continuing down the road with you. What's an OTP? Deku asked once you were out of earshot of the fan. Oh, it means one true pairing. It means she likes us together as a couple, he said with a smile. Uh, so about Cat, is she like your cleaning lady or something? You asked. Cat? Deku asked with a laugh. No, definitely not, but I must say, Cat does run the house. How old is Cat? Uh, about four years old, Deku said, pondering the question and his answer. Does Deku have a child to someone? But he said he hadn't ever... Or maybe it's his younger sister? I didn't know he had a younger sister, he thought. Deku was just as lost in thought, smiling about his little pup Cat, and you were wondering who this mysterious woman was. You decided to just wait until you met this cat before jumping to any conclusions. Deku put the key in his door and turned it, glancing back over his shoulder to where you were standing behind him. She's here. She's actually at my house. Yin's going to be living at my house, Deku thought as he tried to calm his erratic breathing. He was getting way too excited about this. You were standing waiting patiently. You had a few items in hand, but Deku had most of your stuff in the bag that was slung over his shoulder. Is he okay? Why is he taking so long to open the door? You thought. Are you okay, Izuku? You asked. You saw his shoulders flinch. S Sorry, Yin, I I'm fine. He said as he opened the door and pushed it open. Hey, Cat, I'm home! He called out as he led you inside. You looked past him, waiting for Cat to appear. Where is Cat? You asked as you looked around. Probably in my bed, Deku said with a laugh. You desperately tried to hide the shocked look on your face. You let her sleep in your bed? You asked. Her? Oh, oh, no, Cat is a boy. He's my pet, Deku said quickly. I'm so sorry, Yin. I'm so sorry for the misunderstanding. Oh, Cat, you said with a laugh. You named your cat Cat? N no, no, he's a dog, Deku said with an embarrassed smile as he rubbed his neck. You named your dog Cat? Just then, the cutest little ball of Pomeranian fluff trotted out of the bedroom and stared you down. Oh my gosh, you're so cute, he squealed at the bored-looking pup. Nice to meet you, uh, Cat. Uh, it's Cat for Katsuki, Deku said with a chuckle. Oh, I get it now. Katsuki Bakugo, your primary school best friend and high school rival, he said as the penny dropped. I can see the resemblance, he said with a laugh. The Pomeranian growled and glared at you. Same temperament too, Deku laughed. But I love him. He's adorable, you gushed at the still scowling dog. Cat huffed sharply and spun around, trotting back to the bedroom. 
Well, I just got told, didn't I? He said with a chuckle. I'm used to it by now, Deku said with a smile. He put your bag down and reached out to you, pulling you in for a hug and a kiss. I can't believe you're in my house, he whispered into your hair as he held you against himself. Well, best believe it, because it's real, he said, looking into his sparkling green eyes as he leaned down and captured your lips against his. You made out for a little bit, until Deku suggested that you both go to your room to set it up. You skipped along behind him as he took you to his spare room and pushed the door open. I... I hope it's okay, he asked sheepishly. It's perfect, you squealed as you pulled your toiletries bag out and sat it on the counter in the bathroom. Stay and chat while I pull things out and get ready for tonight, he said happily as you pulled different things out of your bag. Suddenly you remembered that you had some Deku merchandise that would make you look a little, uh, okay, a lot like an otaku. And you paused before pulling out your limited edition Deku sleeping pants and hid them at your front with your back turned to him as you backed towards the bed and quickly shoved them under the pillow. Deku saw you as he sat at the end of the bed, but just thought that you were hiding some lacy pyjamas and blushed. She wears sexy stuff like that? Uh, I can go if you like, he said, trying to make it easier for you, if he were to leave. No, 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 sorry, I'm just a little embarrassed about some stuff. You don't need to be, I'm sure I'd love to see you in anything, Deku said, still thinking that the pyjamas were lacy and suggestive. These? He said, reaching under your pillow and pulling out a pair of cotton pants with his face and body all over them. Whoa, he said in shock. You really like me. Is it too much? He laughed hollowly. He shook his head. It's cute. You'll look cute in my pants. You blushed. Wait, I, I didn't mean... He flailed his arms around wildly as he stuttered to get the right words out. You giggled and kissed his hot red forehead. It's okay, Izuku, you don't have to be so shy or flustered. He settled a little and smiled. Thanks, Yin, this is all new to me, he said, looking down at his hands and fiddling with his fingers. I really like you and I don't want you to say anything that would make you feel uncomfortable or scare you. That's impossible, Izuku, you implored. You could never say anything that would make me feel uncomfortable. Your comforting words relaxed him and he looked up at you with a happy smile. Uh, I'll let you unpack a bit and get ready. Would you like a drink? He asked as he stood up. Just water would be lovely, he said as he unpacked some more things. Sure thing, he said as he left. You listened as his soft footsteps disappeared down to the kitchen and you quickly dug into the bottom of your bag and pulled out a frighteningly large amount of limited edition Deku plushies and figurines. There's nothing he could ever do that would make me feel uncomfortable, but I am like 100% sure that he would flip out if he saw just how much Deku merch I have. You giggled softly as you quickly hid them in a drawer. Deku was back shortly with two glasses of water and set one down for you on the desk. Did you need a hand unpacking anything? He asked. You shook your head. No, I'm good, thank you. He smiled and sat back down on the bed, placing his water nearby. His eyes watched you as you unpacked and moved around the room, taking in every detail. The way your hair fell across your face when you bent down to pick something else out of the bag, the way your shirt moved up and pulled in different ways when you were reaching out to put things in a drawer or on a bench, the sneaky glimpse that he would get of your soft side as your shirt rode up. You noticed the silence and glanced over at him. He was transfixed on you and suddenly you were very self-conscious. Is everything okay, Izuku? You asked. Could you come here a minute? He asked shyly. Sure, he said as he walked over. He reached out and took your hand gently, spreading his knees a little and guiding you in with his hand between them. One hand found your side as your body approached him, and he inhaled softly as he looked up into your eyes and you looked curiously down at his. His hand that had gently held your hand released its grip and found your other side. You're so beautiful, Yin, he breathed as he gazed up at you. You ran your fingers through his curly locks and his eyes fluttered slightly at your touch. You're gorgeous yourself, my Izuku, he said with a soft smile. You bent your head down and his lips readily accepted yours. The kiss heated up quickly and before you knew what you were doing you had lifted one knee up and placed it over his thigh, pulling your body into him as he wrapped his arms behind you to support you as you lifted your other leg up to straddle his lap. He still refused to touch you below the waist, but his hands on your back were increasing in pressure as he fought to hold himself together. You were both getting bolder as you got more comfortable with each other, 
and although he was blushing at feeling your breasts pressing to his chest, he definitely liked having you so close to him. He could feel your entire body against his. Oh, how he wanted to be one with you. But being the respectful being that he was, he was just happy being able to hold you like this for now. You continued to kiss and cuddle closely for a while, enjoying having a quiet moment to yourselves in a place that wasn't going to be interrupted by colleagues and receptionists, when suddenly a growl at the door broke up the happy session. You pulled away from the kiss as you looked at the door. A very indignant looking ball of blonde fluff was staring you down, apparently appalled by what it had just witnessed. Cat, I I'm sorry, Deku blurted out suddenly. Cat erupted into a barking mess as Deku stood up and placed you gently on the ground. But, but she's my girlfriend, he said frantically. I, I know, but you need to understand. You looked wildly from Deku to Cat and back to Deku. Is he apologising and trying to reason with his dog? You're still my number one, Deku said as he walked over to pick up the little bundle, who growled and ran from the room with Deku calling out to him as he chased him down the hall. An amused smirk graced your face. He treats Cat like he would if he were the real Katsuki, you giggled. It's very sweet that he cares so much for his pet's feelings. You are finding Deku cuter and cuter each passing moment. Yin, how are you going? Deku called down the hall. Ready to go soon? It was almost gala time, and you finished up getting ready and then called back to him. Almost ready! You picked up your handbag and walked out of the room, looking down as you walked out. Wow, Deku said softly. You looked up at him. He was awestruck. I'm so lucky to have you, he added softly as you approached him. He looked pretty hot himself. It was just a normal tuxedo, but man, he scrubbed up well. You're lucky to have me? I'm the lucky one, you said as you kissed him lightly on the lips. You look amazing. Oh, thank you, he said with a shy smile. The gala was in full swing when you arrived, and you almost got blinded by the lights of cameras as they flashed aggressively at you and Deku as you started the red carpet walk arm in arm. Fans screamed his names from the sidelines and you immediately had flashbacks of your own self being one of those ones that used to stand in the crowds and scream for him. Look how far you'd come. You looked up at his face, smiling as he waved to them. I have the sweetest boyfriend in all of Japan. After some short interviews with sideline reporters, you both went inside to find your seat. Do you know where we're sitting? You half yelled over the loud music and talking. I'm usually on the same table as Todoroki, he called back, his eyes scanning the room for the handsome jeweled head hero. Wait, T Todoroki? Todoroki Shoto? Suddenly Deku spotted him and called his name. Even over the din inside the building, Todoroki heard him and turned around. Oh my gosh, it's him, it's really him! Midoriya, Todoroki said in his rich monotone voice. And Miss Lin, he said with a polite head nod. Pleasure to see you both, and a pleasure to meet you, miss, he added, extending his hand for you to reach out with yours. You reached out and he took your hand delicately, kissing the back of your hand before letting it go and giving you a small smile. She's beautiful, Midoriya, he added, as his gorgeous mismatched eyes met Deku's. I know, Deku said proudly, his soft gaze falling on you. You didn't know what to say, so you just pulled yourself closer to Deku and giggled like a little schoolgirl. I just got called beautiful by the top-ranked popularity hero. Well, well, who do we have here? A voice said from nearby. He looked over and saw the hero, Chargebolt, making his way over. Kaminari, Deku said happily. This is my girlfriend, Yin. The flirtatious blonde's eyes took you all in as he stepped back slightly to look you up and down, a soft whistle escaping his lips as his eyes travelled back up and met yours. You were feeling very put on the spot right now. Nice work, Midoriya, Kaminari said with a wink to you. You have no shame, Kaminari, Todoroki said with the most deadpan voice you'd ever heard. Kaminari burst out laughing and the three boys continued to chat while Deku patted your arm reassuringly. Conversation continued and you got to meet more of Deku's colleagues and classmates, which of most you remembered from the sports festival all those years ago. Oi, Deku! An angry voice called over the crowd as you and Deku had found your seats. Kachan! Deku called back happily when he saw who it was. Dynamite himself strode through the throng of people and stood square in front of Deku. I won't lose to you tonight in the polls, he said angrily as his piercing red eyes bore into your handsome heroes. Oh, of course, I won't lose either, Deku said with a stutter, 
Yet his words sounded more and more confident as the sentence continued. Dynamite clicked his tongue angrily, flashing a look at you before turning around and storming off. Man, his eyes are intense, he said breathlessly to Deku as you both watched the handsome, angry blonde stalk away. He's amazing, isn't he? Deku said with sparkles in his eyes. He's an amazing hero. You smirked. Am I the apple of your eye, or is he? The night proceeded, and you kept pinching yourself. I am sitting on the VIP table with Izuku, Shoto, Chargebolt, and Red Riot. There were dances, speeches, and awards, and Deku seemed to be getting the majority of the awards, much to your delight, and you whistled and clapped every time he got called to the stage. As the night wore on, you noticed that there seemed to be some signalling between Todoroki and your Deku. Is something up? You asked when you saw Todoroki look at Deku and say, You're eight o'clock. Deku quickly looked at you and smiled. Oh, n no, nothing, Yin. Please don't worry. You were suspicious. What you didn't know was that Deku had met with Todoroki about what had happened with Multi, and they had discussed ways on trying to catch the villain. Todoroki had a feeling that he might try and infiltrate tonight's gala, and so the two heroes were keeping an eye on anyone who looked suspicious. Suddenly, a well-dressed female assistant approached you and tapped you lightly on the shoulder. Excuse me, uh, Miss Lin, she said, looking down at her clipboard. We need you backstage, as you'll be accompanying Deku on stage for the final award for the night, she said with a smile. The makeup artist wants to make sure you're presentable for camera. You gave her a confused look. Uh, okay. I'll go too, Deku said, making as if to stand up. Oh, not necessary, Sir Deku. You are fine. Miss Lin will meet you as you walk on stage, she said with a polite smile. Todoroki coughed and Deku stiffened. He looked at you and nodded. You go, Yin. I'll see you soon. Something felt off, but you trusted Deku and stood up to leave. Wait, Deku said, grabbing your hand. He pulled you down so he could whisper something in your ear. Start counting to 30, slowly. When you get to 30, duck, he said lowly as he kissed you quickly and then let you go. You smiled and turned to follow the lady backstage. What the heck? You thought as you left Deku there. He watched as you walked away and then turned his attention to Todoroki. Are you sure? He asked the perceptive hero. Todoroki nodded solemnly. Miss Lin, the makeup artist wants you to see them in their set room, the assistant said over her shoulder as she walked ahead of you. Okay, he replied. Twelve, thirteen... 14. You may need to have an outfit change, but they will discuss that shortly, she added, still not looking back at you. Sure, you said quickly. 18, 19, 20. She led you around a corner and headed down an alley that was further away from all the noise of the gala. Something doesn't feel right, you thought. 26, 27, 28. You're not very bright, Yin, she said suddenly, her voice changing. You braced as she turned to face you. Twenty-nine? Thirty! You dropped down to the ground before her and she looked down at you confused. What the hell are you doing? Suddenly Deku appeared, jumping over you, quirk activated, and slamming into the assistant, knocking her flying. In an instant, he had her pinned face down, knee in her back. You thought we wouldn't know, he said sharply. The assistant sneered. You'll never catch me, she said, morphing into multi and then turning into slime. Suddenly a draft of ice shot from behind you and encased the slimy mess, barely missing Deku as he power rolled out of the way. Yin, are you hurt? Deku called urgently as he jumped up and ran back to you. Todoroki, can you deal with multi? He called to the dual-haired heartthrob who was helping capture the pesky villain. Todoroki nodded and looked around for something to put the frozen slime in. I'm so sorry, Yin. We had a hunch that this assistant was either Multi himself or his associate, and we needed to catch him, he said apologetically to you. You're our best chance at catching him, Deku said sadly. I'm so sorry we did that to you. No, please don't apologise. I'm glad he's caught, you replied as Deku helped you up and gave you a hug. The rest of the night went smoothly, and Deku did indeed win the final award for the night, the popularity poll. He overtook Todoroki Shoto by one point. Hey, hero! Kaminari called to Deku as the night came to a close. After party at the penthouse! Deku gave him a grimaced smile. Oh, uh, thank you, Kaminari, but I think I'll pass, he said with an embarrassed rub to the back of his head. 
Gonna have your own after party, are ya? The electric blonde replied mysteriously, giving Deku a suggestive eyebrow wiggle while glancing slyly at you. You and Deku both blushed furiously and your man tried desperately to refute Kaminari's claims, but the fir flirtatious blonde refused to believe that you guys weren't going to go home and do some uh, rearranging of the bedsheets. After saying goodbye to the other heroes, you and Deku left to get away from the crowds. You'd both had an eventful night and just wanted to be alone together. In the chauffeur car on the way back to the house, Deku and Todoroki talked on the phone about handling multi. Todoroki was happy to sort out things for the time being so Deku didn't have to head into work at that late hour, which you were most grateful for. Are you tired, Jin? Deku asked as he ended the conversation with Todoroki and hung up the phone. Uh, not really, he said with a smile as he took his hand in yours. Are you? No, not really either, he said with a smile. What did you want to do when we get back to your place? You asked innocently. His face flushed red and he looked away embarrassed. You giggled. Oh, gum now, are you thinking something you shouldn't be thinking? He teased. Deku stammered an inaudible reply as you leaned into him and cuddled him. Yuzuku, stop being so shy, it's fine, you giggled. He turned back to you and wrapped his arms around you, tucking your head under his chin so he could rest it on your head. Uh, well, did you want to watch a movie at home? Sounds perfect to me, you replied. We can have a pyjama party. Deku smiled. I'm looking forward to seeing you in... His voice trailed off before he said, My pants. And you laughed. Pajama party it is. You have popcorn, you squealed excitedly as you reached into Deku's cupboard and pulled out a packet. You were in your soft cotton Deku pants and a tank top, happily trotting around the kitchen finding snacks for the movie. Did you need a hand, Jin? Deku asked as he entered the kitchen in All Might boxes and a light green plus ultra shirt. I'm good. You said as he set the popcorn packet up in the microwave. Do you like butter on your popcorn? Yes, definitely, he replied as he turned to the fridge and opened the door, bending down slightly to pull the butter out. The way the boxes pulled tightly against his well-toned tush made you bite your bottom lip and look away to compose yourself. Why does he have to make it so difficult for me, you wailed internally. I'll get the bowls, he said as he strode up behind you, reaching over the top of you into the cupboard above and caging you against the bench with his body. You squealed as his front pushed up against your backside and he jumped back, almost dropping the bowls on your head. I'm so sorry I didn't mean to squish you, he yelped, putting the bowl and butter down beside you before pulling you in for a hug. Are you okay? I'm fine, I just haven't felt you push into me like that before, he said bashfully. It kind of got me a bit excited, you whispered while avoiding eye contact. Deku blushed as he stared down at you. She liked it? I I like being close to you and feeling your body on mine, he said softly again, feeling a little more confident to let your feelings be known. Like this, he mumbled, pulling you against himself and holding you there. Both your hearts were beating wildly as you rested your ear up against his built chest. Yeah, like that, he replied, stepping into him more and pulling your hips into his. You vaguely felt something push against your pelvis before Deku cleared his throat and pulled back. Uh, I, I don't know if I can control myself when we're that close, he mumbled, tugging on his curly fringe to cover the bright red flush across his face. You don't have to control yourself, you whispered, placing a hand on his cheek to pull his face towards you. You reached up and kissed his lips, which he returned, as his hand rested on your neck and then slowly travelled down to your shoulders and then onto your sides. You took your hand from his cheeks and placed it on top of the hand that he had on your side and then pushed it down, guiding it to your backside. You felt his breathing rate increase as his hand finally came in contact with your back and you smirked as you kissed him. It's okay, I want your hand there, you giggled with your lips still up against his. Uh, 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 are you sure? He stuttered back against your lips. You hummed a mm in reply and moved your hands off his to wrap them around his neck. Put your other hand to it's lonely, he said cheekily, pulling back from the kiss slightly, and he obeyed, hesitantly, but still managing to be the obedient boyfriend that he was. You pulled your hips into his and he gasped slightly. This was the first time that he had had his hands on your backside and your full front up against his. Y yin uh, uh, whoa, he panted slightly, 
his face bright red as his mind registered all the new sensations he was feeling. It's okay, he said with a smile. Or would you prefer me to move away? You asked, slowly releasing your arms around his neck and pretending like you were going to step away to see what his reaction would be. He tightened his hold on your ass and stepped a little bit towards you, scared that you were actually going to break contact. No, 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 he protested emphatically. P please don't go, I... You smirked. Oh, you like being this close? He nodded shyly and bent his head down into the crook of your neck, hiding his face from your curious eyes, one of his hands sliding up from your ass and travelling up underneath your tank top. You felt the temperature of his breathing heat up as his hand glided over your soft skin, and it's almost as if you felt his excitement when he realised that you didn't have a bra on. His fingers paused over where the bra line should be. It was then that you felt something firm press against your leg and your attention was drawn there. Is that... Oh my goodness, I can feel against my... You froze, not knowing what to do, but your body responded physically without your mental consent and you could feel the heat gathering between your thighs. Deku kissed your neck softly, his hot breath shooting across your collarbone as his grip on you tightened. He walked you backwards slowly until you were up against the bench, his head still tucked into your neck, unable to show you his face. Because you had your back to the bench and his body was in front of you, you could arch into him and push your pelvis up against... Mm. Your arms slipped from his neck, dragging down his back and rested on his ass. Oh, I just want to grab an actual handful of this ripe peach. But you refrained. You pushed into him again and you felt his fingers dig into your soft flesh. He was shaking slightly and you couldn't tell if it was from nerves or excitement or both. Are you okay? You whispered as you turned your head slightly and kissed the tip of his ear softly. He was frozen in place and you thought this might be all a little bit too much for your precious broccoli boy. Izuku, Izuku, it's okay, breathe, you coaxed as you moved your hands back to his muscular back and patted him gently your right hand running up to his curly locks as you stroked the back of his head to calm him down. Slowly he relaxed his grip on you and his breathing normalised. Finally he pulled his face out from your neck and looked at you. Yin, he breathed as he gazed into your eyes, holding you gently. Whoa, what happened there? Her scent was intoxicating. My body just wanted to do things the way she... Is there? You asked again. It looked like he'd been spacing out there for a bit. S Sorry, he stuttered. What did you say? I said, did you want to go and watch that movie? He repeated. Oh, sure, he replied, still staring deeply into your eyes. He tried to move, but he hadn't let you go yet. Ah, uh, is he? You laughed. You're going to have to let me go. Suddenly his lips were on yours. They moved with purpose, his tongue brushing against your bottom lip as you opened your mouth slightly to connect with him. Your tongues danced together as his hands wanted your body gently and respectfully. He tucked an arm under your backside and lifted you up, not interrupting the kiss for one second as he turned and walked out of the kitchen and headed for the bedroom. He turned to walk in, fumbling with the light switch with one hand as he held your body against his with the other, small huffs escaping the two of you as you continued to make out heavily. Finally he turned the lights on and opened his eyes to locate the bed. An angry Pomeranian was lying in the middle of it, head raised, beady eyes glaring at him. He broke away from the kiss and stared at his fluff ball. Not now, Cat, he panted. Please, I need you to leave the room. Cat growled. No, please, he begged. Cat got up and narrowed his eyes as he hopped off the bed and then stormed out of the room. Deku didn't wait any longer and carried you to the bed and then placed you down gently on it with his body hovering over yours. He was still breathing erratically and as he unwrapped your arms from around his neck and ran them around the front of him and down his front over the top of his shirt, you could feel him heating up. It was obvious that his body wanted you, and you were feeling the same way too, your chest rising and falling softly as your own breathing rate stayed elevated. There was a long pause as you stared into each other's eyes, panting, a light blush dusting both your cheeks. Yin, I... I really like you. A lot, Deku said softly as he lifted one arm off the bed and caressed your cheek. I really want to... His voice trailed off. You nodded. I really really like you a lot too Izu he said with a smile but we don't need to rush things through take your time Deku nodded and pushed back off the bed turning back to walk to the light switch and turning it off that night was spent in darkness as you two touched each other everywhere Deku needed some permission and courage to touch certain areas at first 
but his hands were gentle and every time his fingers touched somewhere new, your whole body would shudder with delight and a breathy moan would escape your lips. Later, you both fell asleep that night content that you'd made huge steps forward in your physical relationship. You snuggled into Deku's side, inhaling his alluring masculine scent as he wrapped an arm around you and kissed the top of your head before drifting off to sleep. The next few weeks were fairly uneventful work-wise. Deku completed the paperwork for putting Malti away for good and continued with his usual interviews and hero work with you by his side. You were getting better and better at being his PA and a lot of the time you had done things for him before he even asked or finished his sentences before he could which you both thought was pretty cool and funny. As far as your physical relationship was concerned there hadn't really been any more progress than just heavy petting which you both enjoyed immensely but it had now been a few months into dating and you felt like you were ready to take it further. It's just Deku had never indicated that he wanted more so you waited. Oh Yin, Deku called out one afternoon as you walked past his office door heading for your own office. Yes, Izu, you replied politely, stepping back and leaning your head back through the door of his office. He smiled when he saw your beautiful face. Did you get a confirmation on the interview with Pro Hero? You asked, cutting his question short. Yes, they're booked in Thursday 11am, he said with a smile. Such a good PA, he gushed. You blushed. Oh, thank you, he said with a giggle. It helps when you have a cute boss, he said shyly, with a smirk before winking and walking to your office. Deku blushed and his heart skipped a beat at your words. No matter what you said or did, it always sent him into a bit of a spin. He tried to go back to concentrating on his work, but your last cheeky line to him and that cute little look on your face kept replaying in his mind and he just had to see you again. Getting up from his seat, he walked out of his office and looked up the hall to check the coast was clear before knocking quickly on your door and letting himself in. Seeing you again so soon, you cooed. Guess it's my lucky day. He smiled, but it was more of a smile with mischief behind it. Izu? You asked as he walked purposefully towards you, wrapping his arms around you and engaging in a heated kiss. You were used to his cheeky office kisses and the occasional heavy petting session that never progressed too far for fear of being caught in the middle of something inappropriate. He lifted you up with one arm as he wrapped it around your back and used the other arm to push some things aside on your desk so he could sit you down. Your hands wandered his body as his hands cupped your face and traced along your facial features and then down your neck and around the back of your head to support you while he kissed you deeply, his tongue exploring your mouth eagerly. There was some, something different about his movements this time and one of his hands slid down your front to the bottom of your skirt, hitching it up slightly as his hand traced your soft skin from knee up the inside of your thigh. You opened your legs to allow him better access, expecting him to pull away and apologise, but he didn't pull back. Sliding his fingers delicately across the front of your underwear, he cupped you and massaged between your legs as you opened them wider and wider, surprised and elated at his boldness. You gasped as he touched you and broke away from his kiss, tilting your head back and letting your eyes flutter shut. Deku moved his hand to behind your head more so that he could support you as he exposed your neck to his butter soft kisses. You moaned lightly as he continued to stroke you. His eyes watching your face with such an intense interest it almost seemed as if he was studying your reaction to his touch. He varied the pressure as he worked, light feather strokes to firm thumb pulses as your breathing became more and more erratic. Izu, you breathed erotically as his lips met your collarbone. He had been adding in sporadic kisses here and there as he continued to play with you and you couldn't believe he hadn't stopped yet. Were you ready for more? Your body certainly wanted more, that's for sure. He hesitantly toyed with the side of your underwear, tracing the rim with his fingers and wondering if he should be so bold as to move it aside. Suddenly he realised just how far he was taking things and he stopped abruptly. Izu? You quizzed as he removed his hand from between your legs and pulled you in for a hug, his head tucked into your neck, something that he did when he was always embarrassed. Izu, there's no need to be shy, I was really, really enjoying that. He almost groaned, slightly frustrated that he had left you like that. I, I didn't realise how far I was taking it. I'm sorry, he mumbled into your neck. I told you I was enjoying it, like seriously enjoying it, you pouted. Izu, you owe me when we get home, okay? You said as you pulled his head back so that you could look him in the eye. You're not allowed to stop yourself anymore. I won't allow it, okay? You said sternly yet playfully as you tapped him on the nose. He smiled shyly at you. Okay, I promise, he said. You two shared a kiss to seal the deal and he left 
promising that things would continue the minute you two got home that afternoon. Just a friendly note before we start the chapter, this one in the original book has a scene, an adult scene, so I have cut that out and I have faded my voice out as it starts and faded back in to continue on the chapter after it's finished. And then we continue on with the rest of the chapter, keeping it very PG and happy for everybody. The slowest damn day in the history of days. That's how the rest of the day went for you. Every time you saw Deku, you had to look away. The heat was gathering between your legs and it was going to bring you undone if you weren't careful. Ready to go, Yin? His bright, freckled face asked as he popped his head through the door of your office at closing time. Am I ready to go? I have been ready to go since this morning. Yes, I'm ready to go, you replied cheerfully, grabbing your bag and walking over to him. He took your hand and smiled at you as he squeezed it slightly. Let's head home. Home to the bedroom, you thought. Your mind was already going there. There was light chit-chat as the two of you walked home together, hand in hand, talking about random things, but there was definitely some underlying tension between you two. Deku reached for the door as you both approached the house and he unlocked it before stepping aside to let you in. You had every intention of heading to your room first to get changed before anything heated up between you and Deku, but it seemed like he had different ideas. As you passed him, he reached out a hand and grabbed yours while closing the front door. Yin, he said softly, in a tone that you'd never heard him use before. You turned your head to look at him. He had his head lowered and his breathing was already becoming a little heavy. I've been keeping myself together. All day. Barely, he said again in a lowered tone. You smirked. Well, hello there, cinnamon roll. You're finally coming out of your shell. You decided not to say anything to see what he would do. So you waited, eyes watching him as he remained with his head down. Slowly he raised it to look at you, and your mouth ran dry as your heart skipped a beat as his hungry green eyes met yours. That beautiful, soft, innocent look in his brilliant emerald eyes was replaced with raw lust. He was letting his guard down massively this time, and you couldn't help but feel that for a second there, he had the power to dominate you. Your soft boyfriend was finding his feet, and he had snagged a one-way ticket to a destination both of you wanted. Finally finding your voice, you tried to play it sexy, but your tone came out more vulnerable than anything else. So what did you have in mind? You asked, your eyes shining with need. Had you been inside Deku's body, you would have felt his... Yin, Deku panted, pulling back to look at you. That was amazing, you giggled. It was. Thank you for being my first, Izu, he said, wrapping your arms around his sweaty torso and hugging him. After cleaning up, you both cuddled back in bed for a bit of sleep, completely worn out. As you were drifting off, you heard a noise at the end of the bed. A very traumatised cat slunk out from under the bed and took off out the bedroom door before you or Deku could say anything. Deku looked at you, and you looked at him as you propped yourself up slightly. I, I didn't even know he was there, Deku wailed. You laughed sympathetically for what Cat had just endured. Serves him right, the perv, you said with a chuckle, kissing Deku, before settling back down again next to him. The next day, Deku bounded into your office. Yin, would you like to come to my mum's house for dinner tonight? She's just invited us. Oh, I'd love to, you squealed. You both had been planning to go to her place for dinner one night, but with all the issues with Malty and busy work life, it just hadn't happened yet. It's settled then, Deku said with a bright smile. I'll tell her we're coming over after work. Sounds good, Izzy, you replied, and he nodded as he left. You were looking forward to meeting his mum. She sounded like a real sweetheart. After work, you both headed to her place, with Deku telling you all the things she used to do for him when he was growing up. You couldn't wait to meet her. Mum, I'm home, Deku called out as you both entered the house. Izu, you heard her call out as she came running from the kitchen. She came around the corner and you couldn't help but smile. She was a chubby lady with the kindest, most beautiful face you'd ever seen and immediately knew where Deku had gotten his infectious smile and innocent demeanour from. Oh, hello, I'm Inko Midoriya, the lady said to you as she approached you both. Deku let go of your hand and wrapped his mum in a big hug, lifting her off her feet. She laughed happily and hugged him back. I'm so happy to see you again. He placed her down gently and turned to you to make introductions. Mum, this is my girlfriend, Yin Lin. I love her so much, he said with an adoring smile at you as he reached for your hand to squeeze it. And Yin, this is my beautiful mum. I owe everything to her. 
he said, smiling respectfully at his mum. You melted at his words and Mrs Midoriya teared up. She hugged him again, trying not to cry. Izuku, my baby, you're so sweet. She then turned to you with a smile. How did you and Izuku meet? She asked, wiping a tear from her eye. Well, you said with a chuckle, it was quite serendipitous, actually. In this section of the story, I've done a five-year time skip, so it's jumped five years to where Deku is hopefully going to propose to you. You woke drowsily and blinked a few times trying to remember where you were. I can feel warmth, you thought. You rolled over and came face to face with Deku's bare muscular chest. Lazily craning your neck forward, you kissed him between his pectoral muscles, feeling him start slightly beneath your lips. You gently raised a hand to his chest and traced along some of his scars, feeling the difference in texture from his soft supple skin to the more torn fibres of the scar tissue. You were so deep in thought that you forgot that how much time you had spent filling up your boyfriend's chest, and you quickly looked up and saw that he was awake. Whoops, you thought. His curious emerald eyes gazed down at you as he held you in his warm embrace. Morning, Izu, you croaked with a lopsided smile. Good, good morning, Yin, he said softly in return as he pulled you closer. You snuggled into him and sighed happily. Deku had been awake for a while now, just watching you sleep peacefully beside him. It was coming up to five years of dating for you two, and he wanted to make sure your fifth dating anniversary was special, but just didn't know quite what to do to make it perfect for such a momentous occasion. As he thought back over the last five years, he realised just how much he loved you and wanted to be with you forever. I... I want to marry Yin. Does she feel the same way? Would she want to be with me forever? He thought. Doubt started to creep into his mind. It was at that point that you'd rolled over and kissed his chest, gently running your fingers across his scars. Your touch, even after five years, still ignited him from the inside out and he had to refrain from initiating an encore from the night before. When you looked up into his eyes, his heart had skipped a beat. You were gorgeous. Perfect. He didn't want anybody else but you. Should I get breakfast ready? Deku asked softly. We should get ready for work soon, he added with a smile. Oh, no, it's okay. I'll get breakfast. You have a shower first, you replied, sitting up and pushing him so that he was lying back on his back as you crawled over him and straddled his hips. His muscular hands found your waist and he caressed you gently, a soft blush forming across his cheeks as he took in the sight before him. Your hair was all messy from sleep, and to him that was sexy as hell and the strap from your sleeping top had slipped off one shoulder, enticing him to place some gentle kisses across your bare skin, so he did a slow, controlled sit-up so he could kiss your soft, smooth skin. Your hands on his abs felt the muscles below contract as his body sat up and connected with yours, his hands sliding from your sides up your back and gently caressing the top of your back and neck as he bent your neck to the side to kiss you. You giggled and sighed as his gentle yet strong arms held you against him, your head, head tilting back to give him more access. Easy, Izu, you breathe. You're just so beautiful, Yin. I, I love you. Izu, it's been almost five years and you're still shy to say I love you, you giggled. You're too cute, you know that? He nuzzled into your neck shyly and just squeezed you. Come on, time to get ready, you said, as you kissed the side of his curly green hair and patted his head. He nodded and pulled back to smile at you, before hoisting you up against his chest and throwing the covers back off the bed to get up. He gave you one last quick kiss as he slid you down to the floor and you parted ways, your eyes lingering on his naked top half, watching his ample muscles ripple as he walked to the bathroom. You sighed blissfully as you made your way to the kitchen, getting coffee and toast ready for the two of you. While you were there, you thought Deku was acting a little quieter than usual and you gave him a big smile when he entered the kitchen in his work gear. You okay today? You asked him. Me? He asked, confused. Y yeah, I'm fine. I just, I'm just thinking. About what? You questioned him. Uh, he blushed. Oh, nothing much. You got the feeling he didn't want to discuss whatever it was, so you didn't press him further. You just smiled and handed him his coffee, which was a hot chocolate with a very small amount of instant decaf in it. This will help with the thinking process, you said with a smile as you leaned up and kissed him on the cheek. He returned your smile and leaned back down, chasing you your lips to give you a kiss. I love you, Yin, he said as he pecked you on the lips. You gave him your biggest, brightest smile and stepped back to walk around him to go and get ready for the day, giving that fine ass a slap as you walked past. 
Yin, he stammered with embarrassment, and you giggled as he headed off down the hall. Good morning, you two lovebirds, the receptionist greeted you both as you entered side by side. Good morning, B. you greeted her fondly. You'd become quite close with the friendly receptionist over the past five years and were now at nickname stage. Oh, Yin, while I've got you, she said, flagging you down a bit. I just want to confirm some appointments with you. You turned and quickly said, see you soon, to Deku, then headed over to her. His loving gaze watched you as you walked away before he headed off to his office. The receptionist confirmed a few appointments, then she leaned in close and lowered her voice. Hey, so five years dating anniversary is coming up, she said with an excited low voice. Deku got plans? I have no idea, you replied in a whisper. He's been a bit quiet this morning. Maybe that's been on his mind? Probably, she replied enthusiastically. Hey, do you think he'll propose? <gasps> propose? You hissed in shock as you covered your mouth to hold a squeal in a squeal of delight. God, I would love that. But would he be thinking of proposing? Do you think he's ready for marriage? You whispered excitedly back to the receptionist. Well, he's 27 now, so he should be thinking about settling down, the receptionist said confidently. You two have been together for five years already, and he still looks at you the same way he did when he first fell for you. You didn't want to get your hopes up, but at the same time, you would have loved to be Miss, Mrs. Midoriya. Well, if he proposes, I won't be saying no, that's for sure, you whispered happily, pushing off the front desk and giving the receptionist a wave before walking towards your office. Yin, Deku called from his office when he saw you walk past. Do you want to go out for lunch today? He asked hopefully, hopping up and walking around his desk towards you. Sounds good to me, Izu, you replied happily, walking over to give him a hug. You're such a wonderful boyfriend, you said happily as you kissed him quickly. His face fell slightly and it confused you a bit. Izu? you asked with concern. You okay? Oh, sorry. Yes, my apologies, Yin. I can't wait for lunch, he said with a wide smile. You relaxed a little and stepped back from his embrace, holding onto one of his hands as you walked back a bit, your arms being pulled slightly as you increased the gap between you. We have our couple interview today too, you reminded him. 3pm with Hey Hero magazine. Yes, I remember, he said happily. I always love doing couple interviews with you. Same, Izu, you replied with a smile. Okay, I'd better get to work, he said with a chuckle, letting his hand go as he turned to leave. Boyfriend, he thought as he watched you walk away. What if it were husband? He blushed at the thought and turned back to his office to get back to work. Your lunch date went well and he seemed to be in a more normal state. Conversation was flowing nicely and you were feeling more relaxed again. Maybe he is just thinking about the anniversary date, you thought, trying to dismiss his slightly more quiet behaviour and random expressions. Soon enough, 3pm rolled around and the interview was underway. You and Deku sat side by side on the set lounge while the interviewer asked questions and the camera crew filmed the whole thing with another journalist snapping pictures of the two of you as the interview progressed. So, Deku, what made you ask Miss Lin to be your girlfriend? The interviewer asked. Oh, well, Deku replied with a blush. We just got along really well and she's really pretty, he said as he ducked his head shyly and glanced across at you as he put a hand on your knee. I thought she might not like me back, but I got lucky. Your heart was exploding. He was just too innocent and sweet. Can we expect wedding bells in the near future? The interviewer asked mischievously. Deku froze. Uh, um, sensing his discomfort at such a pointed question, you jumped in to save him. It's not something we've discussed yet, you replied with a smile. For now, we're just enjoying each other's company, he said with another grin, looking at Deku reassuringly. He smiled slightly and squeezed your knee, his gaze falling to his lap. Enjoying each other's company? Is she just happy to keep dating? She doesn't want more? He thought to himself, as you took over answering a few questions. Maybe she's not the type to want to get married, and if I ask, would she say no and break up with me? A sinking feeling weighed heavily on his heart. He didn't want things to end. He looked from his lap back to you, your beautiful side profile capturing his heart once again, and he just sat there admiring you, completely forgetting you two were in the middle of an interview. Hey, uh, Yin, Deku stuttered as you walked home after work that day hand in hand. The, uh, question ab about marriage? You stiffened slightly. Oh, crap, what do I say? 
Do I make it obvious? Do I play it cool? I don't want to rush him, but I'd get married tomorrow if he asked me. Okay, maybe not tomorrow. Maybe like right now? You paused, causing him to look at you and he saw a slightly panicked look on your face. Oh, p please don't feel pressured. F forget I said anything. He laughed sheepishly and rubbed the back of his neck. Phew, that was close. I almost scared her away, he thought. Oh, it's okay. I just think it was a bit rude of the interviewer to ask such a question. I mean, it's not nice to put people on the spot like that, you said, trying to give him some reassurance that he could take his time on this decision. Oh, she mustn't like the idea of marriage, he thought, judging by your negative reaction to the question being asked by the interviewer. That night he couldn't sleep and kept mulling over what to do. I'll ring Todoroki in the morning and ask his opinion. He has thousands of women falling at his feet every day. He'll know what to do. He smiled in the darkness, content with his plan, and cuddled you close to him. He didn't want to ever let you go. You meant too much to him. Um, h hello, Todoroki. It's Midoriya, Deku said when Todoroki answered his call the next morning. Midoriya, a pleasure to hear your voice. What can I do for you? Um, well, I need help. This isn't a business call. It's a personal call, he said looking up to make sure the office door was closed. Todoroki, I was wondering if you might be able to give me some advice, he asked quietly. Of course, Midoriya, what advice are you after? I'm thinking of maybe proposing to Yin. Do you think that's a good idea? The shy greenette asked with a blush dusting his cheeks. Congratulations on this decision, Midoriya. I support this next step, Todoroki replied in his usual stoic manner. So you think I should ask her if she would like to marry me? Deku confirmed. Of course, Midoriya. She will definitely say yes, Todoroki reassured him. Um, okay, but how do I propose? What's the best way to ask her? He asked as he fiddled with the pen on his desk. I would suggest doing something special, something you've never done before, Todoroki said in his velvety smooth voice. Hmm, Deku hummed. That doesn't narrow down my options much, he mused with a small chuckle. Would a nice dinner be appropriate? Certainly, Todoroki replied. I can recommend a perfect one by the waterfront. Our family chef owns it. As expected of the Todoroki household, Deku mused to himself. You tell me the date and time you have planned, and I'll personally call the chef and organise a specially catered night for just you and Miss Yin, Todoroki offered gallantly. Oh, Todoroki, that's very kind of you. I don't want to be a burden, Deku said quickly. I insist, Midoriya. It's the least I can do, the handsome, jewel-haired hero replied. Contact me when you have a date and I'll do the rest. Thank you so much, Midoriya said excitedly, standing up from his desk and bowing with the phone in hand. I'll call you as soon as I've confirmed a time with Yin. It's my pleasure, Midoriya, Todoroki replied. The greenette continued to bow incessantly as he thanked Todoroki over and over, eventually ending the call and quickly making his way to your office. Uh, Yin, he asked with a polite knock on your office door. Can I see you a moment? Anything for my izu, you replied happily, putting your work down. What's up? Oh, um, I wanted to do something special for our anniversary, Midori replied with a happy smile. And I just spoke with Todoroki. What night would be best for us to go out? Whenever, you replied emphatically. You pick the day and time. Oh, okay, he replied excitedly, his emerald eyes sparkling. I'll, I'll ring Todoroki back and organise everything with him then. Sounds good, he said with a giant grin. I'm looking forward to it. Me too, he replied, a slight nervousness in his voice. After Deku left your office to call Todoroki, you sat back down at the desk and went over some of the rest of the day's appointments. Hmm, there's a meeting at the city central fair, Izuku, at 4.30. I'm not particularly needed for it, but if I go with him, we could maybe do a little bit of shopping after his meeting, before we head home. That would be nice. You cleared the rest of your schedule from 4.30 onwards so that you could go with him, and rearranged plans for tomorrow to fit everything else in. All done? You asked Deku as he exited the building after his meeting. All done, he confirmed as he walked out. They're wanting to change the legislation for heroes again. Seriously? That's such a pain, he replied, the two of you chatting as you walked from the city central towards the large shopping centre nearby. Was there anything in particular you needed to get today? Deku asked as you both entered the large building. Hmm, 
Just some things for dinner, I guess. I haven't window shopped in ages. Thought that we could have a little look around. Well, I'm just happy to be with you, Deku replied softly as he took your hand in his. You grinned up at him. Same. You stopped by the grocery store and bought some things, letting the older lady at the checkout have a hug from Deku as she was a big fan. You loved how he always had time to stop and chat to kids and encourage them in their dreams of becoming a hero or give older ladies a hug, even helping to push trolleys or lift bags for people who were struggling. He was indeed a people's hero. You were walking hand in hand when you passed a jeweler's store and the beautiful rings in the glass display cabinet caught your eye. Your attention was drawn to the sparkling diamonds and Deku felt you pause slightly. W would you like to uh, have a look inside, Ian? He asked bashfully. Oh, you replied, slightly embarrassed that you'd been caught eyeing the diamonds and gems. Um, no, no, I'm okay, you mumbled, looking down at the ground. We could have a little look if you like, he prompted. Um, I, I, if it's okay, you asked shyly. They just look nice, that's all. You both kind of awkwardly entered, not really knowing what to do, and just stood at the entrance, looking like you were about to run at any minute. Can I help? Oh my god, Deku! It's Deku! The sales clerk screeched when she saw you and Deku in the doorway of her shop. Okay, breathe, it's okay. <laughs> Deku's in my shop, that's fine, nothing major! She monologued, breaking out into a hysterically nervous laugh at the end. Neither you nor Deku knew what to do, and he just kind of did this embarrassed smile at her. Uh huh, so what kind of what brings you to my shop? She asked, still slightly flustered at having the number one hero grace her store. Oh, he replied realizing he needed to have an answer we um he tugged on his curly fringe with his free hand trying to hide his embarrassment oh just wanted to see what you had you chimed in trying to sound casual you want to see the rings she asked with sparkling eyes you both blushed heavily uh um well i uh yeah. the two of you were both lost for words mumbling out random lines over the top of one another desperately looking in every direction except for where the sales assistant was she could feel the awkwardness and took charge ushering the two of you over to a cabinet that had some very beautiful rings in it opening the lid she pointed out a few and explained the quality and cut most of her excited chatter going over both your heads as you just stared at the exquisite pieces you became aware of just how sweaty Deku's hand was in yours, and you hesitated to look at his face. His expression was unlike one that you'd ever seen before, and you wished immediately that you could be inside his head right now. Deku was well and truly enraptured in the future, daydreaming about you wearing the ring that he bought for you, walking the aisle, making love on the honeymoon, you falling pregnant, children. He was equal parts excited and scared out of his mind. Izu? You asked gently, trying to bring him back to the present. Oh, yes, Yin? He asked quickly, snapping out of his little daydream. Are you okay? Uh, yeah, he replied sheepishly, rubbing the back of his neck, not really knowing what to say at that point. You felt like you had maybe seen enough, or maybe it was just how flustered Deku looked, but either way, you just needed to get out of there. Thank you so much for your time, he said politely to the clerk, who was still desperately trying to hold her fangirling in, her eyes glued to Deku. Oh, my pleasure, she replied happily, closing the cabinet as you turned Deku away and guided him out of the shop. He just allowed you to lead him, as he was still coming back around from his little fantasy. Phew, that was intense, you said with a little embarrassed laugh, trying to make light of the awkward situation that had just happened. I'm sorry, Yin, Deku mumbled slightly sadly. He had wanted to make it a really exciting moment for you, but his nerves got the better of him. It's okay, you reassured him. It's a big step looking at rings. Maybe we're just not ready? Deku felt sad after hearing you say that. Had he failed you? He felt like he had let you down in some way, and it was then that he resolved to make the anniversary dinner the best it could ever be, including the proposal. I need to show her the man I've become because of her. I need to prove that I'm worthy of being her husband, he thought. The poor love-stricken ring shop clerk stumbled out the back of the supply to the supply cl closet, clutching her chest as she wheezed out her co-worker's name. Has he gone yet? A timid voice replied the wheezing clerk. Yes, I'm sad, but relieved, because if he stayed any longer, I would have proposed to him myself, the clerk said as she threw her back against the wall and slumped to the floor. Why does he have to be so freaking adorable? Well, why do you think I hid in here? The timid co-worker replied, 
emerging from behind some boxes. The minute I heard you yell, oh my god, it's Deku, I panicked and hid. You should have seen him. The clerk sighed happily, a faraway look in her eye. He just stood there, looking like an amazing ethereal being. I don't doubt it for a second. Even the air he breathes out is more pure than the air he breathed in, the timid co-worker replied emphatically. He smiled at me, the clerk said in the most dead serious voice ever. Oh my god, and you are able to still stand? The timid co-worker asked with wide eyes. Yes, came the reply, coupled with a dead straight face. You're basically invincible now. I know. You're amazing. It's the power of Deku. He's basically a god, so I believe it. And the conversation continued for the next 20 minutes while the two Deku fans talked about their favourite number one hero. Hey, Yin, I need to run a quick errand for my mum, Deku said to you a few days later as the working day was coming to a close. Oh, give me a second and I'll finish up here and come with you, you replied happily, quickly filing some papers. Oh, no, 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 I, uh, I need to do this one alone and I'll be back home as soon as possible, he replied, fiddling with the doorknob nervously, his gaze falling to the floor. Oh, you said suspiciously, stopping what you were doing so you could watch him. Are you sure I can't come? Please, Yin, I'll be home as quickly as I can, he replied, his eyes still glued to the floor. Suspicious, you thought. Hmm, okay, I'll see you at home then, you said, still watching him. Thank you, Yin. I'll be going now. Bye, he mumbled quickly before closing the door swiftly and running down the hall. You giggled a little with confusion. What the heck is going on? Ah, oh, well, I'll let it slide, you thought before turning back to your work. He'll probably beat me home anyway. There's so much left to do. Deku quickly slipped his hoodie on as he left the building and hopped on the first bus he came across, making his way down to the ring shop that you and he had visited a few days earlier. I don't know what ring she likes, but maybe the clerk there could help me? Twenty minutes later, he arrived at the shop front and opened the door with his head lowered so no one could see his face. The timid co-worker happened to be on the desk that day and looked up to see a very large hooded figure enter her shop. She froze. Oh no, robber! She panicked internally, her fingers sliding along the underside of the desk, frantically trying to locate the emergency button that was hidden there. Deku looked up slowly and pushed the hoodie back off his head to reveal himself, and that's when all hell broke loose. The timid co-worker screamed, hit the emergency button, and then promptly passed out, while the sirens flashed and wailed from the ceiling. Are you okay? Deku called as she fell unconscious behind the desk. He raced around the counter and rolled her into the recovery position, looking around to place something soft under her head but failing to find such an item, so he took off his hoodie and folded it, sliding it gently under her head instead. Freeze! The security officer yelled as he entered the ring shop. He had been alerted immediately by the emergency button and had arrived on scene almost instantly. Deku stood up and placed his hands up in surrender. Sir, I, I apologise, he stammered. I don't know what happened. Deku? The officer replied in shock. What happened? Sir, like I said, I don't know. I walked in and she screamed and then passed out. The officer put his gun down and Deku lowered his hands stepping back as the officer made his way around the desk and shut the emergency sirens off. What brings you to a jewellery shop, Deku? The officer asked curiously as he checked the young girl over. I, um, well... The officer looked up with a wink and just nodded. Say no more, your secret's safe with me. Thank you, sir, Deku replied with relief. You arrived home and called out to Cat to let the small angry dog know that you were home. Putting your bag down, you grabbed a drink before sculling it down and putting the empty cup down on the sink. How's your day been, catty pup? You asked the irate fluffball that was lying on Deku's bed as he walked into the room. He lazily lifted his head and just looked at you before letting it flop back down again. You jumped up onto the bed and flopped down beside him. Hey, you know, you've never given me even a little bit of affection back. It's been five years, pup, you said to the dog. Cat turned his head slightly and narrowed his eyes at you, his red orbs glinting. You both looked at each other for the longest time, then the small dog let out a huff and very slowly inched towards you on his tummy, his little wet nose coming within millimetres of your own nose. You lay still, waiting. He got close enough for your noses to touch, and then he turned his head away, before looking back towards you and giving you the politest little nose boop that you'd ever received. 
He then turned his head away, almost looking embarrassed. You smiled and touched his little paw with your finger, and he looked back at you, startled, like you defended his whole ancestry by daring to touch his paw. He pulled it away with indignation. You giggled and sighed. Thank you for the little nose, kissy cat, you said cheekily. The small pup growled before moving away and flopping down again. You chuckled and hopped up to get changed and chill out in the lounge. After plopping down on the couch, you flicked the TV on. You were about to change channels, but the news was on and the current story caught your attention. The story was halfway through, but you recognised the shop as the jewellery store that you and Deku had visited a few days ago. The reporter continued her lines. Thankfully for her, it was just the hero Deku. Japan's favourite hero declined to make comment on the situation, but we're assured that it was all a misunderstanding. Back to you at the station, she said, smiling brightly as she signed off, and the shot cut back to the set at the news station. Wait, what? What happened? Why was Deku at the jewellery store? Was he going into the store? Or did he just happen to pass by? You sat there in confusion for a bit, shaking your head before changing the channel. Why is he being so secretive lately? Yen, I'm home, Deku called out as he entered later. You had dozed off on the lounge and woke abruptly upon hearing his voice. Izu, you're back, you slurred out as you drowsily tried to hop off the lounge. Deku walked in and caught you right before you fell, lifting you up against his chiseled body. Did you have a little nap? He asked with a bright smile as he kissed your lips and put you back down. Mm-hmm, you hummed as you rubbed your eyes with the back of your hand. I'm glad. You worked hard today, he said as he turned to walk back into the kitchen with you following. I bought your favourite takeaway for dinner tonight. I hope that's okay, he said as he presented it to you. Oh, yummy, you gasped, perking up immediately upon seeing food. After getting plates and everything ready, you sat down at the table. Ah, uh, hey, so I saw the news today, you said as you swallowed your first, first mouthful of food. What happened at the jewellery store? Deku nearly choked on his mouthful. Oh, um, I just... He waved his hands erratically, a red blush creeping onto his cheeks. Were you passing by? You asked, giving him an out. Yes, and the shop assistant fell down, so I helped, he said, before shoving another mouthful of food into his mouth so that he couldn't answer any more questions. You bunched your brows together and hummed. Mm, okay, he replied, not exactly satisfied with his answer. If you say so. Oh, also, our anniversary dinner is all set for this weekend, Deku said brightly as he finished the next mouthful. Oh, awesome, you replied, your slight annoyance fading in your eyes as your eyes met before looking back down again. Hopefully once this dinner is done, he'll stop acting strange. I wonder what he has planned. He wouldn't be going to. You looked up at him from your food, eyes searching his face as he looked back at you curiously. Propose? Would he? What's wrong? Deku asked upon seeing the blush across your cheeks. Oh, nothing, you replied hurriedly, looking back down to your plate. I mean, it makes sense, right? He was at the ring shop. There's been a lot of talk about marriage from people's questions. Maybe he got the hint? You glanced back up at him. Well, I'm not complaining. I'm 300% ready to become Mrs. Midoriya. I mean, I don't want him to feel pressured, but I think it's about time. Deku watched your facial expressions change as you mulled over your thoughts. I wonder what she's thinking about, he thought curiously as he ate. Hello, Todoroki, Midoriya whispered into the office phone as he closed the door. How is everything going for the weekend? Fine, Midoriya. I have everything under control, Todoroki's velvety smooth voice replied him. Oh, okay. I just need to pick up a ring, Midoriya whispered harshly. I didn't get one when the incident happened at the jewellery store that day. If you would like, Midoriya, have a look online, and if you see one that you like, or that you think Miss Yin will like, I can send for it to be sent to the restaurant. Todoroki offered. Oh, that would be really wonderful, Todoroki, Midori replied, replied gratefully. I'll have a look now and let you know. After saying goodbye, Midori turned to the computer and typed in the jewellery store that he had visited twice now, looking through the myriad of rings. But which one would she like? He panicked internally, clutching his head fervently. To Midori, they all looked the same, and he wanted to give you something special. Oh, I wonder if they have gems, he thought as he clicked through the pages. What if I got a birthstone set in the proposal ring? He quickly opened a new tab and looked up your birth month and associated stone. Perfect, he thought with a smile.
Deku was so deep in thought, concentrating on the task at hand, that he didn't hear you open the door. Izu, can I just confirm this afternoon's up... Deku jumped, clicking furiously to close the tabs that were open on his computer, but in his panic, he accidentally clicked on one of the side ads. Are you looking for sexy singles in your area? The computer ad asked at an, an obnoxiously loud volume. Ah, uh, no! Deku yelled, fumbling with the mouse. Is he? Yin, it's not what it sounds like! He wailed frantically, finally getting the ad to close down. He then let out a despairing sigh and hung his head. You entered the office and closed the door behind you. Is he? Can we talk? You've been acting really strange lately, he said a little sadly. His eyes shot up and met yours. Yin, I'm so, so sorry, he said, making his way around the desk over to you and scooping you up in his arms. I just want to do something really special for our dinner and... I know, I know, Izu. It just... It feels weird that you're being super secretive about everything. But if it's just for our dinner, then I won't pry, he said, forcing a smile as you looked up at him. He gently brushed some of the stray strands of hair from your eyes and tenderly cupped your cheeks and chin in his hand, his emerald eyes sparkling as he leaned down and gave you the sweetest, most love-filled kiss you'd ever received. I love you, Yin, he whispered softly as he pulled away from the kiss, his loving gaze melting you from the inside out. I love you too, Izu, he replied, giving him a genuine smile. Over the next few days, Deku tried his best not to be too suspicious, although he was making phone calls to Todoroki constantly, and you'd guess by now that the suave, jewel-haired hero must be helping Deku with the dinner plans. You smiled as he answered yet another call from Todoroki and ran off into the bedroom so he could chat in private. This dinner is sure going to be amazing with Hiro Shoto helping Izu, you thought. The night of the anniversary dinner had finally arrived and you'd taken your outfit into the spare room to get ready so you could surprise Izu with it when you walked out. Deku was dressed and ready, waiting nervously in the lounge room for you to walk in. He was mentally going over everything that had been arranged for the night and was trying to put together a little speech for when he popped the question. Dear Yin, no, wait, that sounds too formal. My one and only, no. I love you. Oh, no, I can't shout, he thought. He was so deep in thought with his brows knitted together, standing there with chin in loosely curled fists that he didn't see you enter, so he had to clear your throat a few times to get his attention. His head suddenly snapped up when he finally did hear your voice and his jaw fell open. You smiled bashfully. How do I look? You asked, spinning for him to see all of you. You, you look amazing, Yin, he exclaimed in awe. I mean... You always look amazing, but that colour really suits you. You giggled. Thanks, Izu. I can't even begin to make comment on your outfit. It's just too... You paused. If I say I wanted to rip it off with my teeth and drag my tongue up and down your chest, would that be too forward? You thought, clearing your throat. Uh, you look too good to be true, that's what. You ended with, your compliment causing him to blush furiously. Oh, he chuckled. Thank you. Just then, the car that Todoroki had organised arrived out the front, and the two of you exited the house. The driver alighted and opened the back door for you, and helped you inside while Deku walked around and seated himself on the other side. So, do you know where we're going? You asked Deku once you were both buckled in. Or is this a surprise for you too? You laughed. Todoroki has it all under control, Deku replied with a chuckle. But I'd like to think I at least know what's going on. Before long, you both arrived at the flashy waterside restaurant and the driver opened the doors. You were greeted with red carpet and personal wait staff, which really blew your mind. The waiter and waitress led you and Deku up to an upstairs open-air dining section that was cordoned off just for the two of you, and there was a small band playing beautifully relaxing music for you both. Wow, you mused. Going all out? Deku smiled proudly. Everything for you, Yin. The night progressed and Deku seemed to be getting more and more nervous as time went by, spilling things and stumbling over his words. Would Sir like to see the special desserts menu? The waiter asked Deku with a bright smile. Deku started sweating bullets. It was getting closer to the time when he was about to ask a very important question. Oh, yes please, he replied with, in a nervous voice. The band started playing a song as the waiter walked away after being told yes for dessert and Deku asked if you wanted to dance. You said you weren't very good, but that you'd love to give it a try. Side note, if you're good at dancing, just pretend that you're me and you can't dance to save your life. 
Deku stood and walked over to you, offering you a hand. You took it and stood, following him closer to the band that was still playing. He smiled down at you, palms sweating and shaking. Izu, are you okay? Y y y yes, Yin, I I I'm fine, he replied in a shaky voice. You both started to move and you could hear him trying to control his breathing. Suddenly he stopped and looked around. Before you could ask what was wrong, he grabbed you close to him and dropped down, covering you with his arm. A rift of lava shot over you both and you gasped. Deku jumped up after the flow of lava had stopped and stood between you and the place from where it had come from. The band members screamed and scattered, running for cover, so it was just the two of you left on the roof. Deku! An enraged voice called from the other side of the building. You bastard! I'll make you pay! Suddenly a molten lava person slid up and over onto the top of the roof of the building, swaying and gliding as he came forward. You! Deku growled, activating his quirk as he stood ready to fight. I told you I'd be back! The lava villain jeered with a manic cackle. And this is the last time you'll be back, Molten Terror! Deku replied as he lowered his head slightly, emerald green eyes sparkling as he locked onto his target with the green lightning zapping across his broad shoulders. Molten Terror lobbed another torrent of lava towards Deku and yourself as he let out a roar of anger. Deku spun and scooped you up in his arms before launching himself off the side of the building, landing swiftly on the ground below before running a few more steps and stopping. Yin, I'm so sorry. I need to take this villain out. Stay here while... Is it go! It's fine. Go get him! You squealed, your fangirl side bubbling to the surface amid the initial fear. Sure, the villain terrified you, but Deku was just so cool, calm and collected with it when it came to fighting villains and you loved to see that confident, dominant personality come through. Your innocent man may be cautious in other areas of his life, but when it came to fighting crime, he was a different person. You kissed him quickly, the green lightning still discharging from his skin, and you felt a surge go through you in that split second that he kissed you, the light from his activated quirk dancing in his emerald eyes, shimmering with excitement. The way he looked at you took your breath away. Wait here, he said lowly. I'll be back for you. You just nodded, speechless. Dominant Izu was next level. He turned and took a running leap at the building wall, jumping his way back up, propelled by his quirk, before disappearing over the top of the building. He launched himself up over the edge, aiming his shoot-style kick towards the lava villain, who had been slightly shocked at seeing Deku launch off the side of the building earlier. But just before he hit the villain, Head on, he allowed his shoot style to detonate, spinning himself rapidly to cause a blast of air, and he pulled his limbs in to increase the force of the wind. Molten Terror raised a liquid lava arm to shield his eyes and roared again at the onslaught of air. Deku landed and glanced swiftly to his left. Good thing this is a waterfront restaurant. If I can just get Molten into the water, he thought. The villain was well aware that if he came in contact with the river, He'd be rendered useless, so naturally he was cautious about what Deku would try and do. He was determined to stay on the roof as much as possible, because as long as he was up there, he was away from the water, although Deku's air blast was a force to be reckoned with, as it was. The villain lobbed another wad of molten lava at Deku, missing him by a long shot, and Deku jumped swiftly over the lava spew and villain, and tried to shoot style whirlwind from the other side, trying to blow the villain off the roof towards the river. By now, Deku could hear sirens, and he was hoping it was back up on the way. The band members must have run from the roof and alerted the staff's management about the villain. He continued to dance with Molten, the lava villain missing Deku with all of his shots, but neither hero nor villain could budge the other. Suddenly, a torrent of water came cascading up over the side of the building, and Deku sprung out of the way just in time, but Molten was doused immediately. Just then, fireworks went off from nearby. Deku's face fell. Oh, those were supposed to go off after I proposed to Yin, he thought sadly. He ran to the edge of the building and sighed with relief when he saw you were still standing below. He waved to you and you waved back, smiling at your hero. The other pro hero that had bought his water quirk helped to detain the villain, Molten Terror, and Deku excused himself to go and see if you were alright. Did you get him? You said with an excited little bounce. Yes, uh, well, it was a joint effort with another hero, he replied sheepishly with a rub to the back of his neck as he chuckled shyly. You smiled. I'm just glad you're okay. But it ruined our dinner, Deku said sadly, his gaze dropping to the ground. No, it didn't. We'd already finished our dinner, so it just interrupted the end of our dinner. But that's okay. You caught the villain after all, so it was worth it, he replied, 
still hyped on Deku's dominant display. Deku gave you a weak smile. Yeah, but he interrupted the proposal and it just doesn't feel right to do it now, he thought. You smiled. Come on, let's finish up and then head home. Deku sighed and nodded, reaching for your hand before you both headed back inside the restaurant to finish off the night. Back home after dinner, you just couldn't shake that sexy image that you had in your mind about Deku kissing you with his quirk activated, that serious, strong, purposeful look in his eye. Hey, uh, is who? You asked shyly as you followed him into his room. Yes, Yin? He asked as he undid his jacket, suit and shirt and took it off to hang it up. Your eyes travelled his naked back as it, and then he turned to face you and you oogled his chiselled abs. Uh, could I ask for something? You mumbled as you looked bashfully down at your hands. Of course, Yin, he replied as he walked over to you. Could you kiss me with your quirk activated? You asked softly as he stood in front of you. With it activated? Deku asked with confusion. But why? Um, well, it was really sexy when you kissed me earlier tonight with it activated and just that look in your eye made me kind of go weak at the knees, he said honestly, still keeping your gaze averted. Deku blushed. Really? Uh, okay, I guess I can do it then, he said as he activated. From where you were looking down to the ground, you saw the flashes of green from your peripheries and looked up at him. He gave you an almost smirk. Like this, Yin? He asked slowly, with a mischievous glint flashing in his eyes. The sexual tension from your end was instant. Ah, uh, yeah, just like that, he said breathlessly as your breathing rate increased. Deku placed his hands on your waist and gently walked you up against the wall so that your back was against it. Placing his hands either side of your head, like you'd seen the boys do in the anime that you two had watched, he peered at you intently with his flashing emerald eyes. How would you like me to kiss you? He asked in a low, serious tone. Your heart fluttered at the dominant tone in his voice. Like you mean it? He replied in a seductive voice. Your head lowered as you looked up at him with needy eyes. In an instant, his lips were on yours, and your lips parted and tongues danced as he reached up and pulled his face closer, his body moving closer as well as he pushed into you. You could feel the energy from his quirk surging around you both, and it was an adrenaline rush like no other. I want you, Deku said breathlessly as he pulled away from the kiss, a carnal need pulling at his being. I want you to take me right now, he replied as he reached for his hips and pulled your hips into his. Do you like this, Yin? Is this what you wanted? He asked slowly as he lowered his head towards yours again, the green lightning jumping from his body to his lips as they met yours for the second time that night. Mm, he responded as you melted into the kiss, the fervency building by the second. Izu, it's okay, you laughed and panted. That was amazing, I loved it. And I've been on the pill for a while now, so it's all good, stop worrying. He relaxed at your reassurance and pulled out of you, turning you around to him and lifting you up in a sweaty, loving hug as he turned and walked to the bed, flopping down with you still in arms. You chatted for a little bit as you lay side by side, then both got up to clean up and get ready for bed. Poor Deku was well and truly worn out after having to remain activated for an extended amount of time, especially when being intimate. That was something you'd never done before. The next day at work, the two of you seemed happier. It's amazing what a little intimacy can do to ease the tension in a relationship. Wanna grab lunch today? You asked with a giant grin on your face as you poked your head into Deku's office. Of course, he replied enthusiastically. 12.30? Done, you replied, blowing him a kiss before heading into your office. He sighed happily, a dreamy grin spreading from freckled cheek to freckled cheek as he recalled last night's romp. The way that your back arched as you held on to him had him blushing at the thought and he quickly shook his head to try and collect his thoughts and drag them, kicking and screaming, out of the smut gutter that they'd fallen into. A soft knock at the door drew his attention and he looked up from where he'd been staring down at the paperwork before him. Todoroki, he said excitedly upon seeing the jewel-haired heartthrob standing in his doorway. Midoriya, may I have a moment of your time? Yes, yes, please come in, Deku replied, standing up and walking around his desk to shake his good friend's hand. I bought you an important item, Shoto said lowly as their hands met, his mismatched eyes trained gently on Deku. What would that be, Todoroki? Deku asked curiously. Shoto turned and shut the door behind him, letting go of Deku's hand and reaching into his pocket. 
He produced a navy blue fabric ring box with gold trimmings and placed it in Deku's hand. Oh, Deku replied, thank you. I hadn't had a chance to go back to the restaurant to get it. My apologies, the night didn't go as planned, Todoroki said softly. No, 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 it's not your fault, Todoroki, Deku replied in a panic, waving his hands frantically. It was the villain that interrupted. In any case, it's disappointing that you didn't get to ask Miss Yin to marry you, the heartthrob replied slightly sadly. It's not over yet, Deku said with determination. I'm going to try again, he added firmly. I wish you all the best, Todoroki said with a slight bow. For now, I must go. I am on an important case regarding a robbery of a jewellery store in the mountains. That's terrible. I hope you catch the people responsible, Deku said sympathetically. I definitely will. Like you, Midoriya, this isn't over yet. Deku smiled. You really are amazing, Todoroki. Good luck. The handsome hero nodded politely and left the office, closing the door behind him and leaving Deku to take a quick look at the ring. It shone as he opened the box. I hope she likes it, he thought. More importantly, I hope she says yes. Just then the office door opened and Deku jumped violently and looked up at the door, slamming his finger in the ring box slid as he shut it hurriedly and jammed it in his pocket. Hey bro, a friendly voice addressed him. He relaxed when he saw who it was. Kurishima, he exclaimed. Good to see you, he added as he pulled the ring box out of his pocket and opened it to get his finger out. Kurishima's eyes fell to the box and he gasped softly as he quickly shut the door behind him. Midoriya, that's so manly, he said in awe. Are you going to propose to Yin? Well, yes, I'm hoping to do it soon, as my first plan fell apart and I didn't get to ask her, Deku said sadly. That's not good, Kurishima replied emphatically. How are you going to propose this time around? Oh, I don't know, Deku replied truthfully. I've already tried at a beautiful restaurant, but we got interrupted by a villain. I don't know if I should do the same setting again. Maybe I should do something different. He placed the ring box back in his pocket gently and stared glumly at the floor. A super manly way would be to stay at home and cook her a home-cooked special dinner that holds all of your feelings and emotions, Karishma said enthusiastically, passionately balling his fist up and holding it up in front of his face while pulling a pained expression of heartfelt approval. Uh, I'm, I'm not a good cook, Deku said sheepishly, looking at Karishma. That's perfect then, bro. It'll prove how serious you are about her and that you're willing to step out of your comfort zone and cook with everything that you have. She'll be impressed with your manly display. You really think so? Deku asked sceptically. Definitely, Karishma replied confidently. Um, okay, I'll give it some thought, Deku replied, scrunching his brows in thought and resting his loosely balled fist on his mouth, supported at the elbow by the other hand, like he usually did when he was deep in thought about something. I actually came to talk to you about something else, but it can wait, Karishima said, seeing that Deku was now very preoccupied. Oh? Are you sure? Deku asked. Yes, I'm sure. Your love mission is more important, Kurishima said with a thumbs up and a big toothy smile. I'll come back another day. Ah, uh, okay, Deku said with a smile. Thank you for your advice, Kurishima. You're welcome, bro. Anytime, the bubbly spiky head replied. Let me know how you go, he added as he opened the office door to leave. Deku gave him a small wave before heading back to his desk to ponder the meal that he'd make for you. The next few days saw Deku looking up different recipes and putting together a menu. Once he had everything in place, he organised a dinner date for that weekend. I want to cook a really special meal for you, he said with an excited little bounce. Okay, he replied with a giggle. I'm always down for anything. Anything in particular that we're celebrating? You added quizzically. Uh, just how much I appreciate you and love you, he replied shyly, tugging his fringe to hide the blush. You're too cute, you know that? You replied as you reached up and wrapped your arms around his neck and kissed him on the cheek. Anything you make for me is going to be amazing, he added. He wrapped his arms around you and gave you a little squeeze of thanks. I just hope you like it, he said softly. The next morning you and Deku were at work early. There were a fair few meetings scheduled for the day and it was looking pretty hectic. Yin, can I have a moment with you? The receptionist asked as she knocked on your office door. Sure, B, come on in, he replied happily. She smiled and entered, closing the door swiftly behind her. Hey, so uh, I know a villain interrupted your anniversary dinner a few nights back, she said as she walked over to the lounge near the desk and sat down. Yeah, unfortunately, he sighed, printing a copy of a document with your quirk. But 
I mean, the night wasn't all bad, he said with a smirk. Okay, I'm not even going to ask because I know I can see it written on your face. I know what you're going to say and it's not PG rated, the receptionist said with a laugh. Mm-hmm, you replied, a cheeky hidden smile pulling at your lips as you focused on your work. So, I'm assuming he hasn't popped the question yet though? When's he going to ask you to marry him? She suddenly whined. I don't know, you shot back. Don't look at me. I'm just as in the dark as you are. I thought maybe he might, you know, pop the question on the anniversary night, but it never came. Like, he was at the jewellery store and he'd been acting so sus, so I seriously thought that maybe he might do it that night, but am I just getting my hopes up? You sighed. Sorry, don't mind me. No, I completely understand the frustration, she replied sympathetically. And I haven't seen any sign of a ring either, so I can't help you, unfortunately. Maybe he's just not ready yet, he said sadly. As if, she snorted. It's been five years. If he's not ready now, he'll never be. Has he got any other special dates lined up for you? She asked hopefully. Well, yeah, on the weekend. He wants to cook a special dinner at home for me, he replied. But it's low key. He wouldn't do it then, would he? He might, if he's trying to avoid villain attacks, the receptionist said with a laugh. Poor guy. All he probably wants to do is have a normal life, but no. Anyway, someone's always out there wanting to challenge him. You sighed. Yeah, well, that's life, isn't it? Yin, you go and relax in the lounge room, okay? Deku said excitedly as he put the This Chef is Plus Ultra apron on. It was yours, actually, but it looked so friggin' adorable on him, frills and all. You giggled. Sure, Izu, he replied as he kissed his cheek and skipped off to the lounge room to relax. He smiled as he watched you go, tying the apron around his waist. Oh, I'm so lucky, he thought. He then turned his attention to the task at hand, making the world's best dinner so that he could then propose after. First, he opened his camera roll on his phone and enlarged the screenshots that he'd taken of the recipes and cooking instructions, propping the phone up on the backboard of the kitchen bench. Okay. Collect ingredients, he thought. He busied himself, running back and forth from the phone to various points in the kitchen, getting everything together. Okay, it says, prepare the pan for frying. Heat, oil. He reached for the oil bottle and sloshed a generous amount of oil into the frying pan and placed it on the stovetop, switching the heating pad on high and stepping back with an approving nod. Yes, done. He dusted his hands happily against each other and then went back to his phone to see what to do next. Chop ingredients and prepare spices. One by one, he placed the vegetables on the chopping board and cut them up, his tongue poking out slightly to the side as he concentrated on the difficult job of avoiding chopping his fingers. These look great. So far, so good, he praised mentally. Then he checked the next step. Place meat in frying pan. He picked up the chopped meat and carried it to the waiting frying pan, dropping it in unceremoniously. The oil was well and truly heated by now, and the minute the meat hit the pan, it sizzled furiously and spat oil everywhere. Ah! Deku yelped, jumping back to avoid the hot spits of oil. His back hit the table and knocked a discarded glass of water over that spilled water all over the floor. He heard the noise and spun around just in time to see the glass roll off the table and smash on the floor. Oh no! He yelled. Izu? You called from the lounge room. Are you okay? You had heard the sizzle of the oil and him yell, then the crash of glass shattering, followed by another yell, and thought that you should call out and see if he needed some help. No, 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 I'm okay, he replied frantically as he tiptoed around the water and smashed glass to get a towel and dustpan and brush. He focused wholeheartedly on cleaning up the mess, so much so that he forgot all about the meat in the pan. As he stood up from his crouched position, he became keenly aware of the smoke that was filling the kitchen. The meat, he gasped running forward to yank the pan off the stovetop. The meat was black and charred, and his first thought was to cool it down by putting it in the sink and dousing it with water. He carried the smoking pan carefully and then dropped it into the sink, flicking the tap on. As the cool water hit the smoking oil and meat, it screamed and steamed everywhere, hot spits of oil flying from the pan and splattering over Deku. He screeched again, stumbling back as smoke and steam engulfed the room. Suddenly the smoke alarm came on and beeped loudly alerting the occupants to the possibility of a fire. Izu, what's happened? You cried as you came running into the kitchen. You stopped short and gasped, covering your gaping mouth with your hands. Yin, I'm so sorry, Deku stuttered apologetically. 
Just then, small fire sprinklers came on, spraying the two of you as you stood there in shock. We need to get out, you cried as you ran forward and grabbed his hand before pulling him out of the kitchen and into the hallway. Wait, you're in the tap! He raced back in and turned the kitchen tap off before racing back to you. When he looked up into your eyes, he found that there were tears in them. Yin, oh, I'm so sorry. F forgive me, he cried as he bowed low. You buried your face in your hands and sobbed. I'm sorry, Deckard. It's all a bit too much, you cried, trying desperately to wipe the torrents of tears that spilled down your cheeks. I, I know, Yin, he stammered, not knowing what to do. He stepped forward and engulfed you in a wet hug his flattened, curly green hair sweeping across your head as you stood there crying. He felt terrible. It would take a while to clean up the water in the kitchen, but at least it was only the pan that was burnt and not the whole kitchen or house. The fire alarm stopped beeping and the sprinklers shut off and you both walked back to the doorway to survey the damage. Oh, you said in a quivering voice, tears still running down your cheeks. I can't begin to apologise for this mess, he said sadly. You couldn't reply. What was there to say? Did you want to get changed and go out for a while? I can call some cleaners in to tidy up, he suggested as he gingerly took your hand. You nodded glumly. He took a step back and led you to the bedroom and encouraged you to take a warm shower and change while he rang for the cleaning services. You were wet, but not as soaked as him. A warm shower would be lovely, though. You grabbed some new dry clothes and headed out of the room into the bathroom. Poor Deku was heartbroken. He felt his pocket. The ring was still there. He sighed heavily as he walked back into the kitchen and picked up his water-splattered phone. Luckily, the case was waterproof, so no damage was done. And almost like a cruel joke, the screenshot that he was on were the finishing touches to what should have been the completion of a perfect meal. And enjoy were the final two words. He turned and sloshed out of the room, heading out the front door. Hello? This is Izuku Midoriya. I was wondering if I might be able to hire some cleaning services. It's an urgent matter, he said into the phone as the person on the other end picked up. M M M Midoriya? Deku? The hero Deku? The person on the other end of the phone squealed. Deku sighed. <sighs> yeah, unfortunately. Oh, oh, of course you can use our services, sir. It would be our pleasure, they replied enthusiastically. Please tell me your address and we'll send our best team out right away. Oh, thank you. I do appreciate it, Deku said in a flat tone. He gave the person the address details and a bit of what happened and then thanked them and hung up. And they promised that they would be there in 30 minutes. Deku sighed as he let the phone flop to his side. His gaze met the pavement as he stood out the front of his house, sopping wet, his hair flattened and shirt slightly see-through. I'm a failure. He thought as he stood there, tears welling up in his eyes. He raised an arm up and placed the crook of his arm against his eyes, trying to cover the fact that he was starting to cry. His lips quivered as he went over all the plans that he had been thwarted over the last two weeks. Why is nothing working? Why does everything keep going wrong? He thought. You'd gotten changed by now and had called out for Deku but there was no response. You entered the curtain at the front of the house and peeked out to see him standing there crying on the front pavement. You immediately felt sorry for him. He was feeling just as bad about this whole thing as you. Izu, he called softly in a gentle voice as you opened the door. Come inside, it's okay. Come and get warm and dry. He turned and sobbed his way back to you, sniffing and wiping his eyes. Oh, my baby, you cooed, wrapping him in a warm, gentle hug as he walked up the steps to you. Yin, you'll get wet again, he wailed. I don't care, you need a hug, he said confidently. He broke down in your arms again and you just held him for a bit as he got it all out of his system. Come and have a shower, my love, he said softly. It's okay, the cleaning services are coming, yeah? He nodded into your neck as he nuzzled deeper. Then don't worry, it will be cleaned up, he said encouragingly. Let's get you dried up and we'll go out for food. Deku sniffed and nodded again, pulling away from the hug and hiding his face slightly as he made to walk past you to the bedroom and then the shower. I love you, Izu, he said as he kissed his cheek. I love you too, Yin. I'm so sorry, he replied as he hid his, his tear-stained face with embarrassment. It's okay, it'll all be fixed up soon, you encouraged. Deku went and had a shower and then got into clean clothes and you got a few things ready to leave. 
As soon as the cleaning services arrived and had had their little fan moment with Deku, they got to work and you and he left for a bit. They said that it would take a few hours to clean up and you assured them that, that was fine. Where do you want to go for dinner? You asked Deku as you walked hand in hand down the street. I'm not really hungry to be honest, he replied softly. Okay, well let's just go and get some ice cream then. Something sweet, you said with a smile as you walked. You took him to the local ice cream shop and you both got something to eat and then went for a walk down to the park. It was a nice night and just sitting on the park bench eating ice cream did wonders for your moods. Deku wasn't interested in his ice cream at first but then after having a few licks he, of it he perked up. He was pondering what to do regarding the proposal as you ate your ice cream in silence. Would it be too inappropriate to do it now? He thought as he gave you a side glance. He took a deep breath. Hey, Yin, can I ask you something? Well, 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 what have we here? A bubbly voice interrupted Deku's silent sentence. You both looked in the direction of the voice and there stood Kaminari Denki, Chargebolt, with a girl clinging to his arm. And it looked like they were out on a date. Oh, Kaminari, Deku said when he saw his friend. He hopped up off the bench and walked over to greet the flirtatious blonde hero. They shook hands and Deku smiled. What are you two lovebirds doing out here? Kaminari asked, looking past Deku to you. Having a little date, are we? Something like that, Deku said sadly. What happened? Kaminari asked, picking up that something bad had happened. Deku briefly told him about the failed cooking date and Kaminari sympathised. Ah, I feel you bro. I can't cook to save my life. That's why I go out for food he said with a laugh. That's not true, baby. You're amazing at everything you do, the floozy on his arm said as she looked up at him adoringly. Oh, thanks, baby cakes. I'll have to reward you for that compliment later, he said lowly with a wink, bending his head down so that they could nuzzle noses. She giggled as he quickly pecked her on the lips. Uh, you two look like you're on a date too, I take it, Deku said, breaking the little moment the pair were having. Yeah, just finished dinner. We're heading back to my place for dessert, Kaminari said with a smirk and a little eyebrow wiggle. The floozy giggled with embarrassment. Oh, Danky, don't give too much away, she added with faux bashfulness as she squished her very pronounced breasts into his arm. Mmm, I think I know which two marshmallows I'm going to eat first, he said to her in a provocative tone as he rubbed his arm between her boobs. You almost gagged. It was gross the way she was carrying on. Poor Deku was bright red in the face. Oh, uh, okay, don't let me stop you, he mumbled as he turned and walked back to you. Yeah, we'd better get going, Kaminari said with a sigh, looking down at the girl that he had metaphorically wrapped around his little finger. It's hard to just stand here and not do any exercise, he said coyly. Oh, Deku, you sly cutie, you. The girl with the IQ of a houseplant giggled. You stifled an agonising groan and rolled your eyes. Ugh, really guys? Right here in front of my ice cream? Anyway, we're gonna split Midoriya, catch ya, Kaminari said with his signature suave smile. Any other fan girl would find it sexy, maybe, but you couldn't stand his overt flirtatious lines. They seemed so fake and empty. Kaminari turned and walked off with the girl still giggling and hanging off him while Deku sat down next to you. Well, he's good with the ladies, Deku mused. You scoffed. You call that good? He can probably bed multiple girls a night, but does he know how to hold down a relationship? I think no. Deku heard you, but at the same time he was wondering if Kaminari could give him some points on how to be cool and confident. Hmm, he might be able to give me some idea on how I can do a really awesome proposal. He thought. Satisfied with his decision, he smiled to himself. Yes, don't give up, Deku. Your name means you can do it, so hold your head up and make this the most plus ultra proposal ever. When you go back to the house, the cleaning team were all but done. The water was all gone and the pan with the charcoal meat had been thrown away. Oh wow, you've done a great job, you praise them. There's no damage anywhere. They finished up the last of the work and Deku paid them before they left. Oh, uh, hi, Kaminari, Deku said nervously into the phone as the blonde answered with a raspy morning voice the next day. Hey, Midoriya, what's up? Kaminari asked with a yawn. 
Ah, I'm sorry, I didn't know you'd still be asleep, Deku said, glancing at his desk clock. It read 10.30am. Uh, had a uh, late night, Kaminari replied with a cheeky, raspy chuckle. Oh, uh, I see. I can call another time, Deku said, uncomfortable about what the late night could have entailed. Uh, you're good, dude. What's up? Well, well, I just wanted your advice on something, Deku said softly. Sure, man. What can I help with? Kaminari asked curiously. Well, I, uh... Deku glanced up to make sure the office door was closed. I want to propose to Yin, and I want to do it in a really cool way. And, well, you seem confident in that area. Well, thank you for the compliment, Kaminari said with a laugh. But I'll be honest with you, I've never really proposed to anyone before. Uh, well, that's okay. I just want to know how to be confident. That's all. Well, I can give you some pointers there. That's no worries. Want to meet today? Kaminari asked enthusiastically. Yes, please, if you have time, Deku replied happily. Definitely have time. I just, uh, just get this girl gone and be over. I'll be probably there around lunch break, 12.30, Kaminari confirmed. Oh, uh, of course, Deku replied with a blush. Awesome, I'll see you. Whoa, baby, I'm on the phone. Sorry, Midoriya, I'll, uh, I'll see Ah, Oh, yeah, it feels good. Oh, bye, Kaminari. See you soon. Deku yelled quickly and pressed end call. Oh my gosh, what was she doing to him? Deku blushed furiously. I wonder if Yin would ever want to. His mind wandered, imagining you on your knees in front of him with your beautiful hands and lips wrapped around his. Izu! He called brightly as he entered his office. He jumped violently and adjusted himself. Y yes, Yin? Want to grab lunch today? You asked with a smile. Oh, I'm sorry, Yin. I'm meeting with, um, Kaminari today, Deku said, looking down nervously. Kaminari? Why? You asked, a slight scowl crossing your face. Um, well, I, um, need some help with something, Deku mumbled. Oh, okay. I'll have lunch on my own then, he replied, before turning and leaving in a bit of a huff. Why Kaminari? He's a bit of a shameless flirt. It's not that I don't like him, but... I want to spend time with Izu, he pouted internally. Deku sighed. He just wanted to get this proposal done. He was sick and tired of trying to be sneaky. You left the office around lunchtime and headed on your own down to the cafe. You weren't really in the mood to sit there and eat alone, so figured you'd grab something and head back to the sanctity and safety of your office. Man, why am I letting these things get to me? You thought as you walked. I shouldn't be getting upset over little things, but... I just don't like these being a bit secretive and still nothing's happening. You exhaled sharply, a scowl plastered on your face. You were thinking about what the receptionist had asked about when he was going to pop the question and had hoped that maybe he was going to do it after the special dinner on the weekend. But instead of getting a ring, you got a sopping wet kitchen and a burnt dinner. Maybe he's just not ready when I need to accept that. You sighed as you pushed the cafe doors open. There was a massive long line, and you sighed again. Oh, this is going to cut into my lunch break. Begrudgingly, you took a place in line and stared blankly at the back of the person in front of you. I... I just didn't see it coming. You heard a voice from one of the tables nearby say sadly, I thought he was going to propose. Your ears pricked up. Not really wanting to eavesdrop, you looked away from the direction of the voice, but she was talking so loud that you could hear every single word very clearly. He, he went ring shopping and he planned special dinners and... The girl broke down crying. And then one night he said he needed to talk to me about something and I thought he was going to propose and then he broke it off with me, she wailed. Oh, hon, I'm so sorry, her friend said th sympathetically. We were together for five years, the girl sobbed. Your heart stopped and your head whipped around to look at the poor girl who had just been dumped. She looked shattered. Her friend had hopped up from her seat and had walked around to comfort her sobbing friend. Five years. Izu and I... I don't know what went wrong, the girl sobbed. Everything had been perfect. We got along so well. I don't know why he ended it. Your heart sank. Is, is he going to break up with me? 
Did he show any signs of change? The friend asked the sobbing girl. No, none. Well, he started hanging out with some of his old school friends, but that's about it. You felt sick to your stomach. <gasps> Kaminari. The sobbing girl continued. And he changed the way he acted a bit, but he was still nice. Your mouth ran dry. Suddenly you weren't hungry anymore, and you turned and walked out of the line and out of the cafe doors. Is, is he really going to end it with me? My situation sounds exactly the same as what hers was, you thought as you walked back to the office. You had your head down, deep in thought. You couldn't imagine life without your beautiful soft hero. Uh, thank you for meeting me, Kaminari. I hope I didn't interrupt. Deku's voice trailed off. Nah, nah. All good, dude, the sexy blonde replied with a smirk as he removed his designer glasses and hung them on the front of his plain v-neck t-shirt. I'm seeing her again tonight, so I can always pick up where I left off. He added with a sly smile as he leaned back on the cafe chair with arms crossed across his chest. Deku blushed and averted his eyes. You're so confident, Kaminari. How can I have a bit more, uh, swag? Kaminari asked, finishing Deku's sentence. Whatever that means, Deku asked curiously, returning his gaze to the blonde hero. Just your presence, really. Confidence. Your aura, Kaminari said, pulling out some big words to sound sophisticated. Yes, those. That's what I want to build on, Deku said excitedly. How do I present myself as smooth and cool? Kaminari laughed. Okay, well, first you've got to be eye-catching, yeah? Get some mad shades, like these, he said, pointing to his designer sunnies. Then walk the walk, you know, step it out like you're in the streets, power stance, be confident. Instead of asking a girl out, tell her you're going to take her out. I'm not sure I follow, Deku said shyly. Can you give an example? Sure, dude. So, you walk up to a hottie, right? Nine out of ten, stunner. And you go, hey sexy, we're hitting the town tonight, yeah? You and me, dinner, 8pm. I'll pick you up at yours. Oh, wow, Deku said in awe. And it works? Yeah, 60% of the time it works. Yeah, every time, Kaonari replied smugly, blowing hot air in a huff from his open mouth onto his knuckles and rubbing it on his shirt. Deku was about to comment that the statement about statistics didn't make sense, but thought best to leave it. Uh, so, should I try this for the proposal? Yin, we're getting married. No, 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 no. Wait, hold up, Kaminari implored. Nah, dude, not like that. Try something like, sexy. We've been together for five years, Deku added in. Five years. And I think it's time we took this relationship to the next level, Kaminari said with a sexy smile as he leaned forward on the table. I want to make you Mrs. Kaminari. Deku was floored. That's so awesome, he said with amazement. So cool. Can, can I use that on Yin? Sure, dude, Kaminari replied with a self-satisfied look on his face as he sat back, looking very accomplished. Make sure to tell people it was my line that got you your fiancé, yeah? I promise I will, Deku said as he stood up. I'm so excited. I'll, I'll go and practice now and buy some glasses. Good luck, my man, plus ultra, Kaminari said as he stood up, fist-bumping Deku before Deku turned and left hurriedly. Kaminari watched him go. Uh, he'll be fine, even if he stuffs it up, he thought. Those really suit you, Deku, the glasses shop assistant said as Deku tried on a pair of Mark Jacobs aviators. You think so? Deku said hesitantly. Of course, they really boost your look. You look more confident. That's all Deku needed to hear. I'll take them, he said emphatically. You sighed heavily again, distracted by the conversation that you overheard at the cafe. I think I just need to have a good talk with Izu and make sure we're on the same page, you thought as you aimlessly shuffled papers on your desk. A voice at the door drew your attention. H hey there, sexy, they said in a nervous but appealing voice. You looked up. Deku was leaning casually against the doorframe of your office with his arms crossed across his chest and one leg gently crossed across the other with the toe resting on the floor. He had on some pretty neat looking sunnies and at first you were just in awe, but then you remembered that he'd called you sexy. Izu, you just called me sexy? You stuttered. Um, well, I think you are, he said, slightly bashfully, pulling the sunnies down a bit so he could look over the top of them with his emerald eyes. 
The hot as hell vibes that you were getting from him in those sunnies, coupled with his timidness, just didn't quite match, but it was doing all kinds of things to your heart. He's like, sexy shine? Bashfully confident? I can't deal with this, it's adorable! Then you recalled the sobbing girl from the cafe and your face fell. He started hanging out with his old friends and changed a bit before he broke up with me. That's what she said, right? Izu's doing the same thing. I Izu, c can we talk? You asked as you stood up slowly from your desk, biting the inside of your cheek to stop yourself from tearing up. Is something wrong, Yin? He asked hesitantly, concerned that Kaminari's advice wasn't going how he had planned it. Well, not wrong, I don't think so. I hope not, but we need to chat, I think, he replied, looking down at the floor. Oh, okay, he said, pushing off the wall and walking into the room. Did you want to chat now? He asked, stopping in front of you. Your heart rate increased. Um, no, we can talk at home, you said, quickly backing down. You didn't want to risk bawling your eyes out at work if things went south. You know I love you, right, Yin? Deku said lowly. You nodded, but you weren't convinced. Was he just trying to lessen your pain for now before breaking up with you later? You nodded sadly, still staring at the floor. Deku was confused as he left your office and went back to his own, sighing as he closed the door behind him. Oh, these glasses were supposed to add to my confidence and help me look a little sexier, but it seems to have made Yin sad. I'll make it up to her this afternoon. I'll be so smooth and cool she'll be blown away, he thought confidently. The walk home was somewhat silent, and the tension and awkwardness only grew the closer you got to the house. Here, let me get the door, Deku said quickly, stepping ahead of you and opening the front door to usher you inside. He still insisted on wearing the aviators and pulled them down to wink at you as you passed him. Okay, what's going on? You blurted out, spinning around to face him once he had entered the house and closed the door behind him. What do you mean? he asked innocently. The glasses, the dinners, the sneaking around, the suspicious happenings. Izuku, I need to know what's going on. We need to talk. Please, I can't take this anymore, he said exasperated. Deku's broad shoulders slumped and he took his glasses off and put them on the small table near the front door, with his gaze falling sadly to the floor as he sighed. Okay. You inhaled sharply and held your breath. Here it comes, you mentally steeled yourself. I'm so sorry, nothing's working, he stated sadly. Nothing's working? As in, not working out between us? You thought as tears welled up in your eyes. I've tried a few times now and every time. Tried what? To break up with me? You thought, biting the inside of your cheek hard. I can't keep going on like this, Deku said his pleading eyes looking up and meeting yours. A tear escaped and rolled down your cheek. Yin, I'm so sorry. P please don't cry. I, I never meant to make you cry, Deku pleaded. I never meant to draw things out for this long, but after Todoroki and then Karishma and then Kaminari, I knew I just had to make the decision on my own. Izuku, if you're going to break up with me, just say it. But then please let's talk. I need to know why and if we can fix it. You know I'd do anything to save our relationship. You cried, breaking down and sobbing, burying your face into your hands while the agony of your own words racked your body. Wh what? Deku cried. Yin, I'm not breaking up with you, he said as he fell to his knees in front of you and wrapped his arms around your waist, pulling you in for a hug as he buried his curly head into your stomach. You removed your hands from your face and sobbed softly while w wiping your eyes. You're not. No, Yin, I... He pulled back from you and put one leg up so that he was in a one-legged kneeling position. I, I love you. I never want to be without you. He reached into his back pocket and pulled out the small navy ring box. You gasped when you saw it and burst into tears again. Happy tears this time. Please, Yin, would you be my wife? I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I want to have a family, grow old and spend every moment of our lives together. Please say yes. I can't see a future without you in it, he pleaded as he popped the lid open. You had te tears streaming down your cheeks and you were bawling so hard you could hardly speak. Please, Deku pleaded. He was still worried you might say no because you were mad at him. Yes, you screamed. Yes, one thousand times, yes. 
Oh, really? He cried with delight, bursting into tears himself as he pulled the ring out of the box and took your left hand, sliding it effortlessly onto your ring finger. He said, it's beautiful, he sobbed, holding your hand up to admire the gorgeous ring through teary eyes. Deku stood up and engulfed you in a thankful hug, still crying happily. The two of you sobbed and commented on sporadic things that had happened recently, laughing with relief at how silly you'd both been. Thank you for saying yes, Yin, Deku said, kissing you passionately after wiping your tears away. Are you crazy? Of course I'd always say yes. Thank you for, thank you for asking me, my fiancé, you replied with a little shy look in your eye. Deku blushed. I, I like the sound of that word, but I can't wait to be able to say wife. You reached out and grabbed him in a hug, squeezing him tightly, overwhelmed with relief. What made you think I was going to break up with you? Deku suddenly asked, pulling back from the hug so that he could look at you with those beautiful emerald eyes. I, well, I was at the cafe and there was this girl talking to a friend about how her boyfriend had started to act strange just before he broke up with her and, and you thought all of my weird behaviour meant I was going to do the same to you, Deku gasped suddenly seeing it from your perspective. Oh, Yin, I'm so sorry. I was just trying to get help from my friends to ask for your hand in marriage, but none of their advice worked. He hung his head with disappointment, and you reached out and cupped his cheeks in your hand, tilting his cute freckled face up so you could look him in the eye. You don't need to try and be anyone else. You just need to be you, he said softly, before leaning in and pressing your lips to his. He gratefully returned the kiss, and his eyelids fluttered closed as he enjoyed the feeling of your mouth on his. So, when should we make the wedding? You asked as you pulled back from him. Yin, I, I don't want to wait any longer. I just want us to be married already, he said, the flustered urgency in his voice making him sound really cute. Then, what are we waiting for? You asked with a shrug. Let's get married in three weeks. Three weeks? Yeah. Is that enough time to organise everything? Yeah! Um, okay, well, then let's do it. Plus ultra, he said excitedly, raising his right fist into the air and grinning brightly at you. You squealed with excitement and grabbed him around the middle, jumping up and down and shaking him with your excitement. Okay, I'll start calling around and organising things, you said, letting him go quickly and running for your phone that was charging in the other room. I'll cancel appointments three weeks out. Oh, wait, Yin, he shouted in the direction that you disappeared. We need to make a news announcement. Oh, true, you shouted from the other room. Okay, you pick the announcement time and I'll be there. Okay, mm, let me just ring the receptionist, he mumbled, muttering other things under his breath as he pressed the phone to his ear, waiting for her to pick up. Tell her I want her as my maid of honour, you called to him. Okay, he called back getting his word out a split second before she picked up. Oh, hello, Mrs. B. I, uh, I have some news. There was silence from Deku, then suddenly he spoke again. Wait, how did you know? He asked, you heard him ask the receptionist and you giggled as you walked back into the hallway to where he was standing. She knew? You whispered to him and he nodded, still with phone pressed to his ear. Um, well... Would you be able to arrange a press release for tomorrow so we can make the engagement announcement? Another pause and he smiled. Thank you. Yes. Oh, and Yin wants you as her maid of honour. He looked at you and grinned. Yes, I'll tell her, he added as he bent his head down and baby kissed the tip of your nose. You smiled from ear to ear, then quickly dialed your mum and pressed the phone to your ear, backing back and signalling to Deku that you'd take the call in the other room, to which he nodded. That night was a flurry of phone calls as people slowly started to hear about the good news and by 11pm you and Deku were both exhausted. I swear if someone calls or texts me I'll... Your exclamation was interrupted by another congratulatory text and you looked at it before putting your phone down. I'm done. That's it. Good night. No more texts. Deku smiled and reached out to drag you into his lap as you sat on the couch together. They're just happy for us, he said as he buried his face into the top of your head and kissed you. I'm very excited to make us a married couple. Where are we going to honeymoon? You asked suddenly. Where would you like to go? He queried. I don't mind where we go, as long as I'm with you. Let's do an island holiday. 
Something far away from everyone, he said dreamily. Okay, let me talk to Todoroki. He might know someone who could let us stay on their private island, or maybe he has a private island. He comes from a very long line of wealthy heroes. You snuggled into him more. Oh, to have two weeks of bliss, just us, alone, on an island, he said, your voice dropping into a more seductive register as you turned your head towards him and ran your fingers up the front of his shirt, up to his chin, while your gaze followed. Deku blushed as his mind pulled up an image of you riding him on an exotic island somewhere far away, and he swallowed thickly. Th that sounds nice, he stammered, trying desperately to keep his cool. Mm. You hummed, shifting in his lap and leaning up so that you could kiss his lips. Tenderly, your lips pressed to his, and a gentle, passionate kiss ensued. As you got more into it, you twisted in his lap and straddled his thick thighs, taking his hands and placing them on your waist as he started to rock a little on him. Deku inhaled sharply as your front came in contact with his. You want to take this to the bedroom? You whispered against his lips, continuing to kiss him intermittently. Uh... I really want to, but it's past midnight and we have big news, a big conference tomorrow, he stammered regretfully. True, you suddenly gasped. I'd prefer not to look like death tomorrow when everyone's asking questions. Let's snuggle though, Deku said as he scooped an arm around your back and stood up, easily holding your body against his front as he turned and walked down the lounge room and off down the hall to the bedroom. Yay, snuggles, you squealed with excitement, clinging to his front as he carried you into the room and lay you down the bed gently before crawling over you and snuggling into you on the other side. The next day started just as insane as you'd expected and it started when you woke in the morning to 70 text messages from various people. Among them was from Deku's childhood, his friend and rival Bakugo Katsuki. Oi, extra. I don't care but get that damn Deku to reply my messages or I'll blast his ass off. His message read, the fact that he's messaged me shows just how much he cares, you thought, with a chuckle as you unplugged your phone and rolled over to snuggle into Deku's side. Hey, Izu? Bakugo's trying to contact you, he mumbled groggily. Oh? Deku mumbled back, sitting up abruptly with his eyes half closed and his messy green hair looking like it had been sucked on by a camel. Here, you rasped in your morning voice. Phone. Huh? He hummed sleepily, looking around. You wiggled his phone at him, holding it out so that he could take it. Oh, thank you, Yin, he said politely, taking it from your hand. He looked down at it and paused. Oh, gosh, so many messages, he gasped. I know, right? I had like 70, he said. Oh, his voice trailed off and he sat up and looked over his arm curiously to see how many he had. 1,043 missed calls and messages? You gasped with mortified awe. Isu, that's insane. I'm not going to have any time to go through them all, he said sadly. I'm your assistant, remember? I'm here to assist you. We can go through them later and I can compile them into certain reply groups if you like, he offered. Oh, I don't want to cause you any unnecessary. It's fine, he said quickly. I have no reservations helping with that. Oh, if you're sure, he said, we can worry about it later, but for now let's get ready for the announcement. You grinned, and he smiled brightly back at you, and you clutched his arm in yours and squeezed it tightly. Let's do this! Are you okay, Yin? Deku whispered later, as you stood in his office, waiting till the clock struck 11am, signalling when you would both make your engagement announcement. I'm so nervous, you whispered with a worried look on your face. I feel like I need to pee. D did you need to go now? I can store for you, he said. Anything to help you out. I'll be okay. Is it time yet? You rubbed your hands together, then down the sides of your outfit. Almost, Deku said with a reassuring smile. I'll do most of the talking, so please don't worry. You nodded and gave him a small smile as he held his hand out to you. Let's go. Gingerly you took his hand and followed him out and down the hall, walking to the front of the building where they had set up a podium for him to talk at. As you came into view of the fans, spectators, news presenters and paparazzi, your body started to shake with fear. A loud roar from the crowd erupted as Deku pushed the doors open and you shielded your eyes a little from all the camera lights suddenly going off. Yin, look over here, a photographer called. What are you wearing? Can you tell us what your style is? Some journalists shouted at you. 
Deku, when's the wedding? Another yelled, holding his microphone out to him. He calmly walked to the podium and pulled you up beside him, holding you around your side so you'd feel safe. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to this announcement, Deku started. The noise from the crowd died down and all fell silent as Deku continued his speech. It is with great pleasure, he continued, taking a minute to look at you beside him, that I announce my engagement to my beautiful girlfriend, Yin. A loud cheer erupted, closely followed by wild clapping and whistling. She's been by my side for five years now, and I'm honoured to be able to say that she said yes when I asked her to be my life partner. Another round of cheering erupted and you smiled bashfully. When's the wedding? Someone shouted. It will be soon, at a private venue, Deku replied diplomatically. Are you expecting a baby? Someone else called. Is this a shotgun wedding? Boy, they have no filter, do they? You thought. Uh, I, uh, no, we aren't expecting, but I hope one day that... Thank you again all for your support, you said quickly, cutting Deku off so that he wouldn't get caught up in the next lot of questions that would be, no doubt, thrown at him. Loud voices called from left and right, and Deku looked down at you. Shall we go now? he whispered. Yeah, let's go, you replied. Then you realised that no one was listening anymore. They were just shouting questions at you both. Quickly you waved and thanked them all once more before disappearing back inside the building. Wow, that was intense, you said, glancing back over your shoulder at the people being held back by security. Midoriya. Todoroki's voice called from the door. Your man stopped immediately and turned to face his close friend. Todoroki, come in, he called, waiting for the guards to let the handsome hero in. I'm sorry I didn't see you in the crowds, Deku apologised. It's quite all right, Todoroki said. I wanted to make contact and congratulate you both in person. Thank you, he said with a smile. You are well suited, Todoroki said with a small smile, looking from you to Deku and back. I'm happy for you both. Todoroki, since you're here, Deku said, dropping his gaze and fiddling with his hands, I was wondering if maybe you would consider being in my groom's party? It would be an honour, Midoriya, Todoroki replied in his usual stoic voice. Oi, Deku! Bakugo's voice rang out as he forced his way past the guards. Kachan! Deku squealed when he saw his childhood friend stalking angrily towards him. I'm glad you're here. Yin told me that you were trying to get in touch with me, and I'm sorry I didn't... I'm best man! Bakugo snapped as he grabbed the front of Deku's shirt. Got that? You are being unnecessarily violent. Todoroki commented. Shut it half and half. Bakugo growled at the dual head hero as he held a vice grip on Deku. Yes, well, I was intending to let you know that I wanted you to be my best man at... Ha! Win! Suck it, icy hot! Bakugo shouted proudly. Kachan, please! Deku begged. When is it? Bakugo snapped, still glaring intently at Deku. Uh... Well, we don't exactly have a date yet, so I'll have to let you know, Deku replied shyly, averting his eyes as he mumbled his answer. Fine, call me nerd, Bakugo said before letting Deku's shirt go, and stepping back, then spinning and stalking away with his hands in his pockets, and his legs stomping weirdly out to the sides as he hunched over, back to the crowds that were still gathered out the front of the building. Why are you all still here? Move, all of you useless extras. Uh, sorry about him, Deku said quickly to you. No need to apologise, I know how he is, he replied with a half-amused chuckle. Midoriya, is there anything I can do to help with preparations? Todoroki asked. I myself have been married for three years now, but I still remember what it's like to organise the wedding. Oh, that's very kind of you, Todoroki, Midoriya said with a beautiful smile. I will let you know if I need help. Yin and I are still yet to discuss venues and other things. He turned and smiled at you, reaching a hand out to pull you into his side. We wouldn't want to overwhelm you, though, Todoroki. You already have a little one on your hands, he said with a smile. Todoroki nodded. He's growing up very fast. He is. The last time I saw him, he was crawling, he said, snuggling into your man's side a little and dreaming about the day that he'd become a daddy. He is now walking, Todoroki replied. Clever boy, you gushed. We'll have to catch up with you and Jem soon. Todoroki nodded. If you need a ring bearer, Soshi would be the perfect candidate. 
candidate? It sounds like a competition, he chuckled internally. Although, Bakugo has a little boy too now, so he'd also be in the running for ring bearer position. Oh, that's very kind of you, Todoroki. I'll discuss it with my fiancé, Deku said, looking bashfully down at you, his beautiful green eyes glinting with delight as his curly fringe swished a little. You grinned back at him, so overly in love with this man who was going to be a husband very soon. Ah, uh, yes, well, if you'll excuse us, Todoroki, I need to start planning with Yin, Deku said quickly. I'll ring you later. Of course, Todoroki said, nodding his part before turning and walking away. Deku took your hand and walked you back to his office, quickly closing and locking the door behind you before grabbing your waist and lifting your body up against his. Isu, you giggled. What do you do? Your question was halted by Deku's lips on yours and you gave in to his beautifully soft kiss. Alone in his office, he held you in his strong arms and made out with you until you pulled back to catch your breath. What was that about? You asked with a smile. I'm just really happy that we're going to be married soon, he said softly, his gentle gaze shifting from your left eye to your right. Same, you replied just as softly. I couldn't help but think about you being a dad one day, just like Todoroki has little Soshi. And Bakugo has Jisuki, Deku said with a bashful look on his face. We're a little behind, but we'll have lots of children to make up for it, he added enthusiastically. How many? you asked suspiciously. Five. Ah, uh, you hummed with a nervous chuckle. Uh, that's a lot. They'll all be really plus ultra, Deku replied with a delighted grin. R.I.P. my but, but before that, I just want to have our wedding and a quiet honeymoon together, he said with a soft pink blush on his cheeks as he looked away shyly, allowing your body to slide down his front as he took one of his hands and tugged on one loose curl hanging over his eyes. Are you thinking naughty thoughts? You teased him playfully. You always get bashful when your mind is in the gutter. Deku's face flushed red and he coughed a few times his throat contracting with the fear that he'd been caught out. You giggled and wrapped an arm around his waist, hugging him as best you could. It's okay. On the honeymoon, you won't need to think about it. You'll be able to do it. Your sexually charged comment brought Deku undone, and he stiffened in your arms, his poor little mind at war as it flickered between thoughts of palm trees swaying and the images of you riding him. It's okay, it's okay, you chuckled when you saw the look on his face. Calm down, only a few more weeks to go. Deku nodded mechanically, and you had to reach up and kiss him on the cheek to get his attention back on you. Now, we need to organise the wedding venue. That night, you and Deku looked at a few places to hold the wedding, and settled on a small seaside church that had a large vineyard out the back that you could host either an indoor wedding or outdoor wedding, as well as have the reception on site. We'll need to keep it all in one place, you said. Otherwise, we'll have paparazzi all over us if they follow guests from wedding to reception. Good point, Deku replied. How many in the wedding party? Ah, uh, well, you wanted Todoroki and Bakugo. Is there anyone else you'd like? You asked. Deku thought for a moment. No, I think just the two will be fine. Oh, okay. That means I can have the receptionist and my friend from my old work, he said happily. It's good to have a smaller wed wedding party. Mm, what else do we need? Deku asked. Clothes? You chuckled. What colour are we going to go for the wedding? What if we match the colour with the colour of the gem in your engagement ring? Deku asked excitedly. It would tie in well if we had the matching. Then I could match it with white suits. Mm, maybe white suits might not look good on Todoroki because of his hair being white on one side. And also, Bakugo's hair is blonde. So it might be too light, but it would bring out his red eyes. I wonder if... Deku was lost in thought as he mulled over the clothing options for the wedding, and you looked on with amusement, surprised that he was so into this. I didn't think Izu would think so much into this, but I'm not complaining, you thought with an entertained smirk on your face. The next day flip-flopped between you and Deku hiding in his office to organise wedding things, or having to leave the office to do other things while getting swamped with well wishes, and by the end of the day you were shot. Oh, I'm going to need that honeymoon to recover from all this overstimulation, you said once Deku had opened the door to your place later that night. 
what a day. Oh, this is harder than hero work, he replied in a tired voice. You go and have a shower and I'll make dinner, okay? He said lovingly as you cupped his cheeks in your hands and gently kissed his nose. He tenderly drew your body in against his and flopped his head down on your shoulder, his curls tickling your neck as he took a slow, deep breath in and then sighed out. Oh, I'm just so happy to have you, he said softly. You hugged him back, your hands sliding up his muscular back and up into his hairline so you could ruffle the back of his hair with your fingers. I love you, Izu. I love you, Moyin, he whispered, turning his head to kiss your collarbone. You giggled a little as his lips tickled your skin and you gave him one last squeeze before letting him go. Now off you go, he said playfully. Go and have a nice hot shower and I'll have dinner ready by the time you're done. He nodded and pulled back, giving you a tender smile before slowly trudging off down the hall. Poor guy, you thought sadly as he watched him go. He couldn't go anywhere today without a mass of people swarming him. He's held up so well considering the strain of it all. You turned and walked into the kitchen and started pulling things out of the cupboard to make dinner. You weren't planning on making anything special, just chicken and salad. And almost as if externally controlled by somebody writing this book, you had dinner ready the same time that Deku walked into the kitchen and you grinned up at him as he walked in in his faded plus ultra shirt. Perfect timing, you smiled, dishing out the food and sitting a plate down for him to eat. This looks great, he said with a smile as he pulled his chair out and sat down. Thanks. It's nothing amazing, he said with a chuckle. Everything you do is amazing, he replied. Not really. You're the amazing one. I couldn't be a hero. You work so hard and your job is super dangerous at times. I definitely couldn't do it, you said, sitting down opposite him at the table. I think you'd make a great hero, Deku replied honestly. Your quirk could be very useful. How? you chuckled, taking a bite of chicken. All I can do is copy paper items. Well, what if there was a dangerous villain come to town and we needed everyone inside immediately? You could be in the helicopter copying warning flyers and dropping them out the helicopter so that people below would get the message, he said. You giggled. Thanks, Izzy. I like your confidence, but I'm telling you, my quirk is not suitable for hero work. Deku had just taken a bite of his chicken at that point and his eyes lit up. Baby, this chicken's bussin, he said with a bright smile. It's what? Bussing. Is that good? Yeah, I think so. I hear the younger kids say it sometimes. I have a book that I keep all the new words I learn in. Like your hero quirk notebook? You asked, remembering having, having seen him with the notebook many times. Yes, I have plenty of new words I like to use, he replied happily. Uh, no wonder you're popular with all generations, you said with a chuckle. And I'm glad my chicken's bussin'. Oh, changing subjects. Would you like me to ask Todoroki if we could stay at one of his family's places for the honeymoon? That would be really nice if we could. Anywhere secluded would do. Okay, I'll ring him tomorrow, Deku replied, his eyes flickering across to his phone as it lit up and started vibrating. He paused when he saw the name on the screen. It's Mum! He quickly reached across and picked it up, holding it to his ear. Hi, Mum. I have news, he said quickly, his sentence being cut short as Mrs. Midoriya bubbled over him on the other end of the line. He waited for her to speak and then he smiled. Oh, you already heard the news? I'm so sorry. It's been really crazy and... She started to say something else and you quickly got his attention. Tell her we're on our way over right now, you whispered. Tell her we just left work. Um, Mum... We're coming over now, he said, giving you a strange look. We just left work. There was another pause as the happiness from Mrs. Midoriya's voice spilled down the line. Oh, of course we want to see you, Deku said, standing slowly as you took his and your plate of food and took them over to the kitchen bench. Ask her if she wants us to pick up any takeaway on the way over, you whispered to him. Um, Mum, did you want us to get food on our way over? Another pause. You've already cooked enough food for 15 people? You smiled as you put cling wrap over your hardly eaten dinners and placed them in the fridge. She must have really wanted to see him. He is her only son after all, so this is a big deal, him getting married. I need to make sure we involve her as much as possible in the wedding plans. 
Deku wrapped up the conversation with his mum and promised her that he would be there soon. Then he hung up. Why did we tell her we're coming over? He asked you curiously. She misses you, Izu, and she was maybe a little sad that she didn't hear about the engagement from you, but instead heard it through the news. I'm sorry, I should have told you to ring her first. Well, she did say that she was sad that she only just found out now, he said with a regretful look in his eye. It's okay, we'll pick up flowers on the way and make sure we involve her lots in the wedding, you said. Your mum's really lovely, so I have no issue having her organise some things. Deku nodded. I don't know all the things to do and not to do with weddings. He scratched his head sheepishly. That's okay, no one does when it's their first time, you reassured him, grabbing your phone and heading for the door with him behind you. Just before we start, there is a adult scene in this chapter, which I've cut out as I usually do to keep things PG. But uh, it's actually two scenes that I've cut out and they, they kind of went on back to back. So it starts with them getting intimate in the hallway and then it ends with them getting intimate in bed except Deku's a little sleepy and I think he's pretty much asleep for the second part. So when I start reading afterwards, uh, it's talking about how he had no idea what had happened and she's explaining it to him just so that you're across the board and you know what's going on. But I won't be reading the scene. You can, however, find it in the book on my site. I'll put the link, uh, but enjoy. A 20 minute ride later, including stopping to get flowers for Mrs. Midoriya, and you arrived at Deku's childhood home. You had been to his apartment a number of times, but it always made you feel so soft inside when you entered the place. There was just something in so intrinsically homely about it that it always left you feeling less stressed the minute you stepped inside and took your shoes off. Mum? Deku called as he slipped his shoes off at the front mat. Is that my boy? His mum called lovingly, the sound of cutlery and other cooking items being put down as she hastily stopped her work and made her way out into the narrow hallway. Hi mum, Deku greeted when she appeared and came bumbling down the hallway towards him. His bright smile made her tear up and he engulfed her in a warm hug before handing her the flowers. These are for you. I hope you like them, he said with a smile. Oh, they're perfect, Izu, she said kindly, then turned to greet you. Hi, Yin, please come in. She reached across to give you one of her loving mum hugs and squeezed you gently in her embrace. I have so much food. I hope you're hungry. We are, you said with a smile. This is perfect timing. Deku grinned at you and stepped back to usher you in front of him, politely taking the rear so that you could follow his mum up the hall and into the dining area. Oh, this looks amazing, you said with delight when you saw the food laid out. Yes, I'm sorry, I just started cooking and then all of a sudden I'd made too much. Please don't be shy, eat up. She gestured to the two chairs opposite her and you sat down in one and Deku sat in the other. How have you been, mum? Your, mum, your man asked accepting a bowl of food that she passed across to him. I've been well, but enough from me. I need to congratulate you both on your announcement. I cried when I saw the news, she said, tearing up once again. I'm so sorry. I didn't call you first, Mum. It's just been so busy, Deku apologised when he saw the tears slipping from the corners of her eyes. It's okay, Izu. You're a big hero now. I know you don't get a lot of time to breathe, so if you need help with wedding preparations, I'd love to lend a hand, she said, wiping her eyes on a napkin. I have a lot of time on my hands, so I can do some calling around if you need me to. Oh, that's very kind, you said, with Deku nodding along with a mouthful. We'd really appreciate your help. Mrs. Midoriya smiled to you and nodded. Okay, well for now, let's eat. Looks like Izzy's already started, you said with a chuckle. Then you saw him shoving more food down. He's always had a good appetite, Mrs. Midoriya said with a smile. Even as a young boy, he knew exactly what he wanted to eat and would always ask for something in particular. You grinned. Not much has changed then. The rest of the evening went well and you chatted about different things, weddings and other, and before you knew it, it was close to midnight. Oh, Deku gasped when he saw the time. Mum, I'm so sorry, we have to go. I have work tomorrow. And I need to get things together for the wedding. We didn't even have a we don't even have a date planned. Well, when were you hoping to get married? Mrs. Midoriya asked as she got up and grabbed the calendar from the wall. Well, we didn't see the point in waiting, he said, looking at Deku for him to confirm. 
yes we were thinking something in about three weeks time or would you want a weekend or weekday wedding mrs midoria asked you looked at deku and he looked back at you and shrugged weekend i guess mrs midoria counted the weeks forward and said the date for saturday in three weeks time and you looked from her back to deku sounds good to me he said nonchalantly same he replied circle it mum we'll make that our date if the venues we want are available then he said conditionally i'll make some calls tomorrow if you need anything from me mrs midoria reminded not wanting to act too desperate to be involved but also not wanting you to forget her oh yes of course can i call you tomorrow to get your help with things you asked her her eyes lit up and she nodded enthusiastically yes please i'm available all day after finishing up with finer details you and deku left for the night drained but excited about the soon upcoming wedding i'll ring todoroki tomorrow and talk to him about honeymoon venues deku said softly as he held you against his side in the back of the taxi on the way home yeah he said in a relaxed voice you're kind of sleepy but you still wanted to do something with your man as you became keenly aware of his hand on your side lazily you turned your head against him and tilted it up smiling up into his shining green eyes as the street lights going past outside illuminated his face slowly you reached up to his face and cupped his cute freckled cheek in your palm smiling when he nuzzled his face back into it a little and closed his eyes <laughs> cute he thought as his eyes opened again you stretched your neck up to him and he leaned down pressing his plump lips against yours obviously you didn't want to do too much in the back of the taxi as deku had a reputation to uphold but it was clear from the chemistry coursing between you two that you wanted more the minute you got home the taxi pulled up outside your house and in you went no sooner had you flicked the lights on in the hall deku's body was against yours forgive me yin he said softly as he caged you in against the hallway wall i know it's late and i know we have to be up early tomorrow but you grinned up at him and reached for his hips pulling them against yours as you arched your front front against his don't worry i feel the same way Izu. we haven't been intimate for a while he swallowed audibly although he was a grown man there was still a lot of innocence left in his body and it didn't take you long to get him worked up even the most simple of sentences could drive him wild the next morning you woke feeling very refreshed you didn't even remember rolling over anything in your sleep last night because you'd been well and truly washed out all energy gone hey baby you greeted deku as he wandered into the kitchen a little after you did that next morning sleep well yeah he whispered groggily had a strange dream though what was it you asked stopping what you were doing to give him a hug uh well it's um kind of a little dirty he admitted shyly i had a dream that you and i were intimate in bed it felt so real uh, <laughs> uh about that you chuckled sheepishly deku looked at you confused why would you say that's fu suddenly it clicked oh no did i you nodded with a grin but I'm partially to blame because I encouraged it, you replied, reaching out to give him a little kiss on the lips. Uh, how so? he asked bashfully. Well, when you started to get a little frisky, I uh, pulled your pants down and um, you gave him a run through of what happened and the colour of his face slowly changed from light red to dark red and you giggled with embarrassment as you finished off the grand retelling. So then I pulled off and fell asleep. Uh, uh, I, uh, I'm sorry that I don't apologize. I wanted it to happen. I don't know what's gotten in on into me, but I've just been so turned on lately. I just want you all the time. Is it because you've reached the most fertile part of your cycle? He asked innocently. Eh? You screeched with surprise. Izu, how do you know about cycles? Actually, the better question would be, how do you know about my cycle? Oh, I have a book here he pulled out yet another of his infamous notebooks from behind his back and flicked it open i take notes of when you start and finish and when you're more needy of me and what foods you crave at what time it's not always consistent but it gives me a rough idea of i can't believe that you've written it all down you interjected 
putting your finger on the top of the page and tilting the book down so you could peek over the top and see what he'd written. There were diagrams, charts, bullet points and question marks all over the well-written page and you gasped with surprise. I don't know whether to be alarmed or impressed, you mused. I just want to be able to understand you so I can be the best boyfriend, well, fiancé to you ever. Even without the book, you're an amazing fiancé, he replied him with another little kiss to his nose. Now, we'd better get ready for work. It was a busy day for you, ringing around to different venues and places to organise a quick wedding and dress fittings. You had rung Mrs Midoria the minute that you got to work and had asked her to find some wedding dress shops in the area that you could book a viewing with her, and she was all too happy to help. Yin, she greeted you on the phone a few hours later, I have some times for you. Tomorrow and Saturday for Tie the Knot, Say Yes, Annabella Boutique, Bride-esque and Perfection in White. Oh, that's a lot, you said with excitement. Would you please message me through the times and I'll make sure I'm available for them? This will be fun. I'm so very much looking forward to seeing you try on the dresses, she gushed. Thank you for including me. I do appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for taking the time to ring so many places and big names too. Well, as soon as I mentioned my name, people bent over backwards to help me, she said with a chuckle. Izuku certainly has lots of fans, he chuckled. Well, in any case, thank you again. Later that night, over dinner, you and Deku discussed what you'd accomplished that day. I spoke with Todoroki and he's happy for us to spend our honeymoon on his family's private island, but the plane leaves from New York so we'll need to fly there first and then catch the private plane to the island. Amazing, he replied with a grin. A whole island to ourselves? It'll be wonderful, Deku replied with a bright smile. Well, I have the wedding and reception venues booked at Love Grove Vineyards and your mum has organised a heap of wedding dress shops for us too. I have a few appointments tomorrow, he said with a smile. That sounds like fun. I'll need to call my groomsmen and organise suits now too. I still haven't decided on the style or colour. Are we having wedding cars? You asked suddenly, because we might need to organise them as well. Oh, I forgot about cars. Oh, there's so much to organise, he wailed. And guest list? Oh no, he clutched his head. How will I be able to get this prepared in three weeks? We can do it, you replied enthusiastically. Where's that plus ultra attitude? We got lost in amongst all the preparation details, he said with soft despair as he remained with his head in his hands, curls spilling out from between his fingers. It's okay, you chuckled sympathetically, understanding how he was getting overwhelmed. We're in this together. The main reason for this day is for us to be married. If we forget something, we forget something. But let's not forget us. He looked at you and gave you a beautiful smile, then reached out to pull you into his embrace. I'm so happy to have you, he said soothingly, kissing the tip of top of your head. You smiled back and snuggled into his front. It's the least I can do for you. I might not be a hero, but I can definitely be a good support. To me, that's the same as being a hero, he replied. The next day was wedding dress shopping with your mother-in-law, to be, and you went from shop to shop, trying on a few of the outfits until you narrowed it down to three. Which do you think? you asked Mrs. Midoriya as you went to get some iced tea together. I think you look beautiful in all of them, she said happily, again simply elated that you'd invited her along. Thank you, you said with a smile, but I need options. She chuckled. Yes, I know. Sorry, I'm not much help. The two of you chatted a little more about which ones you liked and which would suit with Deku's style. I don't think he's settled on a suit yet, he mused out loud. Just then you got a message and looked down at your phone. Deku had just sent you a picture and your eyes popped open. There was a photo of him and his groomsmen in their chosen outfits for the wedding, still at the shop taking a photo in the change room area. What do you think? Deku had texted you. Your Deku was grinning from ear to ear with a peace sign up, Bakugo was scowling with his hands in his pockets, and Todoroki was giving the camera a very model type, unfazed look as he adjusted his tie. Oh my god, the modelling groomsman of the century? You stared at the photo for far too long, so long that Mrs. Midoriya had to speak to remind you that you were with her and out in public. 
Oh, sorry, you said, blinking your eyes to bring you back to the present. I just got this picture of Izu and the boys. They look amazing. You showed her the picture and she welled up, heavy tears sitting along her lower eyelids as she sniffed and whispered Izuku's name. Now I just need to think about which outfit will match theirs. Well, what about the one from Say Yes, Mrs. Midoriya offered. Actually, you said, looking from the picture to her, I can see that working. She looked up at you with tears still in her eyes and burst out crying. This startled you and you jumped a little and looked around. I'm so sorry, did I say something wrong? You asked her, trying to calm her crying. I'm just so happy, she cried. Okay, okay, let's go and see the outfit again, yes? You said quickly, glancing around and taking her with you back towards one of the shops that you'd just been to earlier that day. As you walked, you texted Deku back quickly and told him he looked amazing and that you thought you may have found the outfit that would be perfect for you that would also match, in style, to his and the boy's suits. He replied happily and you smiled to yourself. This is so much fun! Later that afternoon, now back home and waiting for Deku to arrive, you sat in the middle of the bed with a giant grin on your face. You heard the front door crack open as Deku arrived home and also a muffled bark coming from the back door. Oh, cat! He actually made a noise? He's been completely avoiding both Izu and I ever since I moved in, really. You got up and walked out of the room. Yin, are you home? Deku called happily as he closed the front door behind him. Yes, I'm here, you called back just as happily. I just heard Cat at the back door, so I was going to let him in. I fed him this morning before work, Deku said as he took his shoes off. It can't be because he's hungry. He usually doesn't want anything more to eat until 8pm. You walked to the back door and pulled it open. There was the angry ball of fluff standing there with a deep scowl on his fluffy little face as he glared up at you. Hey Cat, you greeted with a smile. He huffed through his little wet nose and looked away, but stood firm. Did you want to come inside? You asked him. He gave you a side look and then looked away and did a little woof noise in his throat. You giggled. Why are you such a sundary? Just be a normal little pup and be happy to see me and I'll gladly let you in. He growled and whipped his head towards you. Surprised by his sudden ferocity, you stepped back and he trotted into the house defiantly. You watched his little fluffy butt pitter-patter off around the corner. This mother... Oh, hey, cat! Deku greeted brightly. The angry ball of fluff growled something and you heard the little tap-tap-tap of his toenails head past Deku and into the lounge room. You shook your head with a smirk and closed the back door, then walked down the hall to find Deku and give him a proper greeting. He smiled when he saw you and engulfed you in a big hug, kissing you like he hadn't seen you in years and you returned his passionate contact. As you pulled back from the kiss, you saw Cat watching from a distance, sitting on the lounge room floor with an unhappy look on his fluffy face. Deku followed your gaze to the small pup and then chuckled. Cat, don't look like that, he said. The pup snuffed through his nose and turned away. I think he knows what's going on and is a little jealous that you haven't included him in the wedding, you whispered to Deku. Really? he asked, looking at you with surprise. You nodded. What if we had him as the ring bearer on the day? We could tie a little pillow around his back or something, or hang the ring off his collar. I like that idea, Deku said with a smile. Should I ask him now? I think you should, he replied with a grin. Deku stepped away from you and you stayed in the doorway to watch what would happen. Hey, cat? Deku asked as he approached the fluff ball. Cat looked back over his fluffy little shoulder and gave Deku a glare. I was wondering, Deku mused as he got down on all fours on the ground, you know how Yin and I are getting married and all? The pup looked to you and then back to Deku and then let out a little throaty growl and Deku sweat dropped. It's okay, you're always going to be my number one. Cat deadpanned and you bit the inside of your cheek to stop from laughing. This dog really did understand what was being said. Well, anyway, would you like to be the ring bearer on the day? We need someone who's going to be an expert at carrying the ring, Deku said brightly, lying down on his front and eyeballing his pup. What do you say? Cat looked at him and then threw his nose in the air and then closed his eyes as he turned his head off to the side. Please, Cat, Deku asked softly. It would really mean the world to me if you were the ring bearer. Cat wig wiggled his tail a little and Deku brightened. Is that a yes? he asked hopefully. Cat let out a little growl and then wagged his tail a little more and Deku gasped with excitement. 
You're saying yes, aren't you? Oh, thank you, cat. I knew I could count on you to be plus ultra. He reached out and pulled the little fluff ball into his embrace on the floor and the pup growled to be let go after a few seconds. Deku let him go and the pup trot trotted off down the hall, back out the back door flap and disappeared as quickly as he had come. You chuckled as your man approached you and you hugged him again. I swear Cat knew, you said as you embraced Deku. I swear he came in just to get you to remember that he's here and now that you asked him to be in the wedding party he's left again. Well it did look that way didn't it? Deku mused. He's the funniest little ball of fluff. I hope he doesn't act too much like a diva on the day, he chuckled. Both you and Deku paused and looked at each other, then spoke at the same time. He probably will. You both stopped again and then laughed, having a good chuckle together. A few short weeks leading up to the wedding were wonderful yet stressful, and you were starting to get a little frayed around the edges by the end of the second week. There was only one week to go. Babe, you called out to Deku as you walked down the hall with a paper in hand and a pen tucked behind your ear. Your eyes were scanning the paper as you held it up in front of your face, peering intently at it. Yes, baby, Deku called back from the lounge room. I think this works, you said, still looking at the paper. Can I see? he asked. You passed him the paper that had names and lines and circles all over it, with the tables laid out for the reception. Deku looked it over and shook his head, then pointed to two names. These two can't be together. They don't get along. Well, can you do the seating plan then? You asked with frustration in your voice. Every time I rearrange people, you tell me that it's not going to work. Okay, he nodded and held his hand out for you to pass in the pen, which you did. And then you stood there with arms crossed, waiting for him to fix the table arrangements once and for all. He drew arrows and cross names out and scrunched his nose a little as he gave it one last look over, then nodded and handed it back to you. You took the paper and shook your head. You can't put her on this table, she won't know anyone. You pointed to an ex-work colleague of yours. Deku sighed and hung his head. Don't sigh at me like that. I'm the one that's been doing this stupid thing for the past week. Oh, I wasn't sighing at you, Deku said defensively, holding his hands up in front of himself. I'm sorry, we just don't seem to be seeing eye to eye on this. I'm getting really frustrated, you admitted, tears welling up along the lower lid of your eye voice quivering a little. Deku saw you struggling and stood up to give you a hug. He held you in his arms and you took a few deep breaths in to calm yourself and then hugged him back. I'm sorry, I'm just so over this. There's still so much need to be doing and I'm not. there's not enough time to do it all in, he said sadly. Uh, I know this is a bad time but the florist called and said they don't have any of the flowers in shop that you wanted and they can't get any in until after the wedding date and they asked if you could pick something else. You let out a devastated moan and burst into tears. Everything's going wrong, you wailed. We can't get the table seating right, no flowers, my dress fitting yesterday went terribly, and they need to adjust the bus size so the wedding dress will be ready two days before the wedding, which is cutting it really fine. And they only had bright orange wedding cars and the model we wanted. Venue now has imposed a curfew. We still need to organize the premarital counseling. I have an interview with you tomorrow for Hero Wise magazine and it's going to cut my hair and makeup trial short and... Shh, Deku hushed you gently, patting the back of your head gently as you kept your face smooshed into his chest. It's okay, it's okay. Let's sit down. I'll help you organize everything. You hiccoughed into him and nodded wiping your eyes as you pulled back from his shirt. What was the first one? He asked gently, sitting down and guiding you into his lap. You crawled onto his thick thighs and snuggled into him, then rested your head on his chest, bringing up the mental list of items that had gone wrong. Okay, first of all, flowers? I don't know what other ones there are. What's in season? You sniffed. Let's look, he said, pulling his phone from his pocket and typing in the flowers for the season. Now... Our theme colours are these. Let's find flowers that will complement that. He started scrolling through the pictures and you looked them over silently from his arms. What style was your wedding outfit? He asked. Let's see if someone has pictures of their flowers with the same style you're going for. That might help. You told him very ba vaguely what your outfit looked like and he typed in what a basic flower colour would look like with that wedding outfit. Up came a multitude of different colours and flower types and you pointed to a few pictures. Oh, I like the look of those flowers. 
they are he clicked the link and scrolled down mm, this type of flower I like those they look nice are they in season you asked yes he nodded and they do well in this weather too that's perfect you said with a smile sitting up a little okay cards he then asked let's look up different models of cars that we like and see if we can hire any for the wedding day for the next 45 minutes Deku sat with you and methodically went through each of your grievances and helped to resolve them as best he could and by the end of it your heart was feeling a lot lighter and you were getting excited about the wedding again I'm sorry I just got overwhelmed you apologized to him that's okay we're a team remember if you ever feel like it's getting too much just come to me and I'll help he said with an adorable smile you threw your arms around his middle and squeezed him grateful to have him with you the day before the wedding was madness and you and Deku took the day off together to run from one side of town to the other to make sure everything was set for the next day mostly everything was ready to go the last few items of your list things to complete were slowly ticked off and by 4 p.m. you and Deku had ticked off the very last thing and were ready to head home oh my god what a day you sighed pushing the front door to the house open tomorrow's the big day Deku said excitedly should we get takeaway tonight yeah I don't really feel like cooking you admitted we have to eat quickly though we have a practice run of the ceremony tonight at 8 p.m. we do oh we do he gasped I'll make the call now then the food should be here in a half hour which means that we'll have an early dinner but that might be the best then we can get something else to eat after practice if we're hungry but if we get a big meal now maybe it will hold us till tomorrow I don't think yes who you chuckled reaching up and pressing your finger against his lips it's fine that sounds good to me he grinned okay should we get our usual yes perfect he replied with a smile giving him a hug I love how you always have a solution for everything exactly a half hour later the uber eats driver dropped your food at the doorstep and Deku got it and brought it inside dinner's here he called to you you bounded out into the hall and skipped merrily down to the lounge room I'm all ready to go hair and makeup artist will be here tomorrow morning 6 30 a.m. and I'll be gone by 6 a.m. then Deku smiled Todoroki has offered for us to get ready at his place tomorrow that's very kind of him you said with a smile as you opened your dinner He's very considerate like that, Deku replied, opening his meal as well. You chatted as you ate, digging into the food and in no time you'd completely finished it. Ah, oh, that was delicious, you said. It wasn't too hot either so I could just slam it down. Now we can relax a little until the practice, Deku looked at his watch. It's just after 6pm. Did you want to watch a few episodes of that show we just started? You asked. The episodes are about 20 minutes long okay he said with a smile you felt content and relaxed as you snuggled into Deku's side and allowed your mind to switch off and enter into the show and once you'd finished a few episodes you both got up and got ready to leave have you got the run sheet you called to Deku as you pulled your shoes on right here he replied with a smile as he walked down to the door you gave him a kiss then off you went to practice the quaint little church that was built at the front of the vineyards was a hive of activity Todoroki and his wife Jem were there with Soshi, the little boy, and Bakugo had brought his little boy Chisuki along as well. Both kids were a little under two years of age and walking well. Hi Jem, you greeted Todoroki's wife. She was a sweetheart, and you two had a lot in common. Deku had always told you that sometimes, at a quick glance, you even looked like her. You took this as a huge compliment because she was a very pretty person, and you loved being in her presence. Hi Yin. Are you ready for tomorrow? She asked with a gentle smile. Uh, you hummed in an unsure manner. She smiled softly and reached a hand out to touch your arm. It will all go smoothly, she said. Don't worry, just enjoy yourself. Tomorrow, everyone looks out for you. So if anything goes wrong, it's no longer your problem and others will race to fix it for you. Thanks, Jim, you said with a grateful smile. She smiled. Mummy? Soshi's little voice called up to her as he tugged on her pants. Yes, honey? She looked down at him. Drink? He asked cutely, his round orange eyes gazing up at her as he flopped his head right back to be able to fit her all in the picture from the low angle that he was at. Sure, she said with a smile and pulled his drink bottle out from her bag of goodies. He took a few sips then handed it back to her and toddled off and you smiled. What's it like being a mum? You asked. 
It's lovely, but it can be tiring, she admitted with a soft giggle. Do you want to have children in the fu future? Yes, he smiled. I'd love to see Izuku as a father. You looked over to where he and Todoroki were deep discussion, in deep discussion and smiled to yourself. Good evening, everybody, the voice of the wedding officiator called as he walked into the church. You looked over at him and smiled. I'd better go, Jim. I'll be back, he said to her. Good luck, she called as he walked over to join Deku near the front podium of the church. The practice went well and everyone understood the proceedings and by 10pm you were about ready to pack up and go home to sleep. Your stomach had started to feel a little queasy and your face had felt a little hot but you just put it down to the adrenaline rush from pre-wedding day highs and you and Deku said a quick goodbye to everyone and then headed out to the waiting taxi. Soshi and Chisuki were so well behaved, you commented to Deku as you hopped into the Uber beside him. They fell asleep around 8.30pm, he chuckled. Both were sleeping with their heads on Jem's lap. Aww, you cooed, rubbing your tummy slightly. Is your tummy sore? Deku asked when he saw you holding it. It just feels a little weird and gurgly, you said. My head doesn't feel too good either, but I think I just need to rest and sleep. Yeah, I'm not feeling the greatest as well, Deku admitted. But yes, I think you might be right. We just need to rest. You nodded and rested your head on his shoulder. You both got home and prepared for bed, slipping between the sheets and cuddling up together. But you were starting to feel worse and worse, and so was Deku. I really don't feel good, you whispered to Deku as a sharp pain stabbed you in the stomach. Same, Deku groaned softly his brows feeling a little sweaty. Do we get food poisoning? You whispered to him. I don't know, but I need to use the bathroom, he said, quickly getting out of bed and running for the ensuite. You rolled over onto your other side and pulled your knees up to your chest. Suddenly, a wave of nausea washed over you and you clutched your hand to your mouth as you threw the covers back. This chapter is written in a way to evoke images of the absolute pandemonium of having food poisoning, where the body is evacuating both ends at the same time. So if you would prefer not to read, read such content, then please consider skipping this chapter altogether. But if you have a cast iron stomach, hang on, because it's a bit of a rough ride. Throwing yourself out of bed, you ran for the ensuite shortly after Deku had entered there and threw the door open, exposing your soon-to-be husband on the loo. Yin, he gasped. Sorry, I... You could have cared less at that point. Seeing him on the toilet was the least of your concerns as you ran for the shower and threw the screen back, throwing up in the well. Hearing you heaving set Deku off and he clutched his mouth as he heaved and retched into the palm of his hand. Unable to hold it back, he threw up all over the floor and you looked back when you heard his horrible noise. At seeing the mess on the floor, you dry reached again and threw up again, wailing as he did so. I'm sorry, he cried at you, still stuck on the porcelain throne. I feel so sick. After heaving up more of your stomach contents, you coughed and reached for the shower knob and turned them on, stripping your clothes off and getting in while stepping around your vomit as it washed down the drain. Was it something we ate? You groaned out to Deku. You heard him moving around outside the shower and looked over to see him off the toilet and cleaning up his mess, but then, while you watched, he immediately grabbed for the toilet bowl and threw up in it again. It was at that point you felt your lower stomach churning. Izu? You called with rising urgency. Izu, I think I'm gonna... It was at that point you lost control of your bowels. 45 minutes later, you and Deku had finally been able to leave the bathroom and you both stumbled back out into the bedroom and fell into the bed. We need some medicine, you whispered out to Deku. He nodded and picked himself up on shaky legs to walk to the kitchen to get some stomach medicine for the two of you. You cried softly as you lay there, completely wasted. It's our wedding day tomorrow and I feel horrible, you sobbed internally. This food poisoning has come at the worst time. Deku came back shortly with some stomach medicine and helped you take it, then took some for himself and put the bottle on the bedside table. We need to get to sleep, he said, helping you into bed and tucking you in. I'm sorry the night has ended like this. He hadn't noticed your crying from before, but he certainly heard you the next time around, as it was a lot harder to hold back your tears and you bawled loudly. It's okay, it's okay, he placated. We'll be by okay by tomorrow, I promise. Why? You wailed. 
I could have been the sick in all the other 20 something years of my life, but no, I had to be vomiting and pooing all over the place on the night before the wedding. Deku just hugged you, holding you as you cried it all out. You were so exhausted that you just cried yourself to sleep, and he stayed up and held you until your breathing had calmed down. Then he lay you down and tucked you in again. Poor Yin, he thought sadly. I hope it's all out of our system now, and it doesn't happen again tomorrow. That's not going to be good, running off to the bathroom every two seconds. Finally, he slept, setting an alarm a little earlier so that he could make some calls. The next morning you woke with a start when Deku wasn't beside you. Then you remembered what day it was and jumped out of bed. Amid wondering where everyone was and what time it was, you also realised you felt pretty good. I must have had a really good sleep, you thought. As you rounded the corner to the kitchen, you saw Deku standing there with a coffee in hand. Hey, what are you doing? you asked with confusion, looking at him chilling there. Then you looked at the clock on the wall. It's 10.30am! Immediately you flew into a panic. My makeup artist was supposed to be here at 7.30am and the bridesmaid should be here too. You need to be getting going. The wedding's due in two hours time. And Deku put the coffee mug down and walked over to you, gently taking you into his embrace. How are you feeling? He asked in a very caring tone as he looked down at you with those big green eyes. I feel fine, but the wedding... I rang around this morning, Deku said gently. My main concern was for your health and I want you to enjoy today, so I pushed everything back so that you could have a sleep in and feel refreshed. Don't worry, the makeup artists and hairdressers are due to arrive at midday. Are you hungry? I can order bre- No, I'll make us breakfast. You teared up while he was speaking. What did you do to deserve such a thoughtful, wonderful man? I love you, you blurted out, bursting into tears. I love you more, Yin. I want you to have the best day today, he said with a tender smile. You hugged him around the middle and the two of you just took a moment to enjoy each other's company on the morning of your wedding. Usually wedding mornings were chaos, but this was a beautiful start and you thanked him again and again for doing what he did so that you could slow down and enjoy such a special time together. At midday he left to go to Todoroki's house and your girls arrived along with the hair and makeup specialist and it was all systems go. You had a blast. Everyone was doting on you, running around, getting things for you and taking a ton of pictures. Thankfully, you were feeling 100% thanks to Deku slowing the morning down and you followed your girls out to the waiting wedding cars to head to the venue after you'd been decked out in your wedding attire. This is it, you said with excitement as you hopped into the wedding car along with your bridesmaids. As the weight of the situation started to sink in, you started to feel a little lightheaded and as the car started off down the road with the chatting girls giggling away in it, your nerves started to, started to get the better of you. I'm feeling a little dizzy, you said to the girl beside you, and she immediately called for the aircon to be turned on. Can we have some air back here? She called out. Yin, you look pale. Do you need some water? Another of your bridesmaids asked. You nodded, touching your fingertips to your forehead to try and alleviate some of the nauseating throb that was there. Water, your bridesmaid called out to the driver of the car. We need water back here. Do you have water? Does anyone have water? A gaggle of chattering followed as each girl tried to brainstorm other ideas on how to relieve the nausea without water, seeing as no one in the car had any water on them. The best they could come up with was to fan you rapidly. And so that's how you arrived at the quaint church in the vineyard, being fanned from all directions with one of your girls chanting words of encouragement to you. Once out of the car, you started to feel much better, and you took a few deep breaths in while your girls flitted around you, fixing up your outfit and making sure it was on straight while telling you how beautiful you looked. You smiled weakly at, at the two of them, then closed your eyes to steal yourself before heading up to the stairs to the doors of the church. Everyone got into position, and the ushers on the door gave you a nod before opening the door for the bridesmaids to enter. Your heart was pounding as you watched your bridesmaids walk the aisle before you the thumping in your chest making your knees weak. With a final smile to the door guards, you started off down the aisle yourself, taking shaky steps after shaky step towards your beautiful number one hero husband, who was standing proudly at the front with his two groomsmen and their little boys standing beside him. As you got closer, you could see tears rolling down his cheeks and you teared up as well. Don't cry, don't cry, you wailed to yourself. You got to the front and he reached out to take your hand, helping you up the steps and standing with you in front of the celebrant. Greetings all, the celebrant welcomed the guests. 
We are gathered here today for the union of Yin Lin and Izuku Midoriya, also known as the number one hero, Deku. There was a polite clap that rose up through the crowd, and he smiled at your man and squeezed his hand. His eyes were shining with love, and he wiped another tear from his eyes. He looked at you. The ceremony started, and the celebrant did a wonderful job, keeping the proceedings short and on track as he slowly talked through everything. As the ceremony came to an end, the celebrant called for the rings. Would the ring bearer please come forward so we can do the exchange of vows and rings, he asked. A small woof drew the attention of the crowd as Cat, the Pomeranian, trotted down the centre of the aisle with the rings tied to a pillow that was positioned on his back. He glared at every single person as he passed them, making his way to the front. Cameras clicked and giggles followed in his wake as he neared the front of the church. Cat doggy! Soshi cried with excitement when he saw his favourite ball of fluff. Cat, sit! Chisuki called loudly from his father's arms and the little ball of fluff, surprisingly, obeyed immediately, sitting his ass down in the middle of the aisle. Chuckles and giggles rippled through the crowd and Deku hissed at his pup. Cat, please, please stand up and come here, he called softly with a lot of pleading in his voice. Please, cat, please! The little pup glared at his owner while Chisuki giggled cheekily from Bakugo's arms. Oi, little runt! Bakugo chuckled deviously, that smirking scowl on his face showing just how pleased he was with his cheeky son's antics. Finally, after much coaxing and outlandish promises from Deku, Cat got back up and walked slowly to the foot of the steps that led up onto the church rostrum so that Deku could reach out for the rings and take them off the pillow. Cat, here! Chisuki demanded once the rings had been removed, and the ball of angry fluff walked over and sat down beside Bakugo's leg looking up at his pint-sized commander. Deku stood up with the rings and took your one, holding it at the tip of your ring finger as the celebrant quoted the lines. I, Izuku, Deku repeated after the celebrant, take you, Yin, to be my lawfully wedded wife. He gave you a watery-eyed, wobbly smile as he slid the wedding ring onto your finger, and you smiled back at him, tears pricking the corners of your eyes. And I, Yin... He repeated after the celebrant, Take you, Izuku, to be my lawfully wedded husband. You took his finger and placed the ring at the tip and then slid it on, pushing it all the way down to the base of his finger. I now pronounce you husband and wife, the celebrant announced to the crowd. You may now kiss the bride. Deku's eyes flowed with happy tears as he leaned in, his nervous lips crashing into yours and making you bend backwards as he leaned over you for the kiss while supporting your lower back. There was a rally of cheers and clapping from the crowd and he pulled back as you straightened. Then you both grinned at everyone there and held hands, elated that the hard part of the day was now done. I would like to present to the witnesses of this room, Mr. and Mrs. Izuku and Yin Midoriya, the celebrant said in an overjoyed voice, a second round of cheers going up. The ending music started and you and Deku held hands as you walked off the platform and down the aisle with the groomsmen and bridesmaids in pairs trailing behind you both. We're married, you squealed to him with excitement as you got to the church doors. You look so beautiful, Yin, he breathed, giving you an over, another lo loving look with his emerald eyes, his face almost glowing with love. Many happy returns, Todoroki's deep voice behind you both brought you out of your happy little place and you and Deku turned to thank him. Oh, thank you very much, Todoroki, Deku said with a sheepish smile to his groomsman. He'd completely forgotten that he was there, to be honest. You stood at the entrance of the church and the guests filed out in groups to give you both hugs and share their enthusiasm for the union and you talked and took photos with everyone there until the time came for you and the bridal party to go and have photos in the vineyard. With a lot of excited chatter your bridesmaids ushered their male partners along calling ahead to you to check and make sure you were okay. I'm fine, I'm fine, you called back with a smile when one of your girls asked if you needed water. You looked back ahead and then looked at Deku, who was captivated by you. He wasn't even looking where he was going. He was just gazing lovingly at you the whole time and you smiled bashfully. Stop it, you giggled softly, nudging his arm with your shoulder as he walked. You're just so beautiful, Yin. I can't help but stare at you, he replied with a soft smile, his beautiful large eyes shining with love. I'm so happy you're mine. Of course, Mr. Midoriya. He replied with a playful smile. And to you, Mrs. Mid Midori, his face flushed pink 
and he grabbed for a curly lock of his fringe and tugged on it, pulling it down to his eyes as he became flustered over calling you Mrs. Midoriya. We're married now, you giggled. You're going to have to practice saying my legally wedded name. He gave you a wobbly smile. It's just so... It's just so... Okay, everyone, the photographer called to the small group that approached him. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Midoriya have given me a list of pictures that they want from today, so let's get to it so we can get them all taken before the reception. As he started detailing the first picture, your bridesmaids ran around you, fixing up your hair and makeup and reapplying your lipstick so that you'd look picture perfect. Okay, does everyone understand? The photographer asked. Everyone nodded and got into position around you and Deku, looking at you with pretend shocked looks on their faces while the photographer called for you and your husband to kiss. Ooh, your girls cooed from behind you, making you giggle. Tongue, where's a tongue action? One called. Stop, you laughed, pulling back from the kiss. One more kiss, the photographer called, setting up again for the next picture. Kiss me like you mean it, you whispered to Deku, just before your lips touched his, and he gripped you and bent you backwards a bit as you both really went for a deep kiss, tongue kissing in front of your bridal party and the photographer. That looked real, Todoroki commented from behind Deku. He'd been watching very intently. Ah, Deku replied with a flustered look on his face as he pulled back. It's just that the photographer wanted it to look like it was real, so... Perfect, the photographer called. Now, girls, come with me for a few pictures, then I'll take photos of the boys. Deku let you go with your bridesmaids, watching you as you walked away, looking radiant and gorgeous. She is beautiful, Midoriya, Todoroki commented to the newly wedded male, who was watching you the whole time. She is, isn't she? Deku replied with a dreamy sigh, still mesmerised by you. When's the reception? Bakugo growled with his iconic scowl. It'll be soon, Kachan, Deku replied with a sweat-dropped smile as his eyes flicked from you to the grumpy male. They'd better have curry there. I made sure they had it on the menu, Deku replied the blonde groomsman quickly. Don't pander to my husband's demands, the voice of Mrs. Bakugo said as she walked up to the boys overhearing the conversation. Oh, Mrs. Bakugo, Deku greeted politely. It's fine. I know how much Kachan likes curry. This isn't his wedding though, she chuckled. It's yours. Many congratulations, by the way. Oh, thank you, Deku said with a polite bow. I'm so honoured to have Yin by my side forever. She's a very lovely person. You've done well, Mrs. Bakugo added. Aside from congratulating you, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to take Kat back to our place so he can settle in. Chi is going to have so much fun playing with him while you're on your honeymoon. Thank you for looking to, offering to look after him. He loves Chisuki, Deku replied, remembering the mini Bakugo commanding his dog during the service. Chi needs a nap too, Mrs. Bakugo added to her husband. He's been a right pain in the ass, so hopefully he'll nap in the car going home and back. I'll be back for the reception, and hopefully he'll be happily awake by then. Mm. Bakugo grunted, pulling his wife into his arms and kissing her roughly on the lips. Go. And come back soon. Yeah, I won't be long. Call me if anything happens, Bakugo added gruffly. She nodded again and headed back to the building. Bakugo watched her leave with a softer look in his eye. You love her very much, Kachan, Deku said gently when he saw how Bakugo changed when his wife was around. Yeah? What of it? Bakugo grunted. Nothing. I, I just think she's very nice. Bakugo made a <sniffs> sound and looked away, allowing himself to smile at the fact that he had the most gorgeous wife in the place. While Mrs. Bakugo was driving to her house and back, and Jen was getting Soshi to sleep in the stroller, the rest of the photos were taken, and then you, Deku and the bridal party headed to the building on site to start the reception. The guests were all inside already and stood when the wedding party was announced on entrance, each pair waving as they were called in and then walking through the tables that were set up and sitting at the long wedding table at the front of the hall. Finally it was your and Deku's turn to enter and you and he grinned from ear to ear as he walked in, waving to everyone. Making your way to the table, he pulled your chair out and helped you sit, then sat down in the chair beside you. The day was almost done and you took a second to really take in the atmosphere of the room. All the guests were there. You knew them all by name. You'd gone over that damn list so many times, rearranging people and making minute adjustments so that everyone would be happy and enjoy the evening. 
Your eyes roamed the middle table and you spotted somewhere someone halfway along that you didn't recognise at all. Who was in that spot? You thought, racking your brain to try and remember. That's the mutuals table, isn't it? If they're a mutual friend of Izaku's and mine, then why don't I recognise them? Who was supposed to be there? The two MCs got up to start the reception, and while they talked you sat there staring at this foreign person on the middle table. Deku sensed something was wrong and looked at you. His gaze followed yours, and then he looked back at you and reached for your hand under the table to squeeze it. You looked at him. What's wrong? He asked quietly. I don't recognise the person sitting next to her on the table, you said to him as you were in a whisper. He looked back up at the guy, then back to you. Is he her plus one? He asked, referring to the girl that the man was sitting next to. No, you shook your head. She didn't have a plus one. He looked back up, eyeing the guy. Then he saw a flash of something under the table and froze. Go, he said quickly to you. Go to the bathrooms. Hearing the urgency in his voice, you quickly got up and left the room, much to the confusion of the other guests, bridesmaids and MC, who was midway through his speech. Deku turned to Bakugo, who was beside him, and gave him a look. Which one? Bakugo suddenly asked, clicking into hero mode. Todoroki also caught wind of something being afoot and stood up. Middle table, fifth one down on the right, Deku said in a serious voice as he stood up alongside Bakugo and Todoroki. By now it had become obvious that something was happening, and the MC stopped talking and looked at the three serious heroes who were eyeing someone on the middle table. The person of interest suddenly realised that they'd been discovered and hung their head, slipping something large into their pocket. Deku and Bakugo started heading around the wedding table one way, while Todoroki headed the other, and the foreign guest suddenly jumped up and ran, his chair falling over backwards and hitting the ground with a bang as he tore for the doors of the reception building. Todoroki was one step ahead of him and quickly stomped out a river of ice that reached the door before the intruder did and barricaded it, forcing the man to turn and run along the wall towards the kitchen doors. Deku and Bakugo were almost there, but just missed the guy as he flew through the swinging doors and into the busy kitchen with three heroes on his tail. Get back here, you damn extra! Do you want to die today? Bakugo hollered at the guy, who was hell-bent on getting away. Yells and screams from people in the kitchen created a crazed atmosphere as all four men ran for the back door and outside. The second the runaway male and the three heroes had gotten outside, Bakugo used his quirk to propel himself through the air and slam into the back of the SKP, knocking him onto his face in a split second. The minute he was down, Todoroki jumped on his legs and Deku grabbed for the item in the guy's pocket. What is this? Deku snapped, uncharacteristically angry as he yanked a camera from the guy's pocket. Speak up! I'm sorry, the guy wheezed, grunting with pain as Bakugo laid his knee into the man's spine. I'm being paid! It wasn't my idea! Who paid you? Deku demanded. Who are you working for? I can't say, the guy wheezed. You will say, Todoroki said in a low commanding voice as he held a flamed hand over the side of the guy's face and let his quirk activate a little. Okay, okay, the guy conceded fearfully. I'm a journalist with sneak peek. Should have known, Deku said with a slight scowl. And you were taking pictures of our private wedding. You know we have protection for this, yes? You've broken the law by sneaking in to get pictures. I'm sorry, the guy said. You're not sorry. I'll make sure you're sorry, though, huh? I'll teach you to ruin Deku's wedding, Bakugo snapped, his threat being backed up by the sound of crackling explosions in his palm. Deku turned the camera on and flicked through the pictures. This journalist had been there from the very beginning of the wedding, and Deku felt angry at himself for not noticing sooner. I'm taking your camera for legal purposes, he said in a dark voice. No, please, that's an expensive camera, the guy cried. Well, that will teach you for taking sneak pictures of a private occasion, Todoroki said, still helping to pin the guy down. As Deku flicked through the images, he noticed some of the shots of you were from high or low angles, trying to get a shot of your cleavage so that whoever ended up with these pictures could write a fake story about you claiming that your dress was too low cut and untasteful or whatever they wanted to say to try and slander your image. You'll be hearing from my lawyer, Deku said darkly to the guy. Kick him out, Bakugo and Todoroki. The two handsome groomsmen grabbed the guy by the shirt and got off him to hoist him up and march him to the gates while Deku checked the camera over for the guy's ID. Everything was there and he put the camera in his pocket and turned back to the building. 
Deku, what happened? Who was that guy? The bridesmaids asked as they ran out to greet him after checking to see if the coast was clear. Just a paparazzi, Deku said with a forced smile. I'm very sorry for alarming you all, he added as he bowed to them. It's fine, it's fine. Is Yin safe to come out now? She's a little worried. Oh, yes. Please bring her out. Tell her it's safe now. The girls nodded and Deku entered the reception from the kitchen, apologising to the kitchen staff as he made his way back through. Is everything okay? The MC asked as Deku entered. Yes, I'm very sorry. That person was an uninvited guest, so we needed to remove him, Deku said with another bow. Oh, I see. Good thing you spotted him, the MC said. I'll tell everyone it's okay. We were all a little worried for a second there. Ah, uh, I'm so sorry, Deku said again, bowing multiple times. There won't be any more interruptions, I promise. The MC nodded and headed back to the microphone to calm everybody down, and Deku walked back to the wedding table. Just then you walked out with a worried expression on your face. Is he gone? you asked. Yes, Deku replied. He was a journalist, sent here to get exclusive pictures, but I have his camera, and Bakugo and Todoroki are taking care of him. Kicking him out? you asked. Deku nodded. Yes, he's gone. Everyone settled down again, but Deku still seemed to have something on his mind, and you worried that that experience had ruined the rest of the night for him. Well, it had in a way. He was rattled by the fact that he had relaxed so much that he didn't even notice a foreigner in the mix. How could I be so stupid as to not keep an eye out? I should have known some magazine would send a spy in. What if I hadn't caught him? Those pictures would have been all over the internet and front covers by tomorrow, ruining our special day together. What if they'd written something horrible about Yin and she saw it? He looked at you sadly. I failed. I failed to make this a safe, happy day. You caught his sad look and your face fell. Izuku? You asked him. He snapped out of in his internal monologue and blinked, realising that he was still frowning, so quickly smiled to cover his sadness. What's wrong? You asked him. Why are you sad? N no, it's nothing, he replied, waving his hands. It's fine. You huffed. You knew he was keeping something from you. The speeches continued and everyone was having a good time, except Deku, who kept making a frustrated or sad face, and you kept checking in on him to bring him back out of his little world. By the time the end of reception came, you were exhausted. It had been a big day, and having Deku acting a little unhappy didn't help your mental health. The minute that you'd said goodbye to everyone and had hopped into the car to go to the airport, you turned to your man. Izu, you said sternly. What is the matter? You grabbed his cute, freckled cheeks and forced him to look at you, giving him a very hard look. His eyes met yours and his face softened, then tears brimmed along his lower lid. Baby? You asked softly when you saw that he had cracked. I'm so sorry, he whispered, your gut twisting when you saw the look on his face. Had he been unfaithful? Did he want to separate? Why was he making that face? Why are you sorry? You asked sadly. Did I do something wrong? Oh, no, 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 it's not you, he replied quickly, shaking his head in your hands. It's me. I failed to make today a safe and happy day for you. I didn't even notice the photographer there. What would have happened if he got away with the pictures? He hung his head with despair. Izu, you hummed sympathetically, leaning in to kiss his lips gently. No one got hurt, except maybe the guy himself, but that's fine. No, the magazines can sometimes write mean things, and I didn't want them to get any pictures of you because they'll make up a story that isn't true, or they'll say something about how you look, or... Izu, baby, you cooed. We've been together for such a long time. Do you not think that I've grown used to what the papers say about me, or us? He let his stiff shoulders relax a little, and that mildly tortured expression vanished from his face. Today was perfect, he kissed his lips again gently. Thank you for protecting me like that. He let a soft smile show. Anything for you, my wife? Your heart fluttered, and you grinned from ear to ear. I love you calling me wife. He reached out and hugged you pulling you into his arms as the taxi sped along to the hotel beside the airport, ready for your departure to your honeymoon destination tomorrow. You got plenty of stares and congratulations from strangers as you arrived in the lobby of the hotel at your in your wedding outfit. Did you get married today? People gasped with excitement. Congratulations! You and Deku thanked your fans and headed to the reception desk to sign in. The lady took you to your room and you entered, breathing a sigh of relief that the day was done. 
I'm just going to take a shower, you said to Deku. I can't wait to get out of this. You pointed to your outfit and gave him a sweat-dropped smile. I mean, it's lovely, but it's very fitted. You look beautiful, he said with a soft, loving look. You look really good too, he said to him, the two of you falling silent as you simultaneously remembered that tonight was the wedding night. You knew what was going to happen and your core started to heat up. I'll be quick, he said to him, and he nodded with a blush and started unbuttoning his shirt, his muscular chest showing through the small break in the buttons. Your eyes ghosted his chest and then you turned to the bathroom. It's so cute that he still gets flustered about the thought of us getting intimate, even when we've done it so many times. You wrestled with your outfit, finally getting it off and then getting to work, pulling the pins from your hair and detangling your hairspray laden locks as best you could. I guess I'll just try and wash the makeup off my face in the shower as best I can, you thought as you turned the shower on. Once it was a good temperature, you hopped in, a sweet moan escaping your lips as the hot water hit your stiff shoulders. Ah, oh, it's been such a full on day, you thought, as you tipped your head back and ran the water through your hair. I can't wait for some downtime. You washed your hair with the complimentary shampoo and conditioner and tried to clean the makeup off your face with a bit of soap, but you could tell it wasn't getting much off as the mascara was just smearing all over your palms. Finishing off, you got out and used the towel to rub a clear circle in the misted mirror. Oh heck, you gasped when you saw your face in the mirror. It was absolutely covered in the black mascara and a hint of red from the lipstick. How the hell am I supposed to get this off? You got more soap and lathered it onto your face, rubbing firmly around your eyes and lips to rid yourself of the mess, but it was only doing the absolute bare minimum to clean the makeup off. Why won't this come off? You kept scrubbing, squealing with pain whenever you accidentally got soap in your eye, before going at it again with the soap around your eyes. You didn't think it was taking you that long to get the makeup off, but it had already been an hour and your face and eyes were burning from the excessive soap usage and the whites of your eyes were red as all get out. Giving it one last scrub and rinse, you looked up into the mirror and smiled, feeling the skin around your mouth burn a little from being so dried out. Okay, well, that'll do for now, but now I need to moisturize desperately. You bent down to look under the bottom cupboard and found a small bottle of moisturizer and pulled it out and used it liberally on your face. Ah, oh, thank you, finally I'm done. Dropping your towel to the floor there, you walked out of the bathroom and into the main bedroom with a smirk, but then smiled and shook your head when you saw the sight before you. Deku was fast asleep, naked, on the bed. I took so long he fell asleep. You chuckled to yourself and walked over and climbed into bed with him. It's kind of good though because I'm really tired, you thought as you snuggled into his side. Instantly, you were out to it. You were mid-dream dreaming about a cucumber that had come to life and was terrorising the neighbourhood when you heard a strange beeping coming from the cucumber. Can someone stop it from beeping? You screamed in your dream. Izuku? Izu? Please stop it from beeping? It was then that you started to cross the barrier from dreamland back into reality and you stirred, correctly placing the beeping sound in reality and noticing that it was coming from an alarm clock to wake you up. Drowsily you stirred and opened your eyes, trying to place yourself in this strange room. Where am I? Your head swiped left and right as you sat up, wondering where you were. As you sat, Deku stirred and you looked down at his naked body. Why are we naked in a wit? Oh, honeymoon, you thought remembering where you were and grinning when you remembered what was in store for that day. Morning, baby, you said groggily to your still rousing husband. He popped an eye open and gave you a sleepy smile. Hi, baby, he rasped in his sexy morning voice. You smiled again, then looked around for his phone that was still beeping away, telling you to get up. Crawling off the bed, you turned Deku's alarm off and turned to the bed again. But then there was a knock at the door and your head whipped towards it. Who is that? You whispered to Deku, grabbing for the complimentary robe on the back door nearby. Breakfast order! A call came from the other side of the hotel door. Did you order breakfast? You whispered to Deku as you walked towards the door and he quickly grabbed for a robe for himself. Ah, uh, yeah, last night when you were in the shower. He yanked the robe on and covered everything up. You waited until he was ready, then opened the door. Good morning, Mrs. Midoriya, the waiter said with a smile. I have your and Mr. Deku's breakfast here. Oh, thank you. Please come in, you said sheepishly. He smiled and pushed the cart into the room and nodded politely at Deku. 
Many congratulations for your wedding yesterday, he said brightly to your lightly blushing husband. Oh, thank you, Deku said softly. I'm a big fan, the guy said as he laid your breakfast dishes out on the side table. Thank you for your support, Deku said with a bow. It's my pleasure, he replied. Please do enjoy breakfast and have a lovely honeymoon. Thank you, you both said to him as he looked at the two of you before leaving. As soon as he had left, you looked at Deku. You want to continue what we were going to do from last night? But before you could do anything, another alarm went off and you looked at his phone with annoyance. Oh, he yelped. That's the alarm to say we have to leave for our flight. <gasps> you gasped, letting him go and running to your bag. I need to get ready. It was a mad ten minutes as you both dressed hurriedly, then threw some food down and ran for the door. Wait, wait, I need to check my... <laughs> you looked up into the mirror by the door and screamed. Somehow, there had still remained some eyeliner from last night and it had smeared under your eyelids, making it look like you had bags under your eyes and you nearly died on the spot. I can't go out like this, you wailed. We don't have time, babe, he cried. Quick, glasses, put on some glasses. Unzipping his bag, he very quickly sifted through the contents until he found a pair of his sunglasses and handed them to you. Okay, let's go. And with that, you raced out of the room, making your way to the airport next door, to on your way to New York for the connecting flight to the Todoroki's private island. Just before we start, there is another adult scene in this chapter, but it's an annoying one where it's kind of interwoven with dialogue and other things. I've done my best to kind of chop out the uh, more graphic sections and tie it all in together. There are a few chapters like this. So just bear with me, there are a few spots that I've just blanked out as I usually do, just to keep it PG, uh, but it should flow. You both made it to the departure lounge on time and sat down to wait to be called forward. Naturally, you and your hero husband had been given first class seats for the trip and you couldn't wait to see what first class looked like. Would Mr and Mrs Midoriya please make their way to the departure lounge gate for boarding, the announcement said over the loudspeaker. You grinned at Deku and stood up beside him, walking to the boarding gates arm in arm with him. The air hostesses took your tickets and scanned them, then guided you down the corridor plank and onto the plane, where more hostesses and hosts greeted you and showed you to your seats. I do hope you enjoy your flight with us. The male host said as he packed your flight luggage in the hold above the seats. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to call me. Thank you, you and Deku said before sitting down and putting your belts on. I'm so excited, you squealed, looking around at everything, your eyes settling on the large TV that was mounted on the wall in front of you. Look, I can even stretch my legs out and not touch the wall. You demonstrated the movement and Deku grinned. So much room. He added as well, sticking his feet out and still being able to stretch without touching anything. I could almost do a dance in here and still have extra floor space, you chuckled, swinging your legs around. Suddenly Deku's mind grabbed the snapshot image from this morning of you on top of him, panting and moaning as you bounced up and down and he blushed and looked away. You didn't notice and kept looking around happily. Ugh. I need to wash my face once we're up in the air. I'm still hiding behind these glasses. You looked at Deku and tapped them. He was still looking away, and you called for his attention so that you could show him. When he looked at you, he had a funny look on his face, and you tilted your head curiously at him. What? You asked with a small chuckle. Why are you making that face? What face? He asked innocently. That. You poked his nose gently with the tip of your finger, and he gave you a wobbly smile. Oh, it's nothing. Tell me. Uh, I was just thinking about this morning, he added shyly. Isu, you gasped with fake horror. You're not so innocent now, huh? He blushed again and hung his head with shame. I'm just joking, Isu. I think it's very cute. He looked at you bashfully from the corner of his eye. When we're up in the air, let's do it, you said deviously. He nodded still bashful, and you settled back as the head hostess came over the loudspeaker to announce that the plane would soon be taking off. You grinned and slyly reached into Deku's lap. He flinched a little and dug his fingertips into the armrest, but didn't say anything, and you quickly pulled your hand back when the host walked past into the first class section to do a flight safety and emergency landing drill. 
With the drill complete, they prepared for takeoff and the plane made its way into the, to the airstrip and you're up and away on your way to New York. For the first 10 minutes of the flight, the air hostesses were in and out, checking on you and having a look o you look over the flight menu for food. So once you've chosen your meals, they left you to sit in peace. With another quick swipe of your palm over Deku's crotch, you undid your belt and stood up, walking to your own private bathroom. I'm just going to clean my face, you said to Deku with a smirk, pulling your glasses down so you could wink at him over the top of them. He gave you a small smile and watched you go before adjusting himself. Like the good boy he was, he gave you a five minute head start, then, after glancing around, got up and walked to the bathroom door and let himself in. You were already waiting for him, and you already had your pants and pants and pants. Things were well underway between the two of you when there was a knock at the bathroom door and the announcement of food had arrived. Coming! You called with fright. Deku quickly pulled out, packed himself away, and you pulled your pants up, then quickly finished your face off before leaving the bathroom with him. I, I can't believe we're married and I haven't... we haven't... Deku said softly to you when you sat back down in your seats to eat your food. We have our whole lives ahead, you giggled to him, leaning over to kiss his lips. It's okay. Once we get to the island, we have two weeks of very uninterrupted time together. You grinned deviously at him, and he gave you a smile that said, yes, please. Then you both dug into the food in front of you. Just before we start, there is another adult scene in this chapter, but it's an annoying one where it's kind of interwoven with dialogue and other things. I've done my best to kind of chop out the uh, more graphic sections and tie it all in together. There are a few chapters like this, so just bear with me. There are a few spots that I've just blanked out as I usually do just to keep it PG, uh, but it should flow. A few times during the flight, you both tried to resume things in the bathroom, but you kept getting interrupted, and in the end just resigned to the fact that you'd have to wait until you at least got to the island before trying again. Finally, the plane landed in New York and you got off, making your way to the smaller departure gate that would take you to the private plane that would then carry you off to the island. As you both approached the gate, the warden approached you. Mr. and Mrs. Midoriya, he greeted politely, but with a concerned look on his face. I am so very sorry, but there is inclement weather surrounding the island at the, this point in time, and flying there in these conditions is most inadvisable. Oh, I see, he said. How long do you expect the weather to be bad for? At this stage, it's hard to say. There appear to be a lot of cloud coverage and very strong winds. Oh, he looked at Deku. What do you suggest then? He then asked the warden. I have already seen to it that the penthouse suite be reserved for you and your beautiful wife at the plaza in town, the warden said. I do hope this is sufficient for an overstay. Oh, wow, you gasped. Yes, that's amazing. Thank you so much. We are hoping it will just be a day's wait, then we'll be on our way, the warden continued. Well, that's no problem, he said with a polite bow. It's just nice to be on holidays. Thank you again for your understanding, he said with relief. If there's any more I can do for you both, then please do not hesitate to ask. Oh, you've done more than enough, Deku said happily. Thank you for organising a place for us to stay in the meantime. You are most welcome, he replied. Please, let me show you to the limousine. He took you out of the side door and around to a private parking area for celebrities, where a black limousine was waiting for you both. Please allow the Todoroki's personal driver to take you to your hotel, he said with a bow as he opened the back door for you and Deku to get in. You hopped in while the baggage handler loaded the things in the boot, and once comfortably seated in the in-car phone rang, and Deku answered it hesitantly. Hello? Deku here? Midoriya. Todoroki's smooth voice greeted from the other end of the line. I am grateful I was able to contact you. Shoto! Deku said with surprise. How did you know where we were? I was notified about the bad weather surrounding the island and have been trying to contact you so I could let you know of the changes to the original plans, but it appears everything's been arranged without my added input. Thank you so much for trying to contact us, Deku said with a smile. And yes, everything's been arranged. We're heading to the plaza now. Thank you, Shoto, you called from beside Deku. It's my pleasure, Miss Midoriya. I do hope this hasn't ruined your honeymoon. Not at all, you said with a smile as you squeezed Deku's hand and smiled at him. 
I'll be going now. Call me if you need anything, Todoroki said before hanging up. Looks like we get to spend a little more time in a swanky hotel, he grinned at Deku. I wonder if they've got a spa. They probably will. He smiled back at you as the limo pulled away and headed for the hotel. The plaza was as amazing as you thought it was going to be, and you were greeted politely and taken up to the penthouse suite at the top of the plaza. Do enjoy your stay with us, the boy called as Deku handed him his tip. Thank you, we will, Deku said with a small bow as the boy left. Look at this place, he said in awe. It's massive. It was an open plan suite with large glass doors that opened out onto a balcony that housed a decent sized pool on it, and you walked out to get a better look. The view was breathtaking too, and you stood there admiring it while Deku watched you from inside. As you stood out there you heard voices below, and you looked down onto the next level that also had a pool. Put the plants over there, the voice bellowed, said. I don't want them obscuring the view. Yeah, okay, another voice replied. This party's going to be a banger, first said. So many A-listers coming tonight. Oh, that's cool, the other voice called. What time does it start? 11pm, the first replied. Sweet. Oh, sounds like there's going to be a party on the level below tonight, you said to Deku as you walked back inside. Kind of good, though. They won't be able to hear my moaning if they're playing loud music. Deku blushed and reached his arms to cover his face, covering his eyes while a small smirk pulled at his lips. Yeah, he mumbled. You and Deku decided to have a shower and then hop into the spa, so they stripped everything off and got into the shower together. Things just happened naturally, and you hadn't really planned on doing that. It was night when you woke next, and your stomach growled when you woke up. Isu, you whispered into his ear as you kissed under it. Wake up, I need some food. He stirred and rolled over to snuggle into you. What time is it? He mumbled into your neck. I don't know, it's dark though. He stirred and opened his eyes and looked around at the darkened room. Should we get room service? He mumbled. Yeah, let me find the menu, you said, getting out of bed. Deku rolled onto his back and stretched. From where you were, looking over the menu, you spied him and ran back over to jump on top. After playfully wrestling with Deku, you went over the menu again and then rang for room service and put the order through and went to have a rinse in the shower while Deku put some clothes on. It's going to be a loud party tonight, he said with a sweat dropped look when you came out of the bathroom. You were about to ask why but the thump, thump, thump of the music downstairs answered the question for you and you gave him a sympathetic look. It's okay, we can watch a movie or something and put the volume up to cover the sound. It's a good thing we don't want to sleep any anytime soon. He nodded. Just then there was a knock at the door and you quickly turned and walked back to the bathroom to get a robe while Deku walked to the door to accept the food that had arrived. With some very polite bows the food was brought into the room and the wait staff was paid his tip and then left for you two to be able to enjoy your meals in peace and not so quiet. Putting on the TV you and Deku settled down in the bed together to chill and eat. The hours ticked by and at around 3am the party was starting to ease up a little. Deku's lips had found yours by then, and the TV had been well and truly forgotten. And after some more intimate time together, you both noticed that the party noises downstairs were getting less and less. Oh, I'm so short, you sighed, getting out of bed to remove the plates from the end of it. Let's go to sleep. Deku nodded, laying there completely wasted. You smirked and put the plates in the sink, then walked back to the bed and crawled over him. Did I tire you out? You cooed in a teasing voice. He nodded sleepily. So much love making, he whisper mumbled. You giggled and kissed his temple, then flopped down next to him and snuggled into his side. In a matter of seconds, you were both out cold until a shrill cry broke the silence and you woke quickly. Was that a scream? You thought as you sat there in the bed, looking at the balcony door that was open. The light from the city still sifted through the sheer curtains that were slowly swirling back and forth in the light breeze. All was silent again, so you lay back down and slowly drifted off to sleep. It was quite early the next morning that there was a sharp knock on the hotel door and you sat up quickly, rubbing your eyes. Who is it? You called out in a tired voice. Oh, I do apologise, the voice called back, but I desperately need some help of hero Deku. At hearing his name, Deku sat up and rubbed his eyes. Yes, he called out. Sir, ah... Uh, 
Are you able to come to the door? The voice asked. Please. Deku looked at you and then got out of bed and put a robe on and you did the same. Who is it? You whispered to Deku, who shook his head at you. I don't know, he replied curiously. He walked to the door and opened it to see a well-dressed older gentleman standing there who looked very concerned. Hello, sir, Deku said with a bow. What can I do for you? May I come in? The man asked, glancing around the hall. This is an urgent and private matter. Deku nodded and stepped back to allow the man to enter. Firstly, congratulations on your wedding, he said to you and Deku. You are a very well suited couple and I wish you a long and happy marriage. Thank you, sir, Deku said with a smile. May I offer you a glass of water? Oh, no, thank you kindly, the man said, sitting down at the small table there. Deku sat down opposite the man and waited expectantly while you stood behind your husband with your hands on his shoulders. I, I am not sure if you heard the party downstairs last night, the man stated, started. Oh, excuse me, I must introduce myself. My name is Katara. I manage this hotel. Oh, Deku said with another bow. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Katara nodded. I wish it was a meeting under more pleasant circumstances, but there's been a death last night at the party below. Oh, you gasped with surprise. I'm very sorry to hear that, Deku said professionally. It is most unfortunate, and I'd very much like the help of a hero to figure out what happened, he said. The press would have a field day if they heard of this, so I want the matters resolved as quickly as possible. I understand, sir, Deku said. I will need a list of names of everybody who attended the party last night, as well as the name of the person who deceased. Um, I'm sorry, you said softly cutting into the conversation gently but I did hear a scream last night you did the manager asked eagerly what time was that please uh well you thought Izuku I mean Deku and I went to sleep around 3 a.m and it was after we fell asleep I'm not sure how much time lapsed but it was probably around 4 30 a.m I think I'd been asleep for an hour and a bit the doctor on scene placed her death around 5 a.m., so that would make sense, the manager nodded. Did you hear anything else? Uh, no, unfortunately, all was silent after that, he said. Do you know what happened to her? Did you say the person was a she? Yes, she. We are not sure, but it appears that she was drunk and fell into the pool and hit her head and sadly passed away. Oh, I'm so sorry, he said sadly. Was she found in the pool? She was on the side of the pool, yes, he replied. She must have been able to pull herself out of the water, then passed away. Oh, he said softly, thinking for a moment. Then what about the scream? Was that her that screamed? You wondered. May we come and observe the scene? Deku asked. I need to look around. Yes, please do come, the manager said as he stood up. Both of you are welcome to come. Okay, give us a few minutes to get dressed and then we'll come down. Which room number is it? Room 17, he replied. I'll wait for you there. Both you and Deku saw the manager off and then went and got ready to go to the party that had gone horribly wrong. That's really sad she lost her life, he said to Deku. I feel bad that I didn't investigate any further. You can't blame yourself, Yin, Deku said. We weren't to know. You nodded with a sigh as you both headed out into the hall and then made your way down to the next level. The room was cordoned off and had guards either side of the door, but when Deku introduced himself and yourself, they readily stepped aside for you both to enter. The place was nearly trashed when you walked in. Bottles of liquor were everywhere, and there were plates left of food on the table and floor. Wow, you whispered, looking around at the, at the police who were walking around doing their jobs, taking photos, dusting for fingerprints, and checking other things. The manager saw Deku and walked over immediately. Deku, we have the deceased still poolside. Please, if you will. She's still here? You asked, a little mortified. He nodded. We can't have her body removed until the police have cleared her. I'll come and have a look, Deku said, starting to follow the manager. You can stay back here if you like, Yin. No, I'll come, you said, hesitantly following him to the pool. Worriedly, you reached ahead and took his hand holding it as he led you outside. As you looked around him, you saw a blue body bag that was covered, 
covering a body and your facial expressions twisted with disease. Would you like to see the body? The manager asked Deku. He nodded and waited for a policeman to reveal the woman. She was fully clothed, a pool of blood around her head, and you had to quickly look away when you saw there was blood coming from her nose. It was a uh, blunt trauma to the back of the head, the p head policeman said to Deku. What happened? Deku asked the policeman. Uh, it's assumed that she got drunk and fell into the pool, then hit her head and pulled herself half out of the water before she had a brain hemorrhage and died, the policeman said. What did she hit her head on? You asked, trying to put the pieces together. I am assuming on the bottom of the pool, the policeman replied. Bottom? You asked. Isn't the pool a little deep? She could have hit it on the steps here at the shallow end, he replied. Oh, true, you said, walking around to look at the steps. You tried to imagine how she could have fallen and hit her head, then stayed conscious long enough to pull herself out of the pool, but something wasn't adding up. If she had slipped in accidentally, wouldn't the bump on her head have been on the front or side? You frowned as you stood there scrunching your eyebrows together. Deku and the policeman were in a deep discussion when a loud voice called out from the door and you looked up in its direction. Let me in! That's my girlfriend! The distraught voice called, pushing his way into the room. Maya! Maya! The male called again urgently. He struggled his way through the door and burst into tears when he saw his girlfriend lying motionless on the ground. The policeman quickly covered her body and Deku walked over to calm the sobbing boyfriend down. What time did this happen? The boyfriend asked loudly and you tilted your head curiously. Huh, I would have asked what happened first, not what time it happened, you thought curiously. Are you the boyfriend? Deku asked the male, trying to get some information first before answering questions. Yes, the male replied, tears flooding down his face. I left the party early last night and Maya insisted on staying and oh Maya, why? He sobbed, falling into Deku's arms. Bring her back to me. You walked over too at that point and introduced yourself, also adding in your condolences. Thank you, he said, wiping his eyes. Excuse me, this is very upsetting. That's understandable, you said. You said you were at the party last night? Yes, he nodded. Did you know uh, everyone else who attended the party? You asked. Yes, it was a staff party with few outside members who were significant others of staff and some celebrities, he said. Everyone got along well. I see, you replied. Such an unfortunate accident, he said tears welling up in his eyes again. Has it been announced as an accident? You asked suddenly. Nothing was being said yet about the status of the death. Oh well, the boyfriend replied, a little flustered by your comment. I assume it was an accident. How could it be anything else? What are you trying to say? That she was murdered? No, God, no, please. Who would want to kill my beautiful girlfriend? She was loved by all. She had worked here at the plaza for eight years. You looked at Deku, then back to him. Sorry, my comment was out of line, you apologised. I don't know your girlfriend, but I'm sure sh that you are correct. She sounds like a lovely person. She was, he replied. You work here as well, you asked, seeing him in the staff uniform. He nodded. Yes, Maya and I met here and have been dating for seven years. I see, you replied. My sincerest condolences again for your loss. Thank you, he said, covering his face and sobbing into his hands. Something didn't feel right, but you opted not to say anything else at that point, promising yourself that you'd chat to Deku later. It was at that point that the manager re-entered the room with the guest list and saw the boyfriend there. Philip, the manager called with horror in his voice. What are you doing here? You can't be here. Oh, God, no, 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 he tutted. The boyfriend, Philip turned and saw the manager and burst into tears again. She's gone, he wailed. The manager quickly handed the guest list to Deku, then grabbed Philip and walked him out, uttering words of sympathy and comfort as he led him from the scene. Deku looked at you. I feel like you sense something's amiss, he whispered. You nodded. I'll talk to you later about it. Deku walked away to talk to someone else, and you decided to have a look around as well. You saw some policemen handling some money, and you walked over to ask them some questions. Hello, you greeted politely. I am here with Hiro Deku. Was that money here in this room? 
Yes, the policeman replied. Money was being used for the payment of alcohol and such. I see. Your eyes fell to the money in his gloved hand and you squinted curiously at it. May I feel it? You asked. Uh, that would contaminate the sample, the policeman said. Deku, overhearing you talking with the officer, walked over to see what the issue was. What is it, Yin? He asked you. I'd like to feel the money, you said to him. My quirk is to copy paper items, but if this money is made by a quirk, I won't be able to copy it because it's not paper, it's not genuine. What makes you think that it's made by a quirk? Deku asked curiously, also a little fascinated that you'd picked it up so quickly. It just moves differently to normal paper money, he replied. I use my quirk daily for copying, so I know what normal paper feels and moves like. I just saw it doesn't flop like paper money should. The officer looked at Deku, then back to you. Please allow her to copy it, Deku said. This will greatly help the case if it's found that some of the money's counterfeit. The officer nodded and placed the money down on the table, and you gently touched it with your hand and tried to copy it, but you couldn't. It won't copy, you said to Deku after trying a few times. This one's a counterfeit. The officer looked at his co-worker with surprise, then showed you the other bills that he'd picked up. Miss, are these all counterfeit? he asked, placing them down on the table for you to look at. You looked them over, then pointed to one in the middle of the pile. Can I try copying that one? I think that's a real one. The officer nodded and he picked it out for you, then sat it down a little away from the others so you could copy it, which you did so easily. There's a mix of counterfeit money and real money here, you said. Deku grinned with pride, which went unnoticed by you as you looked over the money. Then you looked up at him. His soft look took you by surprise and you stopped for a second before asking him your question. Deku, uh, may I have a word? You asked bashfully. He nodded, and you both stepped away as the police continued to collect evidence. I don't think this was an accident, you whispered to him. I'm suspicious of a few things, but the counterfeit money in this room that was used during the party has me even more suspicious. I wanted to wait till we were done here to talk to you, but I need to discuss some things with you. As you were wrapping up your chat with him, the manager came back into the room. Deku, he said as he approached you both. I am so sorry to have to interrupt your stay like this. If you have checked everything over, would you please sign this report to state that it was a very unfortunate accident, and then I'll have everything else seen to, that the dear girl is taken away and the room is tidied up. But I haven't checked stories with the other party guests, Deku replied with surprise. It is routine that I talk to others who were present at the party. It's obvious she was drunk and hit her head when she fell into the pool and drowned, the manager said, looking uneasy. I cannot afford for this to end up in the press. Sir, I'm aware that bad publicity is something that you want to avoid, but I can't co cut corners for my job, Deku replied honestly. I'll check the information provided by other party goers, and then, when I'm satisfied with the conclusion, I'll sign off on the report. Until then, you just need to keep the public knowledge to a minimum. The manager didn't seem too happy about this, but understood that Deku was just doing his job, and so conceded. I understand, he replied with a head nod. You and Deku said goodbye to the crew, and headed back upstairs to your room to discuss what it was that was making you feel like something wasn't right. What makes you think it's not an accident? Deku asked once you were behind closed doors. Oh, first of all, the blunt trauma was to the back of the head. The back! If she slipped and fell into the pool, wouldn't she have had it hit her head from the front or the side? How did she hit the back unless she was pushed? Deku nodded thoughtfully. And then her boyfriend, supposed boyfriend, was acting very strange. He asked what time it had happened, not what happened. That's a bit strange, isn't it? Mm, maybe. People do say odd things when they're in shock, Deku replied. And then the money? And the scream. Was it her that screamed? You added. Deku frowned in concentration. His fingers curled around his mouth and chin as he thought. Just then, the phone rang beside him, and he walked over and picked it up. Oh, Todoroki, he said brightly. Hello. He paused as he listened to what Todoroki had to say on the other end of the line, and then nodded. I see. Well, it can't be helped then. Please do call us when the weather clears up. He said a few more pleasantries, then hung up and turned back to you. It looks like we'll be staying here a little longer. The weather on the island is still very bad, so they want to notify us when it's cleared up. 
I'm kind of happy to be honest because we have a case to solve, he said excitedly. Deku smiled. I'm very impressed with your detective skills, Yin. You make a wonderful hero. Oh gosh, you gushed. No, I don't. You do. And I'm excited to solve this case with you, he said, walking over to pick you up for a hug. Now, Detective Yin, what's the first thing we should do? You giggled. I don't know what to do next, you said. All I know is that I smell foul play and I don't want to write it off as an accident if it's not. I agree, Deku said as he put you down again. Well, the first thing we need to do is check the guest list with the security footage to make sure everyone's accounted for. Let's go then, you said excitedly, turning and walking to the door. Deku grinned as he watched you lead him out. You were focused on solving this mystery and you looked the cutest to him when you were concentrating on something. Let's go to reception, Deku called from behind you. We can ask where security is from there. Oh, right, you replied, walking to the elevator. I was on a mission there, but I had no idea where I was going, you giggled, holding the doors open for him to hop in before pressing the ground level button. With a quick, passionate kiss in the elevator, you were then down and out on the bottom level and walking to reception. Deku took over from there and asked for directions to the security room, then off he went again. The security guards were mostly helpful and let re you review the tape from last night. I don't know who everyone is, but if the count of people on the list matches the count of people entering the room, then that's a good start, Deku said, sitting down with you to review those who entered the party around 11pm. Nothing seemed amiss, and everyone was accounted for, so Deku was about to leave when you stopped him. Wait, her boyfriend said he left early. Let's see if he did, you said, taking control of the fast forward and rewind button. People started to leave the party around 3.30am, and around 4am the boyfriend could be seen leaving, and he stopped in the hallway and looked at his watch, then continued on. You kept watching and fast forwarded to 5am when Maya had died, but the footage cut out around then and nothing else was recorded. What happened here? You asked the guard. Why is there a dead spot in the footage? Ah, uh, I'm not sure, he replied. That's strange. Yes, it is. You looked at Deku. Who was the guard on duty at that time? You asked the guard. Uh, I'm not sure. Let me check the log. He got up and walked over to the roster on the wall, then placed his finger over yesterday's list and slid it down until it lined up with the time period covering 5am. No one was on. The last person was Bryce, but he finished at 4am. Mm, this just keeps getting more and more dodgy, you commented to no one in particular. Deku nodded. Okay, thank you, he said to the guard as he stood up and you followed suit. You and Deku walked to the door and left heading back to your room together. As you got off the elevator and walked to your room, you saw Philip walking away from your door. Philip, you called out to him. He spun around quickly and looked at you both. Oh, you're still here, thank God, he said, covering his heart with his hand. Were you looking for us? You asked him. Yes, I just tried knocking, but you didn't answer, so I thought you may have left the hotel, he said. Well, what did you need? Deku asked him. Um, well, the manager told me that you suspect that dear Maya's death wasn't an accident. This is a shock to me. Why is it a shock to you? You asked curiously. Well, l like I said before, who could harm her? It must surely have been an accident. She just had too much to drink and fell in the pool and then hit her head and... and he burst into tears and you tilted your head at him. Something just wasn't right here. If I was in his position, I'd be wanting to make sure that it wasn't anything suspicious. He seems too pushy with wanting it to be signed off as an accident, you thought. Philip, you said to him, we, Deku and I, just want to give justice to Maya if there has been any foul play, you stated. He stopped crying and wiped his eyes. You're right, he sniffed. I'm sorry, you're doing a wonderful job. He looked directly at you. You're very talented, m Miss... Uh, uh, Mrs. Midoriya, you stated stiffly. Mrs. Oh, are you two married? He asked, finally looking at Deku, who nodded. Well, it makes sense that you would be. Such a perfect hero couple, he gushed. Mm, I don't trust this guy, you thought. Well, Philip, we will be in contact if we find anything, Deku said to the guy. Oh, thank you, Philip said with a bow. Please, here's my number. 
Please call me if you find anything. He handed a piece of paper with his number on it to Deku and then walked away and you looked up at your man. We need to talk about him, you whispered as you entered your hotel room together. For the next few hours, Deku rang all the guests on the guest list and got their stories of what happened last night. Understandably, they were all surprised and horrified to know that their colleague, Maya, had passed away, and each gave a different reaction, but all were very genuine, and after their initial shock, a number of them were concerned for Philip. Everyone had left that morning a little earlier because they had to work later the following night and didn't want to be too hungover for their shift, so everyone had already gone home and had been in bed by the time the incident happened. All had alibis and their partners could vouch for them being home and asleep by 5am. That just leaves Philip, you said. He's the only one we haven't spoken to. Mm, it sounds like Maya wasn't a big drinker. Everyone said they saw her with a drink, but according to those closest to the bar, she only had two light drinks that night. Those who had known her the longest also stated that she had never been big on alcohol. Deku rubbed his chin. I know how I feel about this situation, but we'll wait to see what the mortician's report is. Do you think Philip came back and killed her, then left again? You asked. It's a sad possibility, Deku said. We'll have to question him. Is there anyone else we need to check with first? You asked. No, Deku shook his head. Everyone had left, so apparently it was just Maya left in the room. Why was she there alone? You asked rhetorically. Was she asked to stay back? Did Philip ask her to stay back and tell her he was going to come back? And when he did, he killed her? But what about the counterfeit money? Is this all connected? You asked some very good questions, Deku said, reaching out to pull you in for a cuddle. This cuddle is all very nice, but we need answers, you replied playfully. We need to ask the manager about the time period when no one was in security. That's a bit suspicious. Deku nodded. Just then his mobile phone rang and he answered it. Oh, yes, he asked, looking at you as the person on the other end spoke. So she wasn't drunk when she died, he asked into the receiver. There was a pause and another reply. Hit with something heavy to the back of the head, not concurrent with pull edging. Okay, thank you. He hung up. Was that the mortician? You asked, kissing his cheek. He nodded. Yin, I think we're dealing with a murder here. Maya didn't have any alcohol in her system and the bump on the back of her head isn't from the pull edging. I knew something wasn't right, he said proudly. Now... My first suspect is Philip. Mine too, Decker replied, standing up with you still in his arms. Let's go and talk to him now. You both left to go and find Philip and found him in the staff room, talking happily with other staff there. Philip, you asked, may we have a word? Oh, yes, of course, he replied, walking over. What can I help you with? Uh, just a few routine questions, Decker said with a polite smile. Would you mind coming with us? Philip gave you both a suspicious look but followed you anyway, walking with you to a more secluded part of the hotel lobby. Where did you go after you left the party last night? Deku asked gently. Is this an interrogation? Philip asked, getting defensive immediately. No, we've asked everyone the same question, Deku replied calmly. This is just routine. Are you implying I was involved with Maya's death? Philip asked with, a, with an exaggerated surprised look on his face. No, Philip, we haven't said anything about that. I merely asked you where you went after the party. Did you go straight home? Deku asked calmly. Well, of course, Philip replied, a little flustered. Can anyone vouch for you being home? Deku asked again. Yes, of course, Philip replied, this time with airs of indignation. Okay, Deku said, writing something down. And did you stay home once you went there after the party? Yes, of course. Philip replied, glancing away. How many times do I have to say it? And can anyone vouch for that? Deku asked again calmly. Well, I'm not sure, Philip replied with another flustered expression. Everyone was asleep at that hour. You looked at him, then Deku. Okay, thank you, Philip. We'll be in contact if anything else comes up. Deku went to say something else, but you stopped him quickly, giving Philip one more smile before pulling Deku with you back to the room. I still had questions for him, Deku said as you closed the door to the room. No, you shook your head. We don't need to ask him any more questions. But why? Deku asked with a curious look on his cute, freckled face. 
because he is my number one suspect and the more questions that we ask him the more spooked he's going to be it's time to assume that he is somehow heavily involved in this and we need to make sure that he doesn't try and cover any of his tracks too much he said well and truly in detective mode i trust your instinct Deku replied with a soft smile let me call todoroki to ask if we can stay on here until the case is solved in case the weather clears up on the island before we can see philip and or his accomplices behind bars you nodded and held your fist out for Deku to pump. That's very plus ultra thinking hero, Deku. He grinned and bumped your fist with his and opened his arms for you to jump into. And I think your attitude is beyond plus ultra hero, Yin, he replied as he buried his head into your neck and kissed you. Deku rang Todoroki to discuss staying on and explained the situation while you rang the manager of the plaza. Yes, hello, he asked in a worried voice when you rang his personal line. Mr. Katara, you asked, it's Mrs. Midoriya. Yes, any news? he asked worriedly. Well, without disclosing too much information, we believe Maya's death wasn't an accident and we have our suspicions. I need to ask you a few questions if that's okay. Oh, heavens, he whispered. I am mortified that someone would lose their life in this establishment due to an incident not surrounding unfortunate mishaps. I'm very sorry, you said. That's why I, I mean, Deku and I would like to get to the bottom of this as soon as possible. I agree, the manager replied. So far, the press has not caught wind of this, so I'm very relieved. Okay, first question. Okay, first question. Who is in charge of the security guard roster? Uh, that would be me, he replied. Oh, you said, looking up at Deku, who was still on the phone and not paying attention to you. Uh, what do I do? What do I say now? Should I suspect he's involved? Well, why do you ask? He pushed, the genuine ask making you feel like he was he genuinely didn't know. Uh, may I ask who you had posted for the shift covering the hours from 4am to 5am? Of course, let me get my roster, he said, and you heard him get the roster book and sit back down again. I always keep a backlog of the roster in case I need to check back, he said to you, then continued mumbling to himself. Now, yesterday, yesterday, who was on yesterday? There was silence and you waited a bit before asking again. Have you found it? You asked. I, uh, I, you could hear the, the rising fear in his voice. Is there anyone rostered on? You asked. I, I don't know how this happened, he stammered. What is it? You asked. This doesn't look good for me, but no one was rostered on. Is there a reason for that? You asked him. No, no, I, I don't know how this happened. I never miss a shift, he replied genuinely. Did anything happen during the time that you were writing the roster? A phone call? Staff member entering and asking a question? You pressed. Now let me think, he said, falling silent. I... I can't remember, he said sadly. This is terrible. Please, please don't think of me badly. You could tell he was telling the truth just by the sound of his voice and you calmed his fears immediately. No, sir, you're not a suspect, I promise. We live in a world of quirks, so there's a possibility that you could have been quirked to skip rostering someone on in that shift. I do believe that the time period was deliberately neglected so that someone, whoever it was, could get in and out of the room Maya was killed in, undetected by cameras. I am so very sorry, he said again. If I can be of any more help to you, then please do not hesitate to contact me. Of course, he said. One more question. What is Philip's role here at the plaza? Do you suspect him? The manager asked with surprise. I know Philip quite well, and he and Maya were planning on getting engaged and married very soon. He could never harm her. Oh, please, begging your pardon, he said quickly, covering yourself. No, I, I ask what his role is so that I can make sure he isn't the next target if the person who did away with Maya is also after him. That was a necessary lie to make sure that Philip wasn't told that he was a suspect by the manager, as it sounded like they were close. Oh, I see, the manager said. Philip has quite a diverse role here. He works closely with myself for hiring, staff handling money, Training of staff, general duties, etc. Hmm, you hummed. I see. Thank you for your time. 
I'll talk with Deku and we'll continue the investigation, you said when you saw that Deku had gotten off the phone with Todoroki. Okay, the manager replied. Thank you again. Again, if I can be of any help, then please let me know. Oh, yes, I will, you said. Then you said your goodbyes and got off the phone. Philip handles the money, you said to Deku the minute the phone call with the manager ended. The plot thickens. What's Philip's quirk? Deku asked. That's a good question. Let's look it up, you replied, putting your hand out for Deku's phone. Well, what are you looking for? He asked, looking down at your outstretched hand. Your phone, you said, looking around. Oh, I have it here, he said, handing it to you from his back pocket. Oh, you chuckled sheepishly. My head's felt a little foggy today. Must be the jet lag. Deku tilted his head curiously, but you were too invested in going to his quirk registry app to notice he's looking at you. Okay, we need Philip's last name, you said as your thumbs hovered over the name part of the registry. Oh, I have that. Deku said, pulling out the guest list paper. It's Mistrust. He looked down at the name. Philip Mistrust. Okay, is that with an I or a Y? You asked. Y. M Y S T R U S T. Okay, let me see, he said, scrolling down his profile. Your eyes scanned the screen before you, and then you let out an almost disbelieving laugh. What? What is it? Deku asked curiously, seeing the look on your face. You're not going to believe this, you said to Deku. Guess what Philip's quirk is? I have no idea, Deku said. It's a sleep quirk. He can put people to sleep by breathing on them when he activates it, you said. This is not looking good for Mr. Philip. Do you suspect that he quirked people? Deku asked you. Well, it'd make sense if he did. Now to find out if there's a way that we could trace his quirk back to being used. You hummed, scrunching your eyebrows in thought. Let me call the mortician, Deku said. He'll be able to help us. You clicked out of the app and handed Deku his phone so that he could call the mortician and then hopped up onto the bed and lay back as Deku held the phone to his ear. Yes, hello, sir, Deku said politely. This is Hero Deku. I'm just calling in regards to breathing emitter quirks. Deku then put the phone on loudspeaker so that you could hear as well. Yeah? The mortician asked. What about him? Uh, is there a way to tell if someone has used their quirk on someone post-mortem? Sometimes, yeah, the mortician replied. But it's hard because the medium's gas and gas can dissipate quite quickly into the system and leave the system just as quickly. Oh, I see. Would it be possible to be able to tell if the deceased had been quirked before she died? Deku asked. That uh, would be quite difficult to prove, sir, the mortician replied. But we could look into it if it's necessary. Yes, please, he said when you nodded. The mortician agreed. I'll have it seen to right away then. Thank you. Please call me when you have an answer, Deku replied. I will, the mortician said then gave a short goodbye and hung up. Okay, now what? you asked with a smile. Now we have lunch, Deku replied. I'm starving. Over lunch, you and Deku discussed more about the case and talked about the coincidences of the counterfeit money. Do you think it's related? I do. I think Maya either found something out and threatened to blow the whistle, or she was the one making the money and someone needed her gone so they could cover their tracks after getting her to make it. Mm, either of those is very plausible, Deku said as he took another mouthful of pizza. Uh, could you please pass me my phone? I'll look up the deceased's quirk, Deku said. Just then, you thought you heard a noise outside your hotel room door and you looked up and over at it. Deku too sensed someone was there and got up to investigate. He opened the door and then looked down the hall to see Philip walking away. Philip, he called. The boyfriend jumped with fright and spun around. Oh, hello, Deku, he scratched his cheek and looked away. Did you need us? De Deku asked. Philip shook his head. No, I was working on this level. I see, Deku replied. Have a good rest of your day. Yes, Philip replied, then turned and continued away. Deku came back in and you shook your head. He's spying on us. I know he is. I'm going to go and check security cameras. You got up and Deku quickly ate one last piece of pizza before running to the door after you. You marched down the hall and down to security, walking in once they'd called for you to enter. 
Hi, sorry to drop in on you, he said to the guy in the chair watching the monitors. Can you please pull up the recordings for a few minutes ago for our level? Sure, the guard said, asking for your level and suite number. You told him and he played the recording back, playing it forward again once he had rewound it ten minutes in the past. You and Deku watched as Philip walked up to your hotel room door and stopped, listening intently from outside for a good few minutes. See? Spying, you said to Deku. He nodded. May we have a cut of that, please? Deku asked the guard, and he nodded, then reached for a USB from the pile in a container. After being given a snippet of that recording, you and Deku headed back to the hotel room to finish lunch. It was a few hours later that the mortician rang Deku, and Deku answered eagerly. Uh, sorry, the mortician said apologetically. Preliminary reports suggest that the deceased didn't have any quirk in her system when she died. Oh, I see. Thank you for your time, Deku said sadly. I appreciate you going to the trouble to find out on my behalf. That's no issue, the mortician replied. It's my pleasure to be able to help a hero. After wrapping up the conversation, Hugh and Deku decided to have a little walk downstairs and out on the streets, doing a little window shopping. It was nice to be out and about, but your mind was still hooked on the case, and you found yourself mulling over the counterfeit money issue. Deku noticed you going quiet occasionally and he smiled to himself. She's really focused on this case, he thought, as he looked through some clothes on a rack. What if he's been embezzling funds? You asked Deku out of the blue. He chuckled. You're really into the case. I'm sorry, it's just I've been able to help this time. Every other story you've told me has been a physical fight or other, but this one I've been able to assist. It makes me feel helpful. He looked away bashfully. Your quirk is amazing, Deku said. Not everyone has to become a hero to fight villains. People can be heroes in everyday life too. You're my hero because, aside from your quirk helping for this case now, you love me. His eyes darted away shyly and he fiddled with his fingers. You support me. You look out for me and you're always happy and positive. To me, that's heroic. Your eyes welled with grateful tears and you threw yourself into him and hugged him around his waist as he hugged you back. I love you, Izuku. You're the best husband ever, he said with a loving squeeze. After sharing a little hug in the store, you moved on, hand in hand, walking off down the road to the next store. A day of shopping done and you came back to the hotel to rest and dropped your bags down on the floor before flopping down onto the bed. My feet hurt, you mumbled into the bed sheets. We've done so much today. We have, Deku replied, putting his bags down as well and getting himself a drink at the small kitchen. You rolled over and stared at the ceiling, your mind wandering back to Philip and how you could prove it was him who killed his own girlfriend. Just then, Deku's face popped into your vision and your eyes shifted to him and you smiled. Hi, you greeted him. I was talking to you before. You must not have heard me. Oh, I'm sorry, you replied. I'm still thinking about that case. I re I'm really caught up on it. I know Philip did it. I'm 100% sure, but I don't know what to do from here or how to prove it. Let me find out what the review of the counterfeit money revealed. The police should, show, should have the report by now, Deku said, pulling his phone out. You sat up eagerly and waited for him to call the police station. Then he pulled the f put the phone on loudspeaker for you to listen. The superintendent picked up and Deku identified himself and greeted the man politely to which the offer responded in kind. I'm just calling to find out if the results of the counterfeit money have come back yet, Deku asked. Oh, yes, they should be in by now. Let me pull up the analysis sheet on the computer. The man was quiet for a bit as he clicked away on his computer then spoke again. Yeah, we've got the results here as well as some other interesting things which I think you may want to hear. What are they? Deku asked. Well, first of all, the counterfeit money was made from blood, so the producer needed blood to make the money. I see, Deku said. And we happen to have a sample of the deceased woman's blood here. He paused. It's a 100% match. Her blood was used to make the money. It appears that she was the one providing the producer with her blood to make the counterfeit money. He looked at Deku with surprise, then spoke to the in intendant. Hello, sir. This is Yin Midoriya. I've been assisting in this case. Hello, Mrs. Midoriya. Thank you for your help, the intendant said politely. 
Sir, is there any sign of foul play here? I'm highly suspicious that the deceased woman was killed, as in murdered, because I heard her scream from the bedroom on the night she passed away. Can you be sure it was her scream? The attendant asked. Although it sounds suspicious, there's no way to prove without a shadow of a doubt that it was her cry. Unfortunately, in this profession, we need solid, hard evidence to convict someone, and right now it looks like she was involved in illegal activities and met her end. From what we see on paper, she fell into the pool, hit her head, and passed away. Upon further investigations, it's been revealed that she was acting delinquently. You pursed your lips but didn't fight him on it. What he was saying was correct, but boy did it make your blood boil. So after Deck, who had spoken with him a little longer, you waited until the call had ended before arcing up. I know it looked like an accident, you said to Deku, but I know she was killed, and I'm going to prove it and clear her name. It's unfair that she died and became the scapegoat for someone, so I'm going to make sure that she gets justice. Deku smiled at you. I'm so proud of you, he whispered, giving you a hug. You have a strong sense of justice, and I like that. What's your next move? I don't know, you sighed. I honestly don't know what to do now. Okay, let's talk to Philip and reveal this information and see what he says, Deku said. It's on paper now, so it's no longer hearsay. You nodded and got off the bed. Is Philip still here in the building, though? You walked to the front door and opened it to see Philip, once again, coincidentally, on your level, and you called to him. It's a good thing you're here. Do you mind if we have a word? Of course, he replied, walking back to you. Would you mind coming into the room where we can talk in private? You asked him. He nodded. Yes, that's fine. You walked back into the room with Deku and Philip and turned to him. Philip, please don't think anything of this, you started, but we have reason to believe that Maya was involved with unsavory people. You watched him keenly as he looked from you to Deku and back to you. Uh, he hummed. We know what she was doing, he added. We got the police report today. Philip dropped his guard and his face fell. I, I was hoping no one would ever find out, he said sadly. I did know what she was doing and I tried to tell her to stop going to the man to get money made, but she kept going and now... His bottom lip quivered. And now she's gone. I'm so sure it's because of them. She owed them a lot of money for the counterfeits they made for her. What was she using it for? You are suddenly feeling compassionate. Maybe I've been wrong. Maybe he's not to blame, you wondered feeling bad now for thinking he was the one who had killed her. She was stealing real money from here and replacing it with a counterfeit, he said. I really tried to stop her, but... His voice trailed off as he broke down again. Guilt washed over you. Had you been barking up the wrong tree? Had you been reading all of his hesitancy and nervousness wrong? You had thought that maybe he was hiding something, and he had been. He was hiding the fact that his girlfriend was a criminal, and he didn't know what to do about it. I'm so sorry, you said genuinely, reaching out to put a hand on his shoulder. Don't worry, we'll find the person who was making the money from her blood and have him jailed. It won't change what she did, but it might help give you some closure. Thank you, he said in a wobbly voice. Do you know the person, or do you have any leads that might help us? Deku asked him. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't even have a name, he replied. Would the name of the person be in Maya's phone? You asked him. I don't know, he replied. You can have a look. The police have all of her things, so we might need to go to the station, he said to Deku. Oh, it's just all so much to take in, Philip said with a sigh. Her suicide and all of this coming to light. Suicide? You asked. I thought you said it was an accident before. Well, well she killed herself because of the guilt of doing the wrong thing, did she not? He fumbled out. Your gut twisted, and you just got that feeling again, like maybe there was something still suspicious going on. Hmm, maybe, you hummed, not wanting to let on that you were now suspecting him again. He sniffed and did a dramatic sigh and you glanced at Deku. Well, thank you, Philip. We'll let you know if anything else comes up, you said. He left and you turned to face your hero husband. He had me for a second. I thought maybe he hadn't killed her, but something is still not quite right. I'm going to go and watch the security footage of that day, you said, redoubling your efforts in the case. 
Well, while you do that, I'll go and see if there's a way that I can narrow down people with the money-making quirk, Deku said, giving you a quick kiss on the lips. And then I'll come back quickly because it's getting dark. You nodded and left the room, not seeing Philip hiding around the corner watching you leave. Purposefully, you walked down to the security room and knocked again. You again, the guard said when he opened the door. Hi, you said with a chuckle. I may as well move in here, right? Do you need an extra worker? The guard chuckled and let you in. What do you need this time? He asked. I need to review the footage from today, from as early as 6am, please. Right. He pulled up the tapes and started playing them from 6am, letting them roll for a bit. Anything in particular you're looking for? He asked. This is going to sound strange, but can you please follow Philip's movements for the day? Philip? Yeah. Is he a suspect? I'm not at liberty to say, he replied. He shrugged and leaned past you, fast forwarding until Philip entered through the staff room door at the back of the hotel. He immediately changed into his uniform and then walked out into the hall, making his way up to the room in which Maya had died earlier that morning and spoke with the guards before entering. Hmm, that's suspicious, you thought. He must have known something had happened, otherwise why would he have walked straight to the room? No one else spoke to him that morning, so he can't claim someone mentioned something. He knew. He totally knew. Excited by this, you turn to the guard. Can I please have a copy of the tape where Philip enters the building to where he enters the room upstairs? You asked. The guard nodded and grabbed another USB from the pile and copied it for you. You thanked him, then left, making your way back to your hotel room. I have it! I have the evidence! You said excitedly to Deku as you entered. Oh, really? He asked expectantly. You held up the USB and wiggled it between thumb and forefinger. This shows Philip walking into the building then going straight to the room where Maya was killed. How did he know that something had happened? No one spoke to him that morning. Mm, that's good, but it's not enough to seal the case, Deku said thoughtfully. I've been unsuccessful in my pursuits of finding the blood quirk counterfeiter, unfortunately. I'm sorry I wasn't able to find anything conclusive. I'm sure this will hold up in court, you said again, referring to the footage that you had in hand. Deku shook his head sadly. It is suspicious, but it's not enough to conclude the case. I'm sorry. You sighed. I'm going to keep it anyway because it may help. Deku nodded. Definitely keep it, but let's leave it for now. We can continue tomorrow. You just nodded. I just want this case ended. I do too, he said as he wrapped an arm around your waist and pulled you into him as he sat on the side of the bed. You straddled his lap and lay him back on the bed as your lips pressed to his. Meanwhile, down at security, Philip was doing a little snooping. Good afternoon, Greg, he greeted the security officer. How's your day been? Ah, oh, it's you, Philip. Boring as usual, Greg replied. Had any visitors? Philip pressed as he pretended to be getting some files from the cabinet behind the guard. Yeah, a few, Greg replied vaguely. Old lady from 22 came down to complain the camera in the bathroom was pointing into the shower. There's no camera in the bathrooms. I don't know how many times I have to tell her. She's been here for so bloody long, she's gone insane. Philip laughed. Ha <laughs> ha, that's funny. Anyone else? Yeah, blonde that hangs around reception, he replied. Mm, Philip replied. None of these were the answer he was after. I bumped into that Mrs. Midoriya, hero's wife, in the hall. She's interesting. Oh, yeah, she came down here too, guard said. What was she after? Philip asked. Ah, some footage, Greg said, avoiding eye contact. Of what? Philip asked again, starting to get a little annoyed by these short answers. Yeah, just stuff. I don't really know, Greg lied, still not looking at Philip. Was it of me? Philip asked bluntly. Greg flinched. And there ends part one. Please click the link for part two to continue on.